Good afternoon, Tangarinos. It is Spatula here with a Dangus stream, a Dangus expedition. I'm not going to talk like that. How's it going, people? And yes, uh, we are here. We are live, and we are Dangus. What's up, loot? Yeah, yeah, I'm a weirdo. What do you What do you want to do about it? <laughs> What's up, Mike? Uh, which pants? The the Japanese uh, waste filtration biosuit mechanisms. I think those were early versions of um, of uh, spacesuits, which we now have uh, much more sophisticated. Um, uh, poop sockets. That's what I think the technical term is. Uh, but you may be asking yourself, what the hell are we looking at here? Um, and yeah, that is a, that is a real um, Odyssey thing. This is not photoshopped. That, my friends, is a planetary nebula. I believe it's called the, the Robin's Nest. And uh, we're going to go check it out. I checked it out last night and um, it is incredibly beautiful. And in Odyssey now we can of course bask in our Strangely Christmassy Diamondback. We've got a red Diamondback that has green lights and blackout camera is wonderful. Uh, I'm zoom out further. And on this side, it's red. I don't know why. I don't know if that was something I did. But yeah, one side is green, one side is red. It's a Christmassy Diamondback. Christmas in summer. Or maybe cooling, maybe cooling pants for for when you take a hot dump. I don't. I don't know. I think that, I think I used them for like bio waste pants in an episode. I don't remember where I found them, but check that out. Like, imagine waking up on this planet every morning and that's your sort of you know planetary nebula rise, right? Well, let's go check it out. And you can see uh, Odyssey's a little bit dark. <laughs> With the light on, you can see a little bit more clearly um, the landscape. I'm sure they've still got some work to do on it, but I do like how landscape has like. Unusual outcroppings like this, just large, rocky thing. They're they're nice. They break up the uh, monotony. Uh, just launched the glitched camera. The uh, well, is that just maybe? Um, yeah, maybe those lights are only there in camera mode. That's kind of strange. Phantom lights, worth investigating. Uh, but today, um, so what I thought I'd do is, um, you know, the last uh, stream we kind of checked out a bunch of missions in Odyssey, and I thought this time let's let's do a little bit of the exploration side, which is my favorite part of um, Elite Diangus, um, is just checking out cool stuff, landing on planets, getting first footfall, uh, and scanning all of the things that are biological and putting them in canisters, and then immediately burning them. I don't, I don't know what's going on there, but I like it. I like it now that there isn't some stupid uh, uh, <laughs> sort of skill game or whatever that I have not skilled at. All right, so um, now we're getting this really cool view, and I should almost I want to kind of chase the horizon. I did get some screenshots last night where it was not completely the night side; it was kind of the horizon. Um, but you'll see here, this is the CD twenty six one three nine nine system, otherwise colloquially known as the Robin's Nest. And this is one of the first locations we'll be visiting today. We will, of course, be doing quite a big exploration jaunt in, you know, locations that are in the vicinity of the bubble. I believe at one point we're going to head out to the Horsehead Nebula and check out what that's all about. I know one of the locations I want to check out is in the Witchhead Nebula. And actually, it seems to be uh, an engineer there, which is interesting. Um, but yeah, we're going to do all that fun stuff. But first, let's go check out this planetary nebula from the inside. <laughs> Uh, no, Blackout doesn't trigger when you use the glitch camera. Oh! Oh! I've heard about that. Um, Venom Spike, you're saying, anyone else getting orange Sidewinder error when trying to load in? Uh, no, and I hope I don't start getting errors just as I've just started my stream. But, um, it has been kind of like that. You get a Black Adder, then a Move Sidewinder, then, then an orange, you know, uh, Panther Clipper. It's still pretty early, and I mean, I don't... You know... They should have just done a beta. They should have just called this a beta, said we're doing a couple months of beta, then we'll have the PC release proper, then the uh, then the console release, because, you know, it still kind of feels as glitchy as a beta. But welcome to the inside of a planetary nebula. Space like you never saw it before. It is all blue and stuff. It does look quite cool. And of course, um, these planetary nebulas are formed when a star is dying and just starts, you know, sort of casting out its outer layers. To engulf the system. Now, this is quite an interesting system in and of itself. It does have quite a few uh, places to check out. You can see here I got first footfall on these puppies last night. That's right, they are mine now. They belong to me. Uh, and these are uh, little planets that are rotating um, like a 
what is this? Yeah, a, a Y dwarf, which is rotating a class K, which is in orbit of a black hole. <laughs> and we are gonna go look at that black hole later, but um, there was an atmospheric planet that some other jerk tagged. Or no, wait, I don't think you can land on the atmospherics. So I guess the way that you tell if you can land is by this little blue crest. And then you can tell it's atmospheric because it's got a little halo, like an atmosphere. Uh, here, here's an atmospheric. It was first football by Flappy Flap. So let's go check that out. Under the big, beautiful sky. Ooh, what was that? Got a little neon flash there. Neon flashback. That's a bit of a ways away, so we will put on our trusted Super Cruise Assist. That way we can go hands-free. It would be nice to have a little NPC in the cockpit. I could just say, take me there, and then he would fly. That would be nice. Uh, I am an open, by the way, and I have a bunch of exploration data, so don't kill me. Let's see here. What, what would I lose if I die? I would lose uh, 202,000 of Codex discoveries. Probably some important, valuable scientific specimens, so don't gank me. But, you know, if you do, I'll just be mad for a couple minutes and find something better to do with my life. <laughs> You're getting orange sidewater every time. Have you tried, um, like, closing the launcher and all that stuff and then seeing if there's updates? Maybe, like, um, do, like, the clear, uh, not the cookies. But you know when you, like, go to the Steam and then you do, like, verify the integrity of the game cache and then it goes exterminate and then and then all the bad things are exterminated and then it works? Try that stuff. I, I don't know. I'm not an expert. But that sucks that you're getting orange sidewinders. Um, also try logging into the different modes. Yeah, try, like, um... Uh, solo mode in private group or try logging in horizons and then back into Odyssey so that you're not stuck in a time loop uh, What's up dark 88? How you doing? Uh, oh, there, there you go. Mike's Mike's confirmed everything launch elite regular dangerous and then close it and launch the August Augusty Augusty Close enough See Mike knows things he knows how to fix things He'll make it better. Just listen to him. But actually while we head here might as well go out of the cockpit and just kind of take a look around. Uh, yeah, there we go. So this is the inside of a planetary nebula. And you can see uh, even Bernard's loop just looks like part of the backdrop here. It is quite an impressive sight. It is, you know, the most sci-fi-y, no man's sky, pastel, barf on the table kind of sci-fi that you're going to get in this game. You can see other nebulas there in the distance. I believe that's Witch Head. Is that the California Nebula? Maybe. I'm not sure. Or is that the Cal... No, that's... Is that the Witch Head Nebula? Who are you? I think you're Witch Head. You're Bernard's Loop and the Horseshoe Nebula. Which looks more like a curled up dead rat, to be honest. Hey, what's up, Tokoso? How you doing? Oh, there you go. There you go, Venom Spike. Did that, did that fix it for you? Well, that's not that worked. Because uh, if it ever happens to me, then... We now know what to do. And of course, if you are, uh, tell me if the music is your, is audible in the background. Always with the audio mixing, it's always the last thing you think about, and probably the first thing you screw up. I got some Tokoso music playing in the background. Nebulas are looking fine. It's toasty here. This is definitely a must-visit system, especially in Odyssey, which we're going to be heading down to an atmospheric planet, see if we can catch a sunset within a planetary nebula. And this is just the first of what we are going to see. Again, I sort of put together, and I, I kind of did this one a little a little bit late last night, a little bit this morning. It's a little bit, uh, it's not as refined as my bubble tour, but uh, throwing the um, systems into the uh, multi-waypoint planner, which uh, is a down-to-earth astronomy tool, uh, super, super useful for punching in different systems you want to visit. And by the way, can you can you spot Waldo, aka the black hole here? Where do you think that black hole is? You can kind of you can kind of just make out that little distortion in the nebula, that little circly bit. Yeah, that's that's our black hole. And there you can see the two uh, stars on either side, the two little binaries. Uh, what are you doing there, Toko? So you're you're getting one shot killed at every base, but it's a learning curve. Well, uh, yeah, I guess the the keys there are number one, turn your shields on. Uh, <laughs> Um, does it mean no... Space prawn, does that mean no boom boom? Well, this is exploration, right? So that doesn't mean necessarily no boom boom. 
Um, it means uh, uh, involuntary boom boom, probably. Uh, there is going to be one system that is quite dangus that we will visit that might result in my own boom booms. But I am trying to avoid self boom uh because I have a lot of exploration data on me, and I do not. I do want to get some some money for once, not lose money because of a stream. Um, and also, I've got some codex discoveries, which I would not like to see um, lost into the void. Of course, I am streaming it open, so anything could happen. But, uh, <laughs> uh, and that doesn't mean I'm not going to kill some skimmers. I've been killing skimmers left, right, and center. Those skimmers pop up, they're dead, dead, dead to me. Don't even care about their little robotic lives. They got no intelligence. They're not life forms. I don't have to worry about shooting them. But yeah, what else? Um, put your shields on. Um, the one thing that I noticed is that, like, okay, as much as you get some powerful ass weapons, with especially with the like the plasma sniper rifle, that's like a two shot kill, like one shot to wipe out the shields, one shot to kill. Um, it works both ways, right? And I kind of like that. I kind of like being, um, you know, sort of fragile and vulnerable, uh, but then everything else being fragile and vulnerable. So you know, if you get really good, um, it's gonna feel fantastic to play this game. But I don't know. It's gonna t take a while to get pretty good. <laughs> I'm really liking the stealth mechanics, personally, is like sneaking into a facility, stealing passcodes, looting through the corridors, and then someone catches you, and then all of a sudden you've got to shoot your way out. I love that um, that feel and that, and that gameplay. It's really uh, probably my favorite part of Odyssey outside of um, uh, the terrain and stuff. Uh, but the terrain is definitely what we're checking out today, and I think um, it's, it's not, you know, it's not boom boom interesting. It's not like you're going to see pew pew pews, but it's going to be cool. It's going to be lots of pretty things to look at. But yeah, self bomb <laughs> It's a new verb. It exists now, as of today. Call the dictionary. Excuse me, Mr. Webster. Yes, I would like to submit self bomb Like, okay, what's the pronunciation on that? Uh, self bomb Okay, what's the meaning? Bloating yourself up. Hmm, okay, it's in the dictionary. We'll put it in the next edition. Thank you, Mr. Webster. Goodbye. That was my role play of a uh, call with the dictionary. Uh, it, was <laughs> it went really well, I have to say. Those dictionary people are not as not as much jerks as they are led to believe. But yeah, I love this. It does feel like I'm I'm in No Man's Sky and Elite Dangerous right now. There are many many uh, planetary nebulas to explore in the cosmos. Uh, I think we're going to be checking out at least one other one. Um, in the list that I put together. I was going to go back out to the Ghost of Jupiter, which was the very first uh, planetary nebula I ever visited. Um, however, it's a little bit far out of the bubble. And, and kind of one of those things where, like, I could go out there and that would be it. You know what I mean? There's nothing else really along the way or, or, or root worthy. Okay, we're coming in close under a minute. Or a minute plus seven eternal seconds, as they say. <laughs> Yes, Mr. Webster, and what's, what's the other dictionary baron? It's Oxford, right? Oxford and Webster, the, the two, two dictionary rivals. They would meet at, at, at bars and um, have word, word competitions. And then uh, I thought, well, I should write this all down. And then, uh, and so the dictionary was born. This is fake history with Commander Spatula. <laughs> Maybe that's the alternate version of history in the Elite Dangus universe. All right, we are coming in here. I think it's about time to take our super cruise off because otherwise it's going to thrust us into an unwanted orbit. We can pilot it here from our from our own two meat popsicles. Isn't it crazy now that you can wear these different suits? The only thing I'm like, uh, and I'll show I'll show you in a bit, is like the cosmetics for the suits are very confusing now. <laughs> But I definitely want to create um, some Frankenstein suits. I don't know if you can see it. Maybe I'll just um, very quickly don't crash into the planet. You can see my Explorer suit actually has a Dominator plate <laughs> and I think a Scavenger arm pad. It is a true Frankenstein. I love that it lets you do it though. But it's it's hard to figure all this stuff out because the menu is very confusing. Barry Oxford. He runs the corner shop in the week. My name is... Barry Oxford. Well, I'm Alan Oxford, and I come first. Who invented alphabetical order? Did that come, uh, like, with the alphabet, or was that DLC? Where someone realized later, hey, 
If we arrange things in the same way as the alphabet, it would be easier to do things. Alright, we've done a lovely little loop of victory there. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to find... Um, let's just see first. I want to actually map this planet. It's already mapped, so I'm not going to get any real science or discoveries for this, but... Also, don't need to worry about efficiency. Do 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 probes away. So you can see this one kind of has a green uh, atmospheric tint. Let's see if um, what does what does the the codex say about this little particular location? Uh, hold on. No, there is there is stuff there is stuff. Uh, there is anemones, bacterial colonies. Oh, cactoidas, fungoids, stratum, shrubs, tussock. What the hell is tussock? Well, it looks like there's tussock everywhere, so I think what we want to do is we, let's find some cactoida, man. I want to see some sweet cactus. Show me the cactus. And ideally, what we're going to do is try and find uh, a cactus near the day and night terminator. And then we're going to land. We're going to see some beautiful um, atmospheres. And space cactus. And it looks like there's a perfect little oasis of cactus right there. Just need to memorize that spot because it will go away in a second, but just on the lip of that crater. Okay. We are coming in on a planetary sunset. Let's just, yeah, you can see without um, exploration mode destroying things. We've got a nice orangey green. And the cactus plateau. Okay, so we've got cactus all in this area. That should be fine. With the new um, Elite Dengus uh, mechanics, uh, you don't need to do the stupid skill check, but you still need to scan three different genetic samples, which is a little bit... It's a little bit fetch questy. I'm not sure if, like, you need to do it, but you need to do it to get the sweet canister animation, so... I won't want to do it. Um, having all the life forms does make exploring a bit more engaging. Absolutely. I love um, the heat maps and I love that they're biomes. So it gives me like, not like, oh, you have to find this one specific spot on the planet where like the, you know, the 6,000 cactus live. But you get this sense of like, you know, there, there are, there are um, uh, like areas on the planet. And you might even just want to go visit a couple different areas. Ooh, let's look at this lovely red sun that we have here. Um, like, it definitely makes it like, okay, I don't want to just visit this planet, drop down and then on this one spot and leave. I kind of want to see what does this biome look like? What does this biome look like? It definitely uh, makes things just a little bit more interesting overall. But yeah, so one of the, 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 the reasons that we wanted to land here um, on the Day-Night Terminator was for this beautiful view. And let's just uh, get out and appreciate this with our space legs. Like, look at that. Doesn't get much better than this. Actually, yes, it does. I can go on top of my ship. Get a nice view from up here. And you know what would make this better is if there actually was some space cactus around. I feel like that could be a cluster over there, but maybe that's what the cactus wants us to think. All right, let's just kind of scooch. Oh, no, no, no. Scooch around. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ha, ha, ha. This is a red sunset inside of a planetary nebula. Doesn't get much rarer than this. I think this is going to be a screenshot. Let's just turn around and I wish we could do emotes and just give like a little thumbs up or whatever. Close enough. <laughs> you can do a little weird arm movement that looks like I'm losing balance. Oh, 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 oh. That's a good one too. Action shots. But seriously though, imagine this was the, the sunset every day. And I mean, what would it, t what would it take um, to get Earth's atmosphere to this point where we would get these sunsets? If we just had everyone um, start smoking cigarettes or something for 20,000 years, could we pollute our atmosphere enough to get this kind of beauty? There's only one way to find out. We better start now. Tell your children to start smoking immediately. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, okay, what do we have here? We have something here. Um, 
Oh, right, because I think I sampled a bush on another planet. So yeah, you don't get anything unless you do the three samples. All right, whatever. We're not on that planet anymore, so. What the heck is this? This is not Space Cactus. This is Fruxteca Flabello. Oh, my mistake. Um, all right, well, let's find three more of those puppies. <laughs> Yummy sky. Um, but yeah, let me know if you guys um, have found anything truly interesting in um, Odyssey, either visual or uh, buggy or fun to do. And definitely, I will add them to lists for either this stream or future streams, depending on what it is. I'm so mesmerized by this like Blade Runner sun. I love it. I'm just gonna drive towards it while well, looking for weird space ferns. Whoa, 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 whoa. I think we found another batch. Yep, 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 yep. Oh yeah, can we smoke this? Let's smoke this grass, man. Let's take a whiff of this flaxia flabalena no no flabidelum Flabium, yeah or flabellum. It's <laughs> turning into a Cheech and Chong thing right, right away. We're like, we're not even like, what, 15 minutes in and uh, already we've just, we've hit rock bottom. Nowhere to go from here. I've, I've, let's see, what have I done at this point? I've told people to get their kids smoking so we can poison the atmosphere and get beautiful sunsets. And we've smoked weird space herbs. Well, we haven't murdered anyone yet. What is this? What is this? Oh, that's something. That is something. Hold on. And that, this looks like something as well. Okay, this is this also space herbs? Have we found more different things? Is this planet just teeming with uh, all this life? Yeah, no. This is this is something else. Um, okay. Uh, anyone see any, like, space herbs? Okay, so they show up as purple if they're new. Blue if they are the same but not genetically diverse enough. And green means go. Hmm. I think these are all going to be purple. Is he purple? Yeah, I'll use purple. Okay, so I, I mean, none of these are space cactuses, which is the weird thing. Look at that shadow, right? Like, it's little touches, and I love how it runs. It just runs with floppy arms, but it's so it's so uh, it's so fitting. All right, back to the SRV. I cannot complain about this sky. This is the greatest sky that there ever ever skied. Oh, you can't log in at all? What's up, Toko? So is it like, uh, you're getting like error messages? Or is it like, um, once you get in, it's just like unplayable kind of deal? Okay, so we need to find another space bushy thing. Like, is this what we were scanning before? No, that's the new stuff. So maybe we'll go a little bit back in this direction. We're looking for something that's a little more bushy. Um, mm, no, that's the new stuff. Uh, Tom, did you try, uh, um, logging into Horizon, <laughs> logging back? <laughs> Seems to work for, uh, some other issues. I don't know if that would fix anything. But yeah, definitely, I think, um, you know, Frontier might have, I think, been under a little bit of pressure to release earlier than they probably should have. Okay, here's some bushies. Um, and it definitely feels like they could have used a beta in a little bit more time. And you, you start to wonder if, like, they were releasing because of some, you know, key financial quarterly deadline sort of thing. Okay, these are good. Good to go. Give me that sample. Um, it would have been really nice, I think, to have a, a, a beta period as well as an alpha. Because um, obviously, when you kind of look at how it's been implemented, it's not perfect, right? Like, there's a lot of, lot of goodness. A lot of goodness to be had. Um... 
but you know, hearing about you guys even getting like orange sidewinders or not being able to log in, it's just like that's disappointing, right? It's like everyone gets their new shiny. It's it's space Christmas all over again, and then you can't do anything with it, right? That's a that's a the opposite of feeling good. Okay, I kind of want to now scan some of the, this is a beautiful planet, and I don't mind spending some time here in this glorious red sunset. Uh, Try launching Vanilla Elite, spawning it in it, closing it, and then launch through Odyssey. Yeah. It's the it's space equivalent of turning it off and turning it back on again. But there's an extra step in between. It's like, turn it on in mode 2. Or mode 1, or... Well, not space legs. Yeah, thankfully I've been fortunate. I've not had too many issues other than just, like, a lot of the random crashing... Um, the other day I kind of flipped out because I was just finishing a mission, coming back in my taxi, and uh, I get this weird crash. And I, I was so worried that it would uh, wipe my mission, I would end up spawned on the planet, have to even, you know, for, add insult to injury. It's like, now you got to fly all the way back to where you took the mission <laughs> without the mission being, uh, with the mission being failed. But no, it was fine. It put me right back in the taxi, which I was surprised. And, um... The mission was not failed, so you know it's uh, it's not been like worst case apocalypse level rate it you know three stars on Steam and give it a bad review kind of glitchy. It's just you know it's it's unstable, right? It's like uh, the hot crazy chick. <laughs> you know what I, you know what I'm talking about. You're like this is gonna this is gonna end poorly, but it'll be great in the meantime. Uh, okay. We got two Tusk Culturo. The Tusk Culturo. This is like, um, some, uh, fine Italian herbs that were growing out here. Uh, uh what's uh, Joe saying there? Last year when they announced that they were going to release Odyssey in 2021, I predicted it would be really a beta no matter what Epta would have called it. That's it. It, 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 it. it is a, like, this is a beta, right? It's just not officially a beta. <laughs> uh, stop, stop, stop. And look, I'm, I'm fine with it rolling out kind of in stages, right? And I'm just glad that we get to play it, right? Like, you know, for the longest time, oh, blue means not genetically diverse. This is inbred grass. This grass is dipped too far into the fourth cousin bucket. Um, but yeah, it's, it's kind of like, you know, I'm, 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 would I rather play the glitchy version uh, today uh, or wait for a full release? I'd rather play the glitchy version. I get other people that would rather wait, uh, which is why I think a beta tag would have at least been um, appropriate, right? Because then the people that don't want to play the glitchy hot mess, they can wait till the beta is done. But even then, you, let's be real, we know Frontier, if they did a beta, they'd still have a glitchy hot mess on launch. <laughs> ditch grass? You want me to ditch the grass? Well, hold on, I'm going to sample this last one, and then for some reason he's going to burn the sample. Like, it's not like we take the canister, store the sample. It's like, no, we, we, we got the sample, now burn the hell out of it so we can get the next thing. And I was thinking about getting those weird lumpy rocks, but nah. Let's take another dangus moment here to appreciate this beautiful... What have I done? Uh, oh, okay, hold on. And there we go. That's a nice screenshot. <laughs> Inbred ditch grass. <laughs> I want to live on this planet. This is a nice planet. Well, it needs more stores and stuff, but what the hell's that? Hold on, there's something over there. Something foggy. I was hoping to see space cactus, though. Does any, did anyone see a space cactus? What kind of Canadian are you? Um, from the Neptune, not the French one. <laughs> from the Neptunian Canadian colonies. Um, Toronto. Which is why every time uh, Ghost Draft says something like it's uh, it's better than Toronto, <laughs> I'm like, oh, Toronto. Love Ghost Draft, by the way. You guys. If you don't know Ghost Draft, uh, look up G Ghost Jafafi. So I don't know what is spawning this um, Smoky Dew, but 
hold on, there's more smoky dew beyond this rock. I hope I'm not about to leap into an active volcano. Where is this dew coming? What is going on? Where's smoke come from? They say where there is smoke, there is fire. Well, all I see is rocks. Oh wait, there's the fire. In the sky. A beautiful red sun. Well, it's not a red sun, but the atmosphere makes it look like that. Uh, okay, where'd my SRB go? Hopefully, okay, I can still see my ship. I'm like, hopefully we're not too far away that my ship has departed. I do kind of think that's funny where your, 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 um, uh, your, your spaceship, if you go far enough away, it's like, eh, I'm going to orbit. I'm bored with your ground shit. I need to be in space. I am a space creature. All right, back to the ship. Head to our next destination. Uh, calling it a beta would have had to have, to have hide behind the statement, but it is only a beta. By releasing it before it's finished, they deserve... See, that's my thing, is, like, I feel like they probably released it based on, like, oh, we need to release it in this, like, financial quarter, so we'll just release it. Like, but then, like, okay, so then was the alpha the beta? But then why did you call it an alpha when it was clearly not an alpha? It was much more refined than an alpha you would expect from an alpha. So I feel like the alpha was the beta, but they wanted to brand it as an alpha for marketing purposes to make it, like, lower your expectations, right? And so it's like, <coughs> I appreciate the products that Frontier um, develops, but they do seem to have this weird, like, psychological marketing uh, tactic to, like, just fuck with you. <laughs> if you were just, like, honest about it, it's like, yeah, we didn't do ship interiors because, like, that's really hard, yo. I'd be like, oh, no doubt. No doubt. Well, what do you got? No big deal. Give us that later, man. You said, you said you would do space legs at the beginning. You gave us space legs. They'll give us ship interiors at one point or another. Like, I'm fine being patient. Most people are fine being patient. All we want to know is, like, what's going on? What are you doing? Where, where are we going? What's next? That's the important questions. For now, I think there's definitely enough content uh, to, you know, get me playing this game uh, again and enjoying it. Uh, you know, maybe at least a couple weeks before I start screaming about uh where are my where are my space legs or not sp we already have space legs. um uh, space exteriors i want to go to the outside of my ship and use my mechanical servos to uh repair it and or destroy it there is that frontier all right um so before we go we're gonna have a little bit of fun with this black hole which is quite a sight and not too far away. Man, I miss these planetary nebulas when I'm not in them. Yeah, has anyone here not gone to a planetary nebula before? If so, like, please, please do, do it. Do yourself a favor. What's up, Ray? Ray Mobula? It is a dangus day. It's strange, we just got like a freak rainstorm about, um, was about an hour ago it just rained for like five minutes like hard and then stopped so now it's like super super humid it's like living on mercury yeah the other weird thing too is like you can land on a planet and get first footfall and find artificial structures on it so you're literally like getting out of your srv next to a building and it's like hey you're the first person on this planet well who built this I guess robots. It could be explained through robots. Everything could be explained through robots. Um, all right, we're just getting some distance. Get ourselves into orbital cruise, because the black hole is on the other side of this monstrosity of a planet. And for those just tuning in, we are in the Robin's Nest, which is a planetary nebula not far from the bubble. You could visit this in, in less than an hour with a decent jump range. And I invite you to, because it is a quite a cool system to come check out. Look at them atmospheres. All green and it looks like pea soup. It's gross. I don't know. I haven't had pea soup in a while. Maybe my taste buds have changed, but I never really was into that. Uh, let's see here, Joe. You're saying the alpha is not all the features. Uh, uh, not all the features are there. And here's buggy. Beta is the features are there, but we may have to rewrite stuff to fix bugs. Yeah, maybe it is somewhere between the two. Um, and what's up, Bond Gamer? Oh seven, sir. Um, yeah, maybe it is somewhere between an alpha and a beta. Like, is the, did the Greeks have a word for that? Abaleta? Alpha? Alpha? 
<laughs> I guess that, that, that they just moved on with the alphabet. So this is a Kama, or a Seta. A Seta, and it's not a Beta, it's not an Alpha, it's a Seta. Is that, is that the next one in the alphabet? Alpha, Beta, Gamma? Oh, Gamma. It's, it's a Gamma. Why do I know the Latin alphabet? Grandma did something right. <laughs> Instilling the first three letters of the Greek alphabet for reasons unknown. But one day, one day I'll be on a stream and I'll need to know that third letter. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, Canadian. Uh, it's a beautiful day in Slidell, Louisiana, sunny and 82 degrees outside. So are you not like burning in fire? Or wait, 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 wait. You're on that other temperature grade. You know, I actually looked it up once, and like, it's like they're both named after like, it's like Joseph Celsius and Frank Fahrenheit, both independently came up with their temperature systems based on measuring. You know, it's like fucking like putting like brine in in, in water. Like they basically, let's take this pickle brine and some water. We'll put some ice in it. Okay, that's what I'm gonna call zero. Is that good? I think it's like based on like salt and fresh water or whatever. It's like I guess like. One of them is more for, like, like sea people, and one of them is more for, like, lake people. I don't know. I, I, I would say uh, the Kelvin scale is maybe a little bit too inefficient for day-to-day -day use. But we need a new temperature scale. We need, we need to ditch this Joseph Celsius, Frank Fahrenheit, Papa Danny. Oop, what have I done? Sorry, I just dropped something. Get, get rid of all the... We need a new temperature scale for modern times. Uh, I call it the, uh, the, the, the Danga, Danga scale. <laughs> How many Dangas is it? How many Dangus is it? It is three Dangus. Is that hot? Is that cold? Eh. You know, what, what is hot? Hot is like, you know, ten Dangus. Just make it a scale of one to ten. Um, and then one to negative ten, right? Negative ten would be like, uh, heat death of the universe. Uh, plus ten would be like the Big Bang. So, your average summer day is probably like a 5 or a 6. That's how the new scale works, okay? Let's start. <laughs> I can't even take myself seriously sometimes. Uh, so, Joe, you're saying that you've been writing computer games since 1978 for the TRS-80, and the alpha and beta versions of code existed then, even though they have changed in names. What did they call them? Um, Celsius's before? The Ultra Dengue. <laughs> Kelvin and Hobbes. <laughs> that would be a good, interesting movie um, about like the life of the guy who invented, like Joseph Celsius or something. They should do like a biopic on, but like like not a real biopic, like a comedic take on it, right? It's fifty three dengus outside. Oh my god, you're you're, you're hotter than like like five point three universes of of heat. Oh, I think we're, um, yeah, this is probably, we're gonna, we're just gonna have to stop on this black hole. Get ready for this, guys. Get ready. Oh, 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 wow, it's a slippery one. Hard to, um, hard to actually get these wily little suckers to, all right, hold on. All right, we're gonna go right in the center. We're jesting with a black hole here. I'm actually surprised that, uh, wow, like it's got a very small uh, hitbox, so to speak. Okay, line it up right in the center. Can't miss this time. Ah! <laughs> yes, you're supposed to take me seriously. This is a documentary, don't you know? And so here we are in a beautiful black hole inside of, oops, uh, there we go. So inside of a black hole, inside of a planetary nebula. And this creates just this lovely, lovely effect. This very uh, pastel-y, slippery background. The effects of black holes are some of the coolest, neatest things to check out in this game. I was hoping that maybe, surprise, and honestly we did more with black holes and now they're actually dangerous, but no, you can still basically you just go to a black hole. Where, where is it? See, they're slippery. They, they, you don't even know where they are because they hide. Well, I think that's it. Yeah, there you are. But you can go right into a black hole. You can just hit its exclusion zone. 
and then you just start bouncing safely. You're not even increasing in heat. Like, there's literally, like, no, no danger whatsoever. Uh, hold on, how do I do this without messing things up? Okay. That's me trying to go forward. Ah! <laughs> but yeah, this is a, uh, a very nice black hole. And you can actually, uh, last night I was lining it up with um, Bernard's star, which you can't even um, see from this angle. Hold on, let me get back into Super Cruise. You still like measuring distances in femto light years. Yeah, they say, say well, um, hey, how do you get to, uh, you know, how do you get to Young and Blur? And it's like, oh, well, it's just about... Uh, 0.7 astronomical units in uh, to the, the Cardinal West. Woo! Love that little reversal, eh? This is what I love about black holes. Just these amazing um, visual moments. So cool. Uh, now, of course, you have the uh, Bernard's Loop over there. See if we can maybe rotate around this black hole. One more time, line it up. Do do do. This is like one of the coolest but trippiest things you can do in this game. I think about there might do it. Start dropping. No, not quite. Where is it? See, that's the thing. It becomes very hard to tell when you're close to the black hole where anything is. Um, but anyway, you, you, I'll, I'll leave you fine folk to come out here and explore the black hole and get your own pretty screenshots. Um, but certainly this is, you know, one of my favorite things. Yes, we have our milk and bags. And I love that you brought that up because um, every time I talk to, like, Americans or people from the UK or people from Lave or something like that... Um, they all freak out when I say, like, oh, you, you, you guys have any bags of milk? A femto light year is, oh, it's a meter. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> that is a practical unit of measurement, then. Um, but, yeah, we, we have our, our milk in bags. I mean, you can get them in the cartons, too. That's actually usually what I do, just because when you buy bags of milk, you usually have to buy them in threes. I know. The plot thickens. We drink our milk in, out of bags, and you have to buy them in threes. And then you put them in a jug. Okay, so actually the next uh, place that we're going is actually the Witch Head Nebula. Well, that's nice. Uh, Witch Head Nebula is actually the uh, second episode I ever did for Elite Dangus was a visit to this nebula. And I haven't been back since. So it'll be interesting. And we'll try and get some first footfall um, when we get there. Alright, and we're going to jump from very close to the black hole. Let's see if this creates any interesting visuals. Apparently I'm heating up. Oh, so now you heat up when I try to jump. Oh, it's just kind of a fade out thing. Lame. Uh, <laughs> uh, BD30623 is a very super cool tiny blue nebula, only the B-class star. I think I looked at that one. Um, hold on, I'll check that out in a second. Let me just stabilize here. Um, now, one thing I can't help now is um, because of first footfall and because of sort of the, you know, uh, chance of discovering new life and new civilizations, every time I visit a planet, I'm looking now to see, like, you know, what's interesting about it, right? Like, we could go down and grab first footfall here. In fact, you know what? This one has an atmosphere. I think it's going to be too hot because, like, it's pretty close to the star, but... Th we are the pioneers that must test these things so that others may tutorialize it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's let's check this out. We do have how many? 13 jumps is not that much. Um, BD30623. Let me just see if that's already on my list. I don't think it is. No. I saw that one, because what I was using to plan was the um, EDSM galactic map. You can kind of throw up a map and then list out... I don't speak French. <laughs> I do not speak a French. How dare you think I'll speak a the French? The, the, when I do such a great in French accent, no, accent, <laughs> that, 
that was pretty uh, pretty bad, even for the law. Um, no, they tried to force me to speak French in in in, uh, in school. It was like you know, you had to uh, speak French up until a certain point, but uh, it never took. Uh, I did try to learn Italian as well. Le got a little bit further with Italian. It's a little bit easier than French. It's a lot less just like things that you don't need to know. Which, which is honestly like when I think about English, how the hell do people learn English? <laughs> English is just like people just jumbled up a bunch of random stuff. Well, why, why do you do that in English? Uh, well, you know, you just do. You just need to know. I'm not going to bother scanning this one. I just want to tag it. I just want to tag it with my feet. Um... They're coming jugs and cartons. In Southeast Louisiana, we have the, the, the jugs and cartons and gallon-sized jugs. Well, that seems like a normal way to drink uh, milk. Why is the Kovac French really weird? I don't know. It, was, uh, it came like that when I bought it. <laughs> I actually do that in all my ships, where I just pick random weird languages, and I have no idea what my ship is telling me, and that that's perfect. The problem is that, um, obviously, uh, if you know my computer Nova, who doesn't speak in streams because... She's not real. Um, but I used like a, a voice program that was very similar to the default Covis. And um, when I'm filming and stuff like that, sometimes uh, it's easier just to have other languages and voices so that it doesn't create confusion because sometimes I like to leave their audio in. English is simpler than Dutch. Well, sure, I guess. I don't know much, much in Dutch. But English is definitely probably like, you know, for someone who's, you know, spoken all my life, I still screw it up quite a lot. But, um, it seems overcomplicated. I'd like to, like, I was considering, like, like learning Japanese or something like that, but I'm like, that seems like it's a difficult task. I, I, I suppose it's possible, because people do it, but... <laughs> Languages are neat. My landing gear out way too early on that one. Okay, landing gear down. We got some rocks. This looks like a rocky, craggy planet. Oops, 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 oops. Okay. Shields took the hit on that one. That's what they're there for. Good old shields. Well, this is a neat atmospheric planet. We'll just uh, step out, take a little walk, let the shields recharge. Uh, you know, a little Spanish. Yeah, Spanish sounds nice, too. I mean, if you, uh, you know, learn Spanish, I think it's easier to learn, like, French and Italian, because they're all kind of based on the same sort of principles or whatever. Latin languages. Uh, the NGC 7822. Let me see. Is that on my list? NGC 7822. No. But, uh, where, where be it at? Let me see here. If I do throw that in there... Ugh. Okay. Choo-choo. Oh no, that's far too far. Yeah, that would be like 2,000 light years in and of itself, so... That... Maybe I'd have to do for like... It's own kind of stream or something. Is that... What is that? The Eagle Nebula? We are be going to be going to the Eskimo Nebula, or... Sorry, Eskimos, um, whatever it's called, that is no longer called the Eskimo Nebula, because apparently that offended all of the indigenous ice people. Um, but yeah, we got our first footfall here. This is just some random atmospheric planet we wanted to check out along the way, and not, not a bad view, actually. You can kind of, I wonder if you can kind of see the uh, planetary nebula. We're still only 50, 50 light years away. What's up, SP4H? How you doing? Back to space. Uh, you got the French cause because she sounds hot. Well, can't argue with that. I do love the French accent, especially the Parisian accent. Oh, Ray, you have a you have a, um, a tourist beacon there. Did you like get Frontier to put um, that tourist beacon there? Like you're the one who recommended it, or is like your name actually in it? It's like this is where we buried the body of Ray Mob. Don't tell anyone. It hasn't happened yet. Shh! Don't tell him. All right, uh, we got a few more jumps, but we're going to be heading to the Witch Hut Nebula next. 
Yeah, there are quite a lot of lists, or a lot of um, locations that I threw on my list. I'm not sure if I'll be able to get to them all. But hopefully. Hopefully, because just like with the bubble tour, I thought that was a nice, good, concise list. The only one I didn't get to in the bubble tour was Hutton Orbital, because I'm like, uh, I don't want to spend like 45 minutes doing nothing <laughs> at the end of an already long, like, three and a half, four hour stream. Uh, what's my favorite food? Pritza. It's always pritza. It's gotta be pritza. I am contractually obligated to eat pritza. But maybe pancakes as well. Pancakes and pizza. Pizza pancakes. That's actually, has that never been done before? So we got some atmospheric worlds here, but none of them are landable because they don't have that little, you know, little ring on it. Sorry, one thing I also like to check for now is these um, space anomalies, right? I think the only way, I, I, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but you, you can only see them in the FSS scanner or in, like, the side menu. You don't see them on the... Um, uh, system map. And those, um, you know, when I, when I found them, it's just like, oh! Oh yeah, loot, sorry, more like 1.5 hours, yeah. Is it really 1.5 hours? I've, I've only been to Hut Norbal once. Can you tell why? Got my free anaconda, so don't need to go again, that's why. Now I do hear that if you go to Hut Norbal now, obviously you don't get a free anaconda. They, they discontinued that a couple of years back. But uh, if you go to uh, Hut and Orbital, the Panther Clipper, uh, the model for it is actually docked there on one of the landing pads. It's no word of a lie. You gotta head to Hut and Orbital, check it out yourself. Um, however, weirdly enough, in camera mode, it, it, it doesn't let you go into camera mode. And if you try to take screenshots from within your ship, it just blacks out your screen. It just, you just take a screenshot of, of blackness. That's why no one's posted it yet online. But spread the word. Um, NGC 7822. Okay, hold on. Let me see if that one was on there. Uh, no, I got nothing NGC in here. I have a feeling that NGC is. Well, let's just let's just look and see. Uh, what is this? NGC 7822. Oh. It's a whole sector, but yeah, that's a bit far. Like you're talking about this nebula out here. Ooh, it has a pretty, uh, pretty number of uh, the blue stars. Yeah, now this is pretty far. Like even I'm not even going as far as this. Although I think we're because like where are we? We're down way over here in like Bernard's Loop and the Horsehead Nebula. So we're gonna head up to the Witchhead Nebula. And then I think over to the horse head. And then... I'm out of bookmarks, obviously. <laughs> I need to probably cleanse my bookmarks. There's too damn many. Uh, too many bookmarks. Um, yeah, you can get you can get a free mug as well. Mailed to you. It's crazy. They send you a physical mug if you go to Hot Norville. Uh, <laughs> oh, great for a Dominator suit. So wait, you didn't see the Panther Clipper, but you got the Grade 4 Dominator? Were you in um, open mode? You have to actually fly there in open. If you fly there in solo and then try to relog in open, it won't even work. You have to do the whole thing in open. And you have to start in Polaris, which means that you need the Polaris permit. And I'm not going to tell you how to get that, because part of the rules in the Polaris permit is you don't tell people how they get it, and then you know, otherwise they take yours away. I don't want to lose mine. But your favorite food is boiled crawfish. I've never tried that. Imagine it being like, like, kind of like shrimp. Like tiger shrimp. I like tiger shrimp. Aw, oh, look at this cute little one planet system. Not landable though, so get bent. Now the other thing, I, I, the other thing I'm worried about too is like, they might be hiding things in the asteroid fields now. Because apparently that's what they've been doing it. I know, sorry, I missed a comment from Joe there. Is that working on your MS degree at... Uh, my Chinese office mate told me I had to learn English by memorizing the 365 grammar rules and 3,600 exceptions. See? English is screwed up, man. <laughs> 3,600 exceptions. <laughs> it's, like, it's not even a rule at that point, right? It's a suggestion. No. 
Now, what else is new in Odyssey? Let's see. I did some Thargoid. Uh, I got interdicted or hyperdicted by the Thargoids. That doesn't seem to change that much. There doesn't seem to be all that much of a change to much of the space um, gameplay. Like, they haven't added anything that notable. Ooh, I could map that, but it's also 114 light seconds away. That's not, not worth it for this junky, junky system. Beautiful horse head, though. The color of the horse head nebula. Because if you go to sleep there, you wake up with a horse head in your bed. I think that's a Godfather reference. Was that was that Godfather? Where he wakes up? Like I, I, it's one of those things where you don't know if it was like even in Godfather at this point because I haven't seen that film in ages, or if it was just like from like the spoof movies like Mafia. <laughs> well, like what's the what's the movie where the guy wakes up and there's a horse head in his bed? And also, like, why would you go into... If you're going to kill a man... Like, I guess, like, you go in there to, like, put the horse head to, like, scare him. To let him know that you're going to kill him. Like, you were in his room. He was sleeping. Why didn't you do the deed? Why you gotta... Why you gotta fuck with him? Oh, did I not pop a scan? Or maybe I did. This is another backwater system. Not even any planets. What kind of a star are you? But then, like, you wonder, is Raxla in this belt. It's really painful to try and convince yourself to actually uh, stop for each one of these asteroid belts. They're usually just like a, a smattering of rocks. Oh, it was Godfather. Okay. I need to rewatch those movies. At least the first two. It's a lot of movies from that era where it's like, watch them as a kid. Just haven't gone around to rewatching them as a, uh, you know, an adult. And there's so much in these movies that you can pick up when you know what the hell is going on. As a kid, you're just like, oh, cool, guns and violence. Oh, but then later on, you watch it and go, wow, interesting cinematography, or oh, clever dialogue, or boobies. <laughs> no, that's the one thing that never changes. Ah. How many more jumps? Let's see here. Oh, no, you're not going to look. Fine. It's fine. We're seeing the witch at Nebula get close. And this is like a lovely uh, super jump uh, ship with over, over 50 light years of uh, jump distance. And that's with it not even being uh, fully optimized. I have like missiles on this thing. Why? I don't know. I meant to get dumb fires, but I accidentally bought seeker missiles. And uh, as a result, like when I go to these little facilities and find a bunch of people that I want to blow up, I can't do it. <laughs> so I can't target them. It's kind of annoying. Whoa, okay. So we do got an atmospheric landable here. It's not even been mapped. Oh! Oh, I thought we were going to get glitchy time there. Sometimes it's been doing this really weird glitch. Um, yeah, let's, let's do it. We're gonna map a planet. I wonder what Yamex thinks of this update. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I, I I think that one would be a, a pretty easy one to a pretty easy one to pick. Um, I think you know overall I think Yamex is pretty balanced. I mean, a lot of people say, oh, no, he's negative, he's negative, but no, he's pretty fair. Um, he also praises a lot of the good things. And I've seen a couple of his videos on it. And I think you know he, he definitely agrees, um, and I agree with him that. The release on this was a little bit raw, but there's a lot of good things in it. I mean, this is a foundational update, right? If you think about this as like, remember when Horizons launched and it was like, okay, they launched Horizons, there were no engineers, there were no, um, uh, I think Wings were in at that point. Yeah, Wings came in in the previous round. But like, by the end of Horizons compared to the beginning of Horizons, it, it, vast differences, right? Now, I would argue that, um, you know, if they've released the Horizons all up front in one big thing, um, it might have changed what they prioritized. Like, I don't, like, things like power play kind of sort of fizzled out. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's like, this, this has been a, a big step um, in the game's development by just adding this next dimension. And they've given some content into it that can be expanded 
as the game goes. And as long as that is the case, as long as they are, you know, not like, well, now Elite is done and we shall move on to Planet Zoo 3, then I'm, I'm fine just kind of letting that roll out, right? Like, we know there's things that they probably haven't even... Like, you know, they've put Odyssey out there, but we know that there are rumored new SRV variants, new um, ships even, and these things will come out. Um, and obviously they're staggering it so they can dominate the news cycle for longer times, which again, goes back to this weird thing where I, I feel like there's too much marketing in the game development like strategy, like it, it, like rather than just, you know, hey, like let's create this good product and, and just release it. It's like very much it does feel um, like the, you know, like the release schedule ties in with the marketing more than it does like the quality of the product, right? But they will get there. They will get there. Let's go check out some minor wreckage. You don't do power play? Well, yeah, I mean, I guess some groups are really into it. I wish it was cooler. Um, to me, I think there's a lot of simple things that they could do to improve it. Um, like, the, the concept of it, I like. Um, of signing up to different factions that kind of divides the galaxy, creates natural antagonism. Um, I think it should actually be more about politics, personally, um, than what it is, like, basically data courier missions. It's, like, got a very confusing, terrible system. But I would love it if, like, you know, you sign up to a power and, you know, um, people in the upper echelon of contributions could uh, have more weight to their votes, which is kind of what they do have, right? Um, but those votes should be, like, modifiers. Like, okay, like, everyone in this faction will get, like, uh, extra 50 megajoules of shield or... Or whatever, right? And as the power grows, they can have more modifiers. And that would create, I think, a really interesting system. But it's like the way it is now, it just, I don't know, there's nothing super crazy interesting about it. It's just kind of like, once you get into it, it's very boring. Um, and the special modules, like, I think those should be just removed from power play. Just say, like, okay, you can buy these special modules at these stations, maybe you have to get allied with the, um, uh, the local faction or something like that but like don't make me have to like sign up to uh you know an empire slave faction because i want a specific type of shield i guess that i don't have to do it but you know it just feels that like i don't like those um rewards like the rewards should come in the contributions that you make to the galaxy you should feel your political juju um uh, reward that should be reward in and of itself power play but honestly I think like power play would be a great catalyst for the sort of role player side of the galaxy um, the other thing too is they mentioned like, oh like in power play not everyone's gonna live some of these some of these people will die yeah, look how dark this is some of these power play people will die oh yeah we're gonna have to kill some skimmers can I target you can I target you I think I've gotten myself stuck on a hill. Hold on, landing gear up. Okay, there we go. There we go. <laughs> so it's like, okay, this is a completely unmapped, unlanded planet. And here you have, like, a bunch of skimmers doing god knows what. Unsuitable terrain, my ass. Oh, there we go. There's always just like a few seconds away a better a better piece of terrain. I think the alliance is cool. I like the fact that it's just like a conglomerate of like, it's like not like one particular um, uh, power. It's really like a conglomerate of the masses kind of thing. But, uh, you know, they have suspected Thargoid ties and so that might certainly influence. Um, all right, so don't know if the you know what i'm not gonna risk you guys getting mad with me i'm just gonna preemptively kill you oh he's a slippery one all right you got a problem honest to god they're a little these skimmers are a little easy <laughs> it's a little little bit too easy all right, so let's see what we got here. We got, um, 
an intact cargo rack. We got, ooh, narcotics. All right. That's all we need, really. We're collecting some space narcotics because every explorer needs space narcotics that he just found on some random crash site. <laughs> it was just like, like, what did you, what are you, what are you eating? It's like, what is the, it's like when the dog is eating something. It's like, what are you, what, what are you eating? Where did you get that? Where did you get that? I found it. Yes. All right, now what you can do here, I think the, these little cargo racks, so let's just get our footfall. Ooh, actually, no, I'm in the uh, exploration suit. I'm going to need to actually, what the hell is that? Oh, that's just a piece of the skimmer. There's your first footfall. I actually need to reload out, which I do appreciate that the changing of the loadout is very easy. Like, I don't have to basically go to the local station, wait 25 minutes while my shoot suit gets shipped to me, and then finally, um, you know, by the time it gets there, want to go to sleep. Uh, no, I just go back on my ship and I can... Oh, this thing is floating. And then I can just swap out my suits. What's that? Ow. Um, yeah, what we can do here... Nope, we want this tool. Is we can undo these mag locks. Oops, don't shoot the other stuff. And, uh, yeah, so then after that's done, you would think, okay, now what? Do I get anything? No, you have to go back into your SRV. Is that a new way to die in Odyssey? Eat drugs, eat bad drugs that you find in a crash site? Well, no, but it, it will be now. Uh, then you can find out that, oh, it's chromium, which I don't need, and manganese, which I will take. Give me the manganese. Uh, and is there anything else? No, just chromium, which I absolutely do not need. It's the one thing I don't need. And then you can find yourself getting stuck on this stupid thing. And that's it. All that work just for, like, one material. Um... It would be cool if you could blow these things up, though. Okay, what? <sighs> anyway. So this is just a random planet we wanted footfall on. Wait, what, what was that? Oh, Bronzite Chondrite. No, nothing to lose sleep over. What was the heck was that? Did something just fall off my ship? Is my ship, like, literally falling apart? A piece of my ship just fell off. Where did that come from? Oh, maybe that's a piece of the skimmer. Hopefully. I hope it didn't fall off my ship. It's literally completely see-through. Were those rocks there when I was in my SRV? Hold on a second. I have been hearing about um, invisible rocks. Hey, Phil Barnes. How you doing? Uh, yeah, those rocks are there. Anyway, all right. All we wanted here was foot first, first feet fall. So moving on, let's reboard our ship, which annoys me so much that it shows a picture of an anaconda there. Like, what is actually supposed to go there? Because it feels like a placeholder. It's a little bit lame. And these are the pieces that I'm saying where it just doesn't feel completely, completely finished. Not that I'm complaining. I'm, I'm enjoying Odyssey. It's it's reinvigorated um, uh, all that is great and wonderful in the Elite Dangus galaxy. But um, it needs some work, you know? Alright, let me see here. So we are only six jumps away from the Witch Head Nebula. It's not too bad. And we're keeping an eye out for space oddities and looking for interesting atmospheric planets to um, land on, get our first footfall, and... Uh, you know, graffiti. We want to bes bespoil all that is wonderful and good in nature. Oh, look at that. We're going to take a nice little jump through the red atmosphere of a planet at dawn. Is that the primary buffer panel? <laughs> Next thing you will take real wear and tear. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, the, there's there's one place that I don't... I'll have to look it up. Because the problem is I put my list together. Ooh, a lovely binary. I put my list together. Oops, switch modes. I put my list together for all the places that I wanted to check out that were kind of based around, like, last night I just kind of 
said, what the hell was this bookmark? Ah, oh, what the heck, I'll go out there and check it out. It looks like a planetary nebula. Let's see what those look like in Odyssey. Which I'm glad I did. Oh, wait, what's that? Is that an Earth-like? It looks earth like -y, but it's probably not. Not with that attitude. Whatever. Got five jumps. Five jumps from Witchhead. Um, but yeah, so I, I kind of went out here to this beautiful system, and then if you saw the thumbnail for this stream, um, man, like, that was the, the first place we were at, which was that planetary nebula, the birds, the robin's nest, I believe it's called. Um, super, super cool. Just blew me away. Last night I was just, like, spellbound by the awe and beauty of this universe. Um, and thought, well, you know, yeah, for the stream tomorrow, which I was originally planning to just, again, blow myself up as many times as possible. Very well, let's explore the, the, uh, the exploration side of Odyssey. What does it look like? How, how, do, how do the new planets look like? What does flora and fauna look like? What are the different notable locations? And what can I smear my name on? Okay, so this is an interesting system. But now also when I see that it's been like mapped by multiple people, it shows me that like a lot of people will pass through this system, right? So if you're looking for like, you know, effective first footfall, oh, that would be nice to land on. Though I think it might be a little bit dangerous. Uh, do, do, do. There is some, some moons here. Yeah, you know what? Let's do another one. Let's do another moon. This is gonna make this journey take forever, but um, you know what's what's exploration if you can't stop every once in a while and smear your name on things, right? I also want to map it and see if uh, see if there's anything cool there. Maybe they will add where you, um, your ship will take real wear and tear. Well, the Anaconda is the the one ship in the game. Correct me if I'm wrong. I believe it is the one ship in the game that has any kind of damage modeling. Um, so as you do sort of um, muck up your anaconda, uh, bits will look exploded and, you know, sections of the ship will be missing, um, which is really cool. And that was supposed to be part of the original vision, but I think it's something to do with performance issues, probably. <laughs> uh, but this is like... Since the beginning of the game, the anacondas had that damage. Like, they were planning on doing it very early. I don't know what happened. Would like to see that though. I do um, often love, you know, to see uh, paint jobs that are down to like 1% and it really looks like you've been out there in the black for a while. Uh, but I would love to see it. You're coming home from a, a combat zone, just like basically a seat on with a windshield and a thruster. <laughs> and everything's just, just uh, you know, in the process of exploding or electrifying people. That would be amazing. Though most of the time, if I get to that stage, I get just get blown up. Oh, good, good, good. Okay, I was like, I was like, Phil, yeah, because I was like wondering if maybe the Cobra or something had it too, and they took it away or something. I feel like there were, I feel like, and this is like totally um, subjective, but I feel like there were two ships that were originally there, and then they, they canceled one of them, sort of thing. Shooting way too many probes. Okay, we got some biologics. Now, one thing that does uh, annoy me a little bit is like, okay, when you have multiple biologics, you can switch between your filters. When there's only one, I, it doesn't tell. I don't know where I'm supposed to find out um, what it is. Like, did I? Is it by by biologics? Is it like? Uh, is this like? Um, uh, space mushrooms? Or is it space cactus? Or is it just stupid uh, bacteria smeared on the ground? Which honestly is like the lamest discovery. When you, when you go to a planet to look for life and then you find like, oh I found like bacterial colonies in the rocks. When you know that there are like brain trees and space cactuses out there. doesn't do, kind of takes away the fun of uh, discovery a little bit. Um... You said the reason why it has that is I heard the anacondas were modeled for ruined generation ships. Interesting. Really. Imagine like a generation anaconda <laughs> where it's just like, it's like two families. It's just like, okay, we have to be really careful about not inbreeding. So like, Jimmy, you're going to be with uh, uh, Sally from this other family. I don't like her. Well, unfortunately, your genetics force you to do this. 
That could be a nice Romeo and Juliet story of a generation ship that was just too small. And the families, to avoid inbreeding, had to do arranged marriages. Somebody called Drew, Drew Ragar. I got a book idea. Uh, Pre-Horizon, some ships had extendable boarding ramps. Interesting. That is very interesting, actually. Hold on. I feel like I'm seeing... Okay, like, there's the artificial structure, but there's some weird dirt... Yeah, there's just weird ridges in the dirt. They're just rocks. So yeah, these artificial structures on a planet that's never been kissed by an explorer's lips before. Ooh, yeah, we got skimmers. They are not gonna like when I take their data. So we're gonna we're gonna take care of that. We're gonna take care of that before they before they have a chance. Now one thing I really don't understand is why I can't refuel my SRV. Like I'm at 68% fuel or whatever, but like what why is it when I don't like board the ship my fuel gets refueled? But then like I'm pretty sure I can like Hold on. Yeah, I can synthesize fuel here out of the materials that I have on hand, but I can't refuel my SRV in my ship. That's a cool shiny cliff. Again, I love these atmospheric um, planets where you can see, like, you know, this kind of... It's a little bit, like, a little more No Man's Sky. <coughs> kind of like, I don't know, it defines, like, each planet has more, like, characteristics or whatever. I'm really enjoying this. Oh yeah, out of science mode into kill everything mode. Yup, 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 yup. They didn't stand a chance. Stupid skimmers. Alright, and the reason you come to these places is for this thing. You can get some, uh, find some, you know, stock trading secrets that here in the black where they've been like, I guess, like, what are people, um, what are people hiding out here? What, like, specialized legacy firmware and usual encrypted files. But did you have to, like, create a whole secret base and, you know, sort of buried in rocks and all this stuff? Oh, wait, you can go inside there? Hold on. Let me get out here. Um... One of those random human signals while exploring? Well, yeah, I'm finding these on all these unexplored planets. It's like, just these, like, little facilities. And I assume that, like, maybe they're built by robots, which is why you don't get first footfall. But, like, there's no panels that you can carve off these. There's really no purpose here other than to uh, get some data with your SRV, really, right? And it's like, you know, again, um, is this just, you know, foundational stuff? This is just the beginning, and they're going to... Add uh, more and more. Entering restricted area. Hold on. Can I go in here? I've never seen a door on these before. But there's no, like, panel to get the door open. Leaving restricted area. Apparently I'm in a restricted area when I'm, like, here. But yeah, I, I, I doubt this is going to open up. Let me in! Let me in! There's a Thargoid out here! Man, I do love those skies, though. Yeah, they're out here mining Brevacoin. Uh, let's do free cam and see if we can... It does look like there's something in here, but like not, not for human consumption. No, maybe these are, in the future, they'll add um, subterranean facilities and caves and such. But still, interesting places to visit on a completely unexplored planet that's never had humans set foot on them. But, you know, they're ready. They're ready for us to come. They've built the buildings. They've deployed the skimmers. Now all they need is the people. Come out here and join the colony today. Alright, let me just back this up. Let's head back to our little diamond back. Whoa, 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 whoa. Now I did kind of screw up the bindings because I put mouse steering on this, so oftentimes I'm like, why do I keep turning left? Why do I keep turning left? And it's because my mouse is off to the left. 
Oh, your anaconda is named the MCRN Dawn. I'm like, let me say this very carefully so I don't know if I <laughs> say something racist. Donninger. It's actually a pretty cool name. And what's up, Logic Block? How you doing? See, it's weird. Like, in this diamond back, I, I feel like I got Christmas lighting all over the place. This shit is a joke. Horizons is still better than this junk. Well, can Horizons look like this, though? I mean, I, I agree. It's not optimized. Um... I think it looks better than Horizons. Yeah, uh, no, I kind of get the lighting argument. I do find the lighting in Horizons might have been a little bit better. Uh, this obviously has like you know more gameplay and stuff around it, but yeah, there there have been definitely Donninger, Donninger. Uh, there's been like um, a lot of planets have been landing on at night, and they're like super dark. Whereas on Horizons, you could at least see a little bit. Um, Engineer bases certainly need to be reworked and reworked. And, and look, I imagine, like, they're doing hot fixes right now. They've got to have a big patch coming that they're uh, going to do before they even start thinking about announcing uh, new content. Because they need to take care of the people who bought the game and are having a great experience with it, right? So, you know, fix your bugs, right? Fixing the bugs is going to be a big one. That's um, allowing people to log in uh, or get around those, like, frame rate issues and whatever. Uh, it's weird because like I saw something from like Braben himself who who you know graced us with his presence, which was awesome. It's nice to see Braben like involved in the game that he is so passionate about and um, has developed. Um, but he was like, I play on this shitty computer at home just so that I can experience what normal people would would have to experience. <laughs> but I've got my top of the line computer at the studio. <laughs> just, but it's like no, it's cool that he does that because then it's like okay, like he's legit trying to but uh, again a lot of people out there saying they're having problems uh, i certainly believe them i was having problems uh during the alpha a lot Ah, uh, yes the show the expanse the doninger that yeah 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 i was gonna say like that's where that's from was that the ship that got blown up though it was the the the, the rasinante is the one that they flew uh was the doninger the one that got blown up at the beginning i can't remember the name of the damn ships, but yeah, I, I really want to rewatch the Expanse all the way from the beginning again. Um, now that it, you know it's the, it's not currently. Well, I've watched everything I can't watch. I think uh, I mean I want I really want to go back to like uh, Star Trek: The Next Generation again. I'm itching for it. Hey, what's up, Reese Toward? Torward? Torward? And. Uh, I'm angry I pre-ordered it I had got my refund. Well, I'm glad that you got your refund. Um, yeah, I pre-ordered it too. I'm not angry about it. Um, like, I'll, I, I'm certainly happy to explore this new stuff or whatever. But, um, yeah, I did that same thing. Like, well, I love the Batman games. And then when Arkham... What was the last one? Like, Arkham City came out? It was that last one where you, like, get a tank and shit, which is so weird for Batman. Um, it was, like, Zack Snyder Batman, maybe. But um, uh, I refunded it because of performance issues. Like, like they basically like optimized it for console, didn't bother for PC, and then essentially said like we're not even going to bother optimizing it for PC. We've like basically got rid of our dev team and moved on. And I pff, hit the refund button on a pre-order um, because that game, like after I tried to load it in, just ran sluggish. And so I'm like, nope, don't want this. So I totally uh, agree with that. If, if it ain't if it ain't working, if it's making you mad, get your money back and go do something fun and come back to it later when it's when it's uh, fixed. I never came back to Arkham uh, City or whatever it was. But bugs generate content, like fake falling stations. Ah, uh, yeah, no, that was just an instancing thing, which I figured it would be. I was like, no, nah, like, number one, they need to be fixing bugs, not dropping stations and advancing the Thargoid narrative. Like, fix some stuff first, make sure Odyssey works before you start, like... Whoa, Blue Cobra. See, see what I mean? <laughs> yeah, if they were trying to do like, we're going to do the largest Return of the Thargoids event. It's the War on Soul. We're going to want everyone to pile into our servers. Make sure the servers damn well work. <laughs> Shouldn't be a problem. Hopefully it won't be a problem. Uh, I'm still waiting to get Odyssey to come out on my Xbox until I get... And i got to wait till the fall. Yeah, I feel bad about that. And you know what? I really... Um, 
I really, really hope that uh, they will um, bring back the, um, whatchamacallit, uh, or sorry, uh, merge the console and the uh, uh, all the different universes so that people can play together for once. Oh, I'm just gonna read all these comments now. Uh, that post by David Bray was a little tone deaf. He works in software and graphics. The rest of us don't. I mean, look, I'm, I'm happy that he did it, right? I'm happy that he's like acknowledging people and participating in the community. I think that's really cool. Definitely <laughs> amused me to say like it, where he's just like you know, oh yeah, I'm gonna like. Uh, I, I, I play on my shitty computer. <laughs> I play I play on a, an iPhone just to experience what most of you people probably can afford. Um, <laughs> I really like the new Hyper Jump animation. I agree, Tiny Fox. I am big into that too. Uh, yes, the g gigantic looking Federal Corvette Doniger. The Doniger was the ship that got blown up by still ships. Ah, yes. And arr, I'm not really a pirate. I just poke fun. Well, you know. And pirate, pirate, you know, you don't have to be a pirate to be a pirate, you know? Uh, now let me see here. Why are we going to this system? Because, like, sometimes I actually forget uh, what... Oh! Oh, 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 oh. Right. So, these are the Sinean rocks. Or are they? Hold on. Am I in the right system? No. Oh, that's... Hold on a second. I think I re-optimized my waypoint planner. Um, I think what we're looking for is actually... This one? Yes. Just a couple of junks away. Uh, let me just check also as to why the heck we're going here. Um, Oh, yeah, 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 this is the Witch Head Science Center. Okay. We're just gonna kick around this system and explore. Yeah, as I was saying earlier at the beginning of the stream, is like last night I was just out exploring. Um, just seeing what Odyssey had to offer, checking it out, all the things to be checked out on. And if we could just, yeah. What a nice view this is, eh? Um. But yeah, so I, I kind of thought, well, I want to see a planetary nebula. I went to one that I had bookmarked and then decided for the stream today, I wanted to just kind of look at a bunch of different cool stuff. All right, and the Witch Head Nebula, man, it's been a while since I've been here. It's like coming home to, uh, you know, an old friend. I think we've been going for quite, uh, quite a while here gonna do a, a bio break soon. There's a nice white star. Alright, make sure to probably need to scoop a little fuel at this station. Only two bodies, let's see what we got here. We got this, um, what is this? Class A white star and a Class G. They're both the same age. Wonder if they had the same birthday. This one's a little smaller. This one's a little hotter. Am I armed? Uh, yes. I have. <laughs> Where is it? <laughs> I have seeker missiles for some. Six seeker missiles. I was going to bring, uh, torpedoes. And I don't know why I went with seeker missiles. Seeker missiles are probably the, the, the lamest thing you can bring, because, like, you can only target basically other ships. And if they have shields in any sort of way, then you're screwed. <laughs> I was doing this for some other, um... Yeah, because, like, the other stream concept which I've been doing to capture footage is basically all the different ways that you can die in Elite Dangerous, which is going to be a video uh, I'm going to put out. Um, just basically cataloging all the different formats of rebuy, right? Like... Death by loitering, death by mail slot blocking, death by um, self-destruct, you know, every possible one. So you can see here, yeah, this is uh, the Xena Research Group. And let's see, is there is anything interesting in the system menu here? And it's obviously all unexplored at this point. And so many medium security. The Witch Head Science Center is where we'd like to head and hang out and maybe see if we can just get rid of some of the 
data that we have on board, uh, just so that if I do get blown up, then uh, it's not all lost like tears in the rain. Hold on, where is it? We'll use our super cruise assist just to make the journey easier. Wonderful. All right. I, it is the Witchhead Nebula is was my second episode. My first episode was like checking out barnacles and then going. I ended off going to like one of the engineers, Blackhide. I can't remember which engineer that it was. Um, the second episode was the Witchhead Nebula for science. It was Witchhead Vacation was the name of the episode for science. Um, and then the uh, third episode was the Ghost of Jupiter, or something like that. Um, and the Ghost of Jupiter I really wanted to visit, but it, it, it is one of those like further locations. So I'll do that one another time. I, I would love to get first footfall in you know a couple of those locations. But yeah, I, I definitely want to get some first footfall in the um, the Witchhead sector as well, because um, these are obviously popular tourist destinations, and you know, ten years down the line, uh, new players will be coming to visit these locations and they can see my name just smeared all over the cosmos it'll be lovely i came into the game uh too late to uh get most of the you know sort of discovery tags on interesting stuff but the dweller yes black eye to the dweller space 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 <laughs> it's basically my, my shatner impression there death by noob hammer Death by Noob Hammer is like the noobs are the hammers. Like, would this be like you go to like assault a newbie station and then like seven sidewinders come out and, and um, swarm you to death? <laughs> <coughs> oh, wait, why am I trying to steer? I got super cruise assist on and just let the computer do the steering see the problem is that anytime i get into a civilized system i'm freaking out because of all this crap but apparently i've got all these fines a hundred thousand dollars for, for god knows what twenty thousand for this and then i've got bounties up the wazoo uh including that jerk bill turner and bean nahi is that like the the mr bean i don't know I'm pretty stacked with bounties, and so oh, ooh, oh! How did I not see you coming in? It's just like like all of a sudden, I'm very close to this like gorgeous gas giant that looks quite amazing. It looks like a, a cream, a creamy planet. Like a, it's like would you like some little dollops of coffee in your cream? I like the look of this. Of course, Witchhead Science Center is in uh, this little asteroid felt belt, which is super cool. Let's drop out of orbit. And there you have it. Now, I, I do love these asteroid bases. Ooh, 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 okay. <laughs> that pop-in was a little concerning. Oh, apparently I have illegal cargo. Oh, wait. Yeah, 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 the narcotics, right? <laughs> Okay, all right, we're gonna have to do this stealthy, all stealthy styles. Okay, power to engines. We're gonna request docking, but as soon as we do, that's gonna trigger system authority to want to scan these. So three, two, one. Okay, and boost. No, do not slow down for auto dock. No time for your shenanigans. Boost again. Boost, boost, boost. Into the base slide before we get scanned. Okay, now slow down for dog. Yes! <laughs> and that's how you smuggle, folks. So many bounties. How am I alive? I don't I don't know. I'm dead inside. Maybe that kind of balances it out. Um, one of your oldest screenshots is your crate MK2 in this very gas giant. Oh, cool. This is a, this is a nice one. Uh, can I explain the new ranking system? Uh, so, the warden, you mean like the ranking system? Like, like this crap? Um... So, I guess to explain it is, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I think, like, obviously your combat rank is ships killing ships. Uh, your explorer rank is is uh, booping and scanning and, and all that wonderful um, exploration data. Uh, your trade rank is just basically what you trade at markets. So, literally just go mine a bunch of void opals and you'll get elite in, like, no time. I literally got, like, I went from, like, the fifth rank to elite in, like, two trips in Boran. 
Uh, then your CQC rank is basically, you know, um, go into CQC and play CQC. Uh, mercenary rank, I believe that is like killing people with guns, right? So like doing combat zones or uh, slaughtering stations uh, mercilessly. And then your exobiologist rank, I believe that's for handing in genetic samples, though to be honest, um, I'm about to explore what that might actually look like. Uh, because I've not handed in any genetic samples until um, I'm about to. Mail slot gangster. Coming in quick. This is kind of neat. You do get a little um, background image, which seems to change, I guess, based on like the... Um, where is it? Like the faction state or something? Anyway. Let us cash in some of our universal cartographics here. See my balance about about half a billion. No big deal. I'm not rich enough to buy a fleet carrier. What was that saying? It's, oh, that one's probably not far enough. There you go, a little 3.5 million dollars. No big deal. Not bad. Let's see if there's another page we can sell. Massage à toi. Whoa, whoa. Whoa, ship computer. What are you what are you implying here? You want to have a massage at all? Like a three-person <laughs> massage? What is what is my ship computer hitting on me? Um, okay, so now we've done that. Now what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna disembark, which this is this is what Odyssey is all about, baby! You gotta go on foot and hand in at Vista Genomics. Yes, that is the plan, Stan. And man, I mean, like, this is this is the extra dimension to the game that I am so excited about with Odyssey, where, like, you know, despite all the flaws, it's so cool to be able to do this. I don't know when it's going to wear off, when it's just become annoying, but for now, I'm in love again. And this is actually, it looks like a different station. Like, did they not even... Sa Health and safety! There's wires around here, and there's things here. Somebody call Mechanic Man! Remember that guy? He does some great videos. He does like the VR uh, thing where he pretends to be a mechanic. They're super funny. Uh, like really, uh, between him and Burger Ant and Ghost Chafafi, that's like, your top, and Yamix, that's your that's your top tier uh, elite dangus comedy. Burger Ant is another one where I oh I, I can't get enough of that guy. Hey yo, it's Burger Ant. <laughs> oh. Achilles drones. Wait, wait, wait. Optimize, iterate, e refine, exterminate. Ooh, Arma Rum. Take that. Yeah, let's just take a peek out the window and see how this looks from inside an asteroid terminal. I do like the orangey light. I do like this guy walking around aimlessly. What is he doing? What are you doing, sir? Are you trying to go up on the? On, you want to sit down? You forget how to sit down? You having some trouble there, sir? Do you want me to help you with this this the glass? No? You okay? Where are you going, sir? Where, where are you going? Oh wait, am I stuck? Son of a bitch! Son of a bitch, you trapped me! Help me, sir! Help me! I'm stuck! <laughs> what is going on? I am literally stuck on this. Uh, no, I'm not in the US, but I'm in Canada, which is basically uh, uh, hop, skip, and a jump over. I can't, I can't move now. I'm stuck. Well, let me try and crouch. Um, but I would imagine most of the complaints are coming from the USA because they only care about British people. <laughs> Frontier! It's literally just like, yeah, we're having this big competition. You should all check it out. Oh, all if you only if you live in the UK and, 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 and Ireland. It's like, oh, thanks, Frontier. Like, they never do anything for, like, um, outside of the UK, which I get it. That's where most of their things are from, but, well, I am literally stuck because of that jerk. I tried to help this guy out, and look, what, look where that got me. See, this is why I'm like, this is not ready for 100% release, and if this was called a beta, I wouldn't be freaking out right now! Okay, no big deal. Simple solution. Now, this is this is the other thing. Is like, despite like, um, you know, if I were to compare this to Star Citizen, like Star Citizen was like unplayable. At least in Elite, uh, Elite Odyssey, live beta, most of the problems are fixable just by logging out, logging back in, and gotta respect that. That 
you know, if it is a glitchy, glitchy mesh, glitchy mess, it's a pretty polished turd, you know? At least there's, at least there's that. All right. And now let's just avoid that bench, like the devil. All I wanted to do is look out the window, too. And just admire. Okay, this is super cool. See? Like, okay. For all the glitches, for all the, 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 the terrible things that happened, uh, super cool to stand here. And I wish a ship would like, come in at this moment as I hide behind this plant. Are there any ships coming? We are at a pretty quiet station out there in the Witch Head Nebula. But this perspective is great. I love it. I love it. Alright, uh, what do these genome people want? Hello, ma'am. Your clothing is shifting as <laughs> look at it. There's some weird pop in there. Alright, so I've never traded anything to these people. Julissa Eaton, walk me through what I gotta do here. I'd like to sell my organic data. Yes, sir, we do accept semen samples, just, you know, they need to be packaged in a jar. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, so apparently, like, three samples, or I guess, like, yeah, I've got, like, a few different ones here. This is interesting. So, yeah, like, you get about 130k per uh, three for triad, right? So that's not bad. Um, you're the first to log Prasium Bioluminescent Anomalies and Frutexa Flabellium. Oh, we did that on the stream too. Wonderful. So you then get discovery bonuses on top of that. So that's cool. Oh wait, and that was just one planet. Okay, let's just sell this page. Bacterium Cerberus, Emerald, and Stratum Executitus. That has the word tit in it. Excellent. Okay, and that's it. And then, and then, Can what? Help you with else? Can you help me with anything else? No, not right now, but let me just see here. So, can I know... So this is the other thing, is I really hate the UI. Um, like, you don't get the same information on foot that you do in your ship. When you get into a station, it's like, oh, you, you want to... You think you could go into here and, and, and pick which ship that you want to uh, use? Nope, sorry, because you have to go over here to do that, and then you got to go over here to do that, and... It is kind of like, um, just inconsistent, right? And then these menus, like, you have to go, I think, too deep. So, oh, yeah, see, look, I actually have something in there. What is that? Codex Discoveries. Like, how was I supposed to know that? I don't know where I'm getting all these things from. I guess from scanning uh, stuff out there in the black. All right. That's good. Now let's just check Pioneer Supplies and see if there's anything interesting. I did manage to find, uh, like, and, and here's a word of advice for you guys playing, that um, before you go and upgrade your suit from level 1 to level 2, you can find level 2 and level 3 suits um, at random stations. Like, I thought Shinrata Desra might have them all available, but no, yeah, you can, you, can, you can buy your way to the next level without having to spend any materials, which is cool. Alright. Do we all play and pretend that we're playing a great game? <laughs> I mean, I don't even think this is a game anymore. This is my second second life or second job. <coughs> and therefore, you know, it's fine to be flawed because, you know, no life is... Uh, can escape that. Alright. You know, in, in, my, in my head, the developers are the ones messing with the universe anyway. Let's see if we can get some first footfall uh, and anything interesting in this system. Hmm, actually we probably can't because I'm guessing... Like, the fact... Oop. Yes, it did the thing. It lines up sometimes in the weirdest way. Uh, this isn't so bad, but... It was doing that really weird. Yeah, the problem is, I think, that when you have a system that has a government or an economy, which if I go to map mode, just like government type, yeah. So because that has like a government, you can't get first footfall there. Uh, but let's pick something else in which head. Try and get something like 
That could be a good one. Uh, this one has uh, just one star. This is going to be a gamble, but it's got a K-type star. Apparently this system is an investment. There's no zero population, so just going there is an investment. Okay. Welcome to Witchhead Science Center. It is kind of cool that you have these um, sort of outposts out here in notable locations. I think every nebula should have an asteroid base at some point or another. What a cool uh, view to come out on, right? Up there you can see Bernard's Loop. There. What is that? Oh, that's just the Witchhead Nebula itself. It's just massive and gigantic at this point. Where's the damn gas giant, though? Well, that's probably, uh. There it is. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty damn cool. Yeah, no, we all want great, but money is a thing. And look, I, I would, I would. Um, this is one of the few games where it's like, I it, even if they charged a hundred bucks for the next update, I'd probably buy it, right? And not many, most other games, I would be that's ridiculous. Or if I heard a friend talking about a game like that, I would say, no, don't do that. It's ridiculous. But for some reason, on, on this, uh, on this game, it breaks all the rules because this game just tickles my butt, you know. It's where you get the real uh, sort of space experience that, you know, I've always dreamed of, at least, you know, maybe not in reality, because that's impossible. But uh, at least within the confines of, like, a um, video game that kind of replicates space, that gives you the freedom to do whatever you want in sort of a sandbox galaxy. And I think this is perfect, right? Um, it, it's perfect in terms of, like, what I was looking for there. So, I you know, I, I'll stick with the game as long as they keep producing it unless they screwed up really bad and when they do screw up i'm very much willing to say hey i don't like this you know and that's that's one thing i love about um yamix as an example is the guy knows how to um you know uh, speak his mind effectively right um you know but you still got to be fair and balanced and understand you know like i'm not a developer i don't know how to how to make a universe <laughs> it's so far out of my realm i can only say like what my experiences are what i want what I would like to see. Um, and look, sometimes they're going to develop things that I don't want, that I don't like. And that's fine. It's not, my, it's not my game at the end of the day. Okay. Um, damn it, there's already a first footfall here. See, like, people are people are not not waiting. The architect. See, people are, people are scouring these nebulas looking for key places to get first footfall. Right, let's try over here. This is not going to be easy. I was hoping because I nabbed one in a planetary nebula that, like, you know, I'd be golden. But, you know, Witchhead Nebula, very popular tourist destination. Would not be surprised if they've uh, tagged the whole thing by now. Yeah. I'll pop on over. Okay. Money kills greatness every time. Yeah, it's true. It's really funny, like, you know, it's like you talk about, like, the utopian future of uh, Star Trek and they have no money and then they contradict themselves so many times because we just can't escape the idea that, like, there needs to be a barter system. Okay, we've got tons of planets here. Oh my god, are they all gonna be. Okay, wait, hold on. That one does not have first foot fall. Okay, just the first one. Let's do, um... I like binary planets. Whose carrier is this, by the way? Misaka. Now, this is the interesting thing about fleet carriers, is you can find them in uh, any system, and they don't count towards, like, uh, creating, like, an economy. There's been tons of prawn. What are you talking about? Look at this prawn right there. That's a beautiful uh, purpleness. 
the, the uh, uh, asteroid base and that gas giant that we just visited. We had the, the uh, planetary nebula at the beginning. It's all prawn, all 100% 24-hour prawn. This is like um, incest prawn, space incest prawn. <laughs> I don't know why. It's like yeah, like uh, that planetary nebula was the stepsister of the of the witch head nebula, and we are the juices flowing between them. Oh God! Oh God! Where? Have I, well, oh my God! <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> but yeah. Um, I, I do, th you know, to me, I'm, I'm an explorer at heart in this game. Um, you know, like, I don't get um, why people would want to go full trader. I, I, obviously, to make money at the beginning of the game, it sort of makes sense. And I, I do like um, the idea of, like, trading it open and potentially, like, getting pirated and all that sort of stuff. I think the trading stuff really, really works well around, like, uh, trading CGs to make that, like, a little bit more exciting. Um... But I think exploration and combat are the, the like the solid foundations of the game where they do really 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 well. Uh, what am I do? TRG? What are you saying? What, what are you doing, Step Commander? What Step Commander? <laughs> what are you doing, Step Commander? <laughs> Sorry. The by the way, the chat and like whatever. There's like some stream delay or whatever that YouTube puts on. I think it's like 30 seconds or something. So it's always delayed. Where like I'll say something and then people respond to it. Um, like 30 seconds later. Uh, oh, 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 slow down. Have to slow down. Have to slow down now. Have to slow down. Okay, so we got two planets in orbit of each other. Like two stellar, um, yeah, maybe these are your stepsister planets. And we're gonna be the new stepbrother. Um, <laughs> the I do notice like this weird trend um, towards like incest porn become a thing now. It's the normal porn. Uh, okay. Excellent. First of all, is this planet mapped? I believe it is. Yeah, it's mapped by a snail. Well, we're going to map it again because I want to look and see if there are any interesting um, places to visit down there for prawn purposes. Okay, we're over probing. Always over probe. When you just don't care about efficiency, probing is actually quite a lot of fun. Uh, and let's see here, we are at 100%, wonderful. And it looks like there is nothing notable in terms of life. No biology, this doesn't have an atmosphere anyway, so I wouldn't expect it, but. What do we got here? We got an active power source, we got a distress beacon. Let's check out that active power source. I think that could be interesting. Now, sometimes you will find, um, like I, I was, I went down on um, the planet surface, and oh my god, in the theme of space prawn, that just sounded terrible. Uh, but I went down on the planet surface and found um, like seven commander or seven little NPCs or whatever guarding. Uh, basically, came in, um, smacked them all with my ship. Uh, just literally ran them over with a spaceship. <laughs> Which was kind of fun. Um, and then... <laughs> DRG is your father. <laughs> um, very shiny planet. Uh, but yeah, so I, I killed the seven or whatever, and then I get in my SRV, and I go to explore like what they were doing, and reinforcements show up. And all of this is during first footfall. <laughs> Which makes no sense. I don't know if that was a glitch or whatever, but... Oh, do 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 do. I'm spending so much time just trying to get like random first footballs on planets, but you know, it's like you never know what you're gonna stumble on, right? And this is the time in Elite to be making new discoveries. Unlike the last two years, they're really, you know, it felt like, uh, oh, at, at best you might find another Guardian site variant that no one's ever seen or cared for before. Or will again. But now it's like, yeah, you could find um, all sorts of stuff. Cactus situations, little moments. So let's see here. Active power sources. Yeah, we got skimmers. Another another skimmer. Skimmer trap.
You're on suitable terrain. And drop. We will load out our SRV, the Skimmer Destroyer. The SRVs are ridiculously overpowered against skimmers, but on the on the flip side, if you try and shoot them with your pew pew guns, uh, you know it, 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 the commander can still take them down pretty easily, but not like the SRV can. So I'll switch to combat mode. All right. So I don't know if these guys are even going to be hostile, but I don't like the way they look at me. dumb to be honest. <laughs> yeah, dummies. So yeah, I think this is another one of those weird facilities that there will be some stuff we can do here, but not much. Oh, overall, shit looks good. Oh, I am just so happy to be able to get out of my SRV, look back on this craziness. First footfall, first footfall, woohoo! Unsafe temperatures, it's cold, bring a sweater! Alright, uh, I believe that, yes, on this little thing, if I jump up here, which is a little awkward, there's a data pad, and if I look at it in just the right way, but only the right way, apparently, it's like, so specific. Yeah, here we go. Nope. Download data. So let's see here. We got manufacturing instructions, radioactivity data, stellar activity logs, and topographical surveys. This is going to take 80 seconds. Data. I think that's pretty much like all you can get here. And while it's downloading, of course, you have to stand uh, close to it. But that's cool. Again, this is a good time for space prom. <laughs> you can see the Witch Head Nebula over there. And then over here, you can see Bernard's Loop. Bernard's Loop of Shame. Oh, I'm not even touching the ground. Look at these elite feet. Actually, how many people have documented the under toe of the boot. I mean, that looks, that stupid camera doesn't want me documenting this. Look at those treads. Those are some serious, serious treads. There are treads within the treads within the treads. They, are, they have like little spider hairs. I could probably walk up walls with these boots. What a beauty. I do feel the planets are maybe a little bit too glossy sometimes, like, I've never, I, I don't know, like, where on Earth has there been this shiny, like, would the moon look shiny like this? Like, what is making that, that shininess? I don't even see what would be making it, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, I guess there's no other, oh, hold on, I'm turn, turn my light on. And see, look, that's also kind of like a weirdness, right? Um, yeah. So it doesn't really seem like there's much else to do. I don't even know what this is. It looks like maybe a giant underground vat for beer brewing or something. That looks like a, a cellar where they probably got a bunch of, you know, people tied up down there. But other than that one data port, no, there's nothing else to do at these locations. All right, and back to the SRV. Ice is shiny. See, I, I wouldn't mind if ice was shiny, but this don't look like ice. This looks like dirt. And I get it. They could have like metallic dirt, but I don't know. I think uh, also when I'm dropping in on, on planets and I see like a, a bunch of glints and it turns out to just be like shiny rocks, right? Like, it, I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe, hey, maybe in reality uh, rocks are shiny like that. Maybe that's how things actually work in physics, but... You know, for the purposes of video game design, um, as well, I find it very difficult to, you know, it just kind of, it, it's, it, everything seems a little bit too shiny. 
Uh, anyway, so yeah, um, now let's just check this out and we will see that we have indeed dead first footfall on this lovely planet. And I think that will be fine for now, so let me see, what's the next item on the agenda? Okay, so this place, I think we've just missed it by a day. Uh, we may have missed the event that happens here by one day, but we're certainly going to go check it out and see if we can... Oof. Brute unavailable. Uh-oh. This might be due to, due to permit locked. Well, actually, you know what? I might skip this one. Let me just skip this one. Yeah, because the, the, this, the Snoofy WHFCO system is basically the place where you go uh, to see planets collide. Um, I wanted to see if it was still an Odyssey, but I think the collision actually happened yesterday and not today. So instead, I want to go to this place. Which I believe used to be called the um, Eskimo Nebula. But it's not called that anymore, because apparently that's offensive. So now it's just called something else that's like NGC something. But I can't get up there! Hmm. Okay, hold on. Can we do this one first, and then maybe the other one? Yeah, sorry, I have to kind of like work this out on the uh, stream. I, like I said, I kind of had very little preparation. Okay, let's try moving over here first. Lame! Ugh, about everything is permit locked right now, eh? So like, from Witch Head... So that's where we were. And this is all that permit locked bubbaloo. Is the whole sector locked? See, it's like, oh, this is only this many light years from this place. But then when you have to start thinking about how the permit locks actually make you go around. No. Interesting. Hmm. Hold on a second. I'm just looking at my maps. Ice worlds everywhere. <laughs> yeah, everything's an ice world now. All right, well, you know what? Um, I really want to do this one. Don't understand why this is not rootable. Like, I'm just going up from where I am, right? But am I, like, am I, like, passing through... Is the Regro... Regro... Reg if you can pull out a root here, then you could... Oh. Okay. This is really kind of nuts. So that's the problem with navigating in this area of space, is just that literally everything is um, through a permit-locked system. Okay. Can I go here? Yes. See? Like, you can't even go there directly. You have to kind of go around, right? So maybe... What's this? Is this another planetary nebula? Can I get here? No. Lame. Oh! 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 That's not so hard, is it? Dingus. 
We might actually end up at the California Nebula, which I did not plan to do. What are they hiding? Well, long, uh, you know, people obviously suspect that um, it's Thargoid territory. Uh, the other possibility is it could be um, Guardian territory. And the other possibility could be that they um, will never get around to doing it and it will never be on permit <laughs> Well, what was the other um, theory? Um, is that, like, there's another human bubble from, like, a splinter cell of humanity that, like, formed from a generation ship, much like the Empire, and that will encounter, like, evil humans hiding in that permit locked area of space. And, like, there was an encounter long ago, and they, like, that's why they permit locked it off so that we won't run into our evil doppelgangers. I look forward to meeting our evil human overlords. All right, so we're gonna head off of Witchhead Sector. We did manage to tag our name on at least one little moon there, and really, that's all that matters for me. My exploration policy is, you know, I, I I hate when you get to a system, and it's a beautiful system, and you find that the person who discovered it tagged everything, and it's like you jerk. Where's 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 my food? You're gonna you're gonna go to a restaurant, uh, uh, book the earliest reservation, and then eat everything. You eat the whole rest, and then all the other people come to the restaurant they can't eat. So when I explore, what my philosophy is, is, you know, very rarely, I, I will sometimes tag everything when I feel like I'm, I want to be a jerk. Uh, <laughs> but uh, my policy is usually just tag, you know, one or two things. Uh, and then let everyone else get their tags in as well, so that we can share in the glory. As opposed to just, you know, taking it all for ourselves. And hold on, what I do want to also do is get in the habit of, um checking this menu to see if there are any like uh what do you call them like magellan clouds or lagrange clouds so yeah only 15 jumps to this sort of system that will hopefully let me plot my way around those um oh god damn it yeah oh i forgot my limpets damn it and see see look what happened see this is what happens when you forget your limpets literally Unplayable. Um, yeah. <laughs> what happened? Should have put what, what was in there, but it's fine. See, this is why you don't forget your limpets, because it'll crash your game. Now, these guys obviously do need the bug reports. I was watching uh, the developer stream. And did notice, like, um, what was his name? Like, Dav Stott saying, who I met at LaveCon, by the way, very nice gentleman, um, saying that, you know, they need help to figure out some of the network code issues that they're having. So, you know, when your game crashes, when you get that bug report thing, at least click send, right? Describe your your um, your whatevers if you, if you have them, but at the very minimum, send them the data so that they can fix things quicker. Because obviously, even, you know, Lord Braben is not having these issues on his potato PC that he uses at home to slum with everyone. But, uh, <laughs> that doesn't mean that, uh, your experiences when you submit that bug report will, um, allow them to find the problems quicker. And I imagine they must be working around the clock, right? Like, well, with the exception of doing their, their uh, <laughs> it's like a couple of them were, were up on uh, streams and stuff, and I'm like, you guys must be like one eye on the uh whoa, whoa hold on a second oh xena research group reputation went from race to cordial to friendly probably just for handing in all that exploration data it's just the way it is all right i was just jumping there that was not a, a big thing but i said the word limpets so i'm gonna avoid saying limpets i just said it twice Yeah, we are in Thargoid uh, um, territories, or areas where Thargoids have been known to hyperdict or to stalk. So I am a little bit concerned there, but everything should be okay. Haven't been hyperdicted yet, though the end of this little tour will hopefully be back on the Pleiades. There was a station, or sort of a ground facility that I saw. That someone posted that's a very large like tourism facility that I would like to check out uh, that apparently has its own bar uh, on a planetary level which is super cool but saving that one for the end
think when we get to this uh, navigation waypoint, I'll find a nice cool place to uh, basically just park and take a take a little bit of a bio break, take a short, um, you know, five minute break. <coughs> and then we'll carry on with what will be the second half of this um, illustrious search for footfall. It's literally like all I care about right now is just putting graffiti, <laughs> putting graffiti on planets. <laughs> And of course, finding new biology. I, like I, I've seen some really cool forests, like l things that look like bamboo forests, uh, on other people's streams or videos, but I've not uh, encountered them myself. So it would be a sweet bonus if we can encounter some cool vegetation. Uh, I've he heard also there's like electric fauna or like electric plants, which looks super cool. I don't need to tag every planet. I don't need to tag every planet and moon. Just keep moving on. Just keep moving on. That was like the, the back in the day um, when you could, when you didn't have an FSS and the way you had to scan planets was just like pointing at them and then getting within range, right? And you would start to be like, okay, well I'll get the gas giants because because they're so massive, I can start scanning them without needing to get close. But you know, let's say you land in a system and you see an untagged planet but it's like you know 50,000 light seconds away Ugh, I gotta go all the way over there you don't have to do that anymore you can tag them all from one spot uh, but for footfall you know this is going back to the old ways and then some because you actually have to land on the planet and sometimes you know you go um, over to the planet you map it then you land on it and realize it's oh sorry it's not the right temperature you can't get out and I'm assuming that Probably there's something in the engineering, uh, which I haven't really explored yet, but probably something in the engineering to um, uh, allow you to increase the temperature range, or I wonder if there is. Because um, right now, like, yeah, there's been a few planets where I was like, oh, sweet, this hasn't been tagged. Mm, too hot to get out. But then you wonder, will they let you engineer your suit so that you could get out of those planets? Is that a planned feature? Is that currently in there? I don't know. But... It's cool to think about. And it's been it's been quite a long time since I've had to think about what uh, you know what's new in Elite Dangerous and, and not get angry. <laughs> oh, this star is not scoopable. That is a chunky flare. Okay, I like it when there's no planets because then it's not even tempting, right? It's not even forcing and not even like compelled to. Um, uh, want to land on things and graffiti them. I love that Tom Cook music in the background. Uh, the temp limitation is stupid. Where is the risk in this? We want Dangus and Dangus. No, I agree. I think, like, let me get out you know, on a freezing cold planet or an ice or, uh, or um, you know, a scalding hot planet and as a result of that temperature, say, you're going to be dead in, like, two minutes, right? But let me get out and have that, you know, mad rush to maybe do one or two things before uh, the temperature catches up, right? It's, it, it is kind of, like, disappointing, right? Because you might want to get out at that planet that's, like, super close to a sun uh, and feel the heat for a second and then jump back in your ship and get first footfall in the process. I mean, wouldn't you want to know the man who landed on, like, Scardi? Scardi A1? I probably wouldn't. That guy's a jerk. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, I forgot how annoying uh, the permit lock uh, navigation is around this area of space. It really is, like, don't go this way unless you're willing to sort out a puzzle where, you know, they haven't given you the image of what the puzzle is. <laughs> they have, like, they have, like, for, for, like, extreme puzzle people, there are, there are puzzles where it's, like, um, oops. Uh, there are puzzles where it's, like, you know, you don't get the image, or it's all, uh, everything is, like, just a black piece, and they all look the same. Why do you want, why do you do this to yourself? 
I like the purple purpleness of the light here. Let's see what's interesting here. Ooh, lots of big boy gas giants there. These are landable. No, no, move on. Otherwise, like, yeah, I'm gonna have to cut like a bunch of locations from the stream because I'm like, it's already been what, like, two hours, and I'm like, on location, trying to get to location three. <laughs> no, yeah, pro exactly, tr exactly. Risk and reward, right? You can fly into the the, the crazy bits, but. Um, and you get a reward for it, right? Like, yeah, so maybe, like, make it for, like, the, the longer that you can spend on a, on a hot planet, uh, the more exploration data that you get, right? Because you're, you're showing precisely how uh, the human body cooks under such temperatures. It's for science. Man, I really do like the hyperspace effects that they've uh, redone, I guess. For the second time, too. I remember they, they updated this for... Uh, Horizon, or maybe Beyond, or one of, the, one of the two. And I thought the previous update was nice, but this is Beyond. Uh oh, feels like a very long hyperspace tunnel. That means one of two things: either it's just a very long hyperspace tunnel, or Blue Cobra. Well, Blue Cobra only takes you back to the menu, so that's that's not terrible. We are getting a lot of crashes, though. That's that's really odd. But you know what? This is all part of the experience. Hey, Ray. Uh, no worries, man. You fly to Angus, too. And thank you for joining. Do -do -do -do. Mm. Oh, okay. So apparently, yeah, I just read from the tip there that apparently the... Uh, People that hang around in stations and act as like little mission boards actually apparently have higher rewards, which makes sense because I was I was kind of wondering like what's the purpose of them? Like why would I want to walk around the station when I could just go to the concise mission board? Uh, Reese, <laughs> what and or why do we love this live service that pretends to be a game? Why do we love it? Because uh, it's it's like for me it's because I'm a space nerd, right? And I love space and the opportunity to go to space. So even though this is, like, super annoying at times, like, it's still the closest thing, right? It's like, the only other alternative is Star Citizen and No Man's Sky, which... Oh, another Blue Cobra. Wonderful. Adjudication. What happened? I have to try swapping. Um, but, like, you know, No Man's Sky, like... Like, it's a fun little fantasy thing. It, you know, it's got cooler base building and all that sort of stuff. But... And, and like, Star Citizen has, like, very cool uh, potential and whatever. Did you wipe out my root, you jerk? Oh, now you're, now you're fine with that. <laughs> All right. Um, but Elite is like the only one that, to, to me, I think this is a big differentiator, a big reason of why I love it. It's just the only one that's actually in the in like our universe, right? That's like the future of our species, right? For me, that's like a big reason in terms of like why I think Elite stands above is um, and, and look and, and I think you're you're right, Reese. It's a really about the potential. Um, you can also see that like David Braben is committed to Elite. Um, maybe you know maybe th there are other priorities that they have, but like I don't feel like they're gonna abandon it, right? Oh yeah, No Man's Sky doesn't exist. It's like a weird drug trip universe. <laughs> No Man's Sky, though, I'm also very impressed with, like, in terms of, um, they came out, they had a initially very negative reception, maybe similar to Odyssey, as they were, they were pushed into releasing much earlier than they should have, but, you know, they still did it, um, but then they kind of recovered from it through years and years of dedication, hard work, free updates, now they've got more content than I even know about, like, now, the problem there is that I kind of, like, 
had my fill of the game and sort of got tired of it, right? Haven't really been back into it since. Um, and Star Citizen, like, I couldn't play it initially. Now I can on my um, uh, new rig, but I'm not that, like, like it, it's like everything looks pretty and super cool, and it's getting to be more playable, but, like, I don't know if it seems like an appealing game to me. And I've already invested so much into Elite that I would just rather Elite get better. Though, you know, it does scare me a little bit to know that, like, you know, uh, there are some things in Odyssey that I don't like, and they may never change. And it, once Horizons is gone, there's no going back. Like, you're stuck in this universe. This is your universe now. Whether you like it or not. Ooh, what's that? Uh, seems very close to sun. But has atmosphere. 159. Oh, that's not happening. Oh, screw that. Yeah, it's a temptation. The explorer's temptation. You want to touch everything. So, yeah, I believe we are heading towards the California Nebula. That's not where I was planning to go, but maybe that's where we can check out, like, the Bark Mountains or something? I'll save some of the other locations that are a little bit further out for another time. But yeah, no, it does feel good to be back in Elite and back towards wanting to explore and feeling that that, that pull of the, of the inky blackness that says, come look at me. I haven't felt that since, uh, it's been a couple of years now, right? Like, to be honest, like, like in the last year, outside of playing this game uh, to get shots to do episodes, I haven't really been, like, playing the game. Uh, and since you know the odyssey alpha and in the, the release i've been actually like like playing for fun and going in and just enjoying myself and that's really nice to see again because um this, this game definitely like burns me out every once in a while where it just feels stale or it feels whatever um and then you, you you're just a you know you, you you leave it alone and hope that it'll come back one day but there hasn't really been anything like like fleet carriers was like the biggest like a flop and like that came out and it was like wow I can't even afford like one fifth of one, <laughs> so uh, let alone the upkeep. So like it, it, it's like there's nothing in this update for me. Why am I still playing? You know that was that I was in a meta crisis at that point, trying to think of, you know, should should I even just you know uh, do Star Citizen now, make Citizen Dangus a thing as opposed to Elite because maybe it's just no longer enjoyable. But no, the reality is like. I'm always going to find something to pull me back to Elite at some point or another. Hey Reese, yeah, I, you know what, I feel it. it's like you got to kind of feel like you're pretending to like it or, or, or liking it more than it probably deserves, right? I know that feeling. I mean, look at the end of the day, it's not, it's just a game. You know, I hate to sort of say that, it sounds a little lame, but to say, but like, you know. There have definitely been times where I'm like, yeah, I, I, I'm not enjoying this. I just won't play it. I'll play Rocket League or play uh, some Fallout or something like that, right? And I think that, that that's a healthy thing to do is, is mix up your gameplay and stuff. Or go ride a bike or, you know, go to play outside. Go play with a stick. Get the same level of enjoyment as Beyond. <laughs> the Beyond Season Pass. We will mail you a stick every week. That you can play with in your yard. <laughs> Star Lord MCU first map by. Ooh, these could be interesting. Hmm. It's a very tiny planet. This one's tinier. I'm gonna go here. Let's do it. Get a first footfall. Uh, what are you saying there, Reese? Is it, imagine if Elder if FDev took the Elder Scrolls route, letting millions of players imagine their own universe and sharing it with all. Is that what 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 um, what that's about? Are you talking about like the Elder Scrolls Online? Because I, I think like Elder Scrolls, I'm thinking like Morrowind and Oblivion and Skyrim. 
Is that more like the, the, the Elder Scrolls Online? Because I've never played that, actually. I'm not too familiar with what's going on in that universe. But yeah, to me, like, I think, like, you know, you have so much player agency and so much potential in this game to create the story around the players. And that kind of felt like that was supposed to be the intention, but they don't really do it. Like, we have these, like, really terribly written storylines about, like, oh, political intrigue, and this faction might be terrorists, and oh, they're blaming the Empire. Oh, no, that's not the Empire. We proved that it's not them. Uh, also, uh, this thing got attacked, and then when there's going to be nothing following up on that. It just, like, it's a very meandering story. Um, they kind of did it a little bit better back in the day with, like, sort of more codes and whatever. But when they try and do codes now, it's like, number one, they, like, basically hand-feed them to, like, top canon people, so it's not really, like... It's, like, role-play for, like, the upper echelon of players, but, like, not really something everyone could just stumble upon and solve. Like, I would love to see more story and more mystery in the game, but that's not what they're good at, right? Not anymore, anyway. Alright. So we're just coming in for first footfall here. Although, you know what, I kind of want to scan it and just see, again, if there's any, um... Do it. Let's see if there's any cool things that we can find on there. This, these these little worlds with their own little atmospheres tend to have also some plants. And actually it's very frequent in there. So yeah, we have biological signal. We don't know what the hell that is. I don't know where I'm supposed to find that, but Elder Scrolls Online doesn't exist. What? I mean it doesn't exist. Is it like coming out? What do you mean it doesn't exist? Alright, let's go down to the damn wreckage. Because it's kind of at the sunsetty area. Maybe not quite, but... Yeah, let's see who crashed here. And of course, I'll get foot first footfall and find there's an SRV there with like a dead pilot. <laughs> it's like, well, I guess they got first, like, the, before someone stepped foot on this planet, someone died. You know? Back in the days where people, you know, were allowed to go down to planets but not allowed to leave their SRVs. But I have found that where, like, in a minor wreckage site, um, there'll be like an SRV that's exploded. And I'll sometimes find, like, the corpses, like, floating on what looks like. It should have been, like, on a hill or something, but... Kind of funny. Again, these, like, tenuous atmospheric worlds, man. Like, can you imagine when they have city planets? When we get to, like, landing on Earth-like worlds or landing on water worlds? How cool that's gonna be. Okay, we have, uh, weird... Oh, wait, that's just night vision. Looks like a pecan planet. Okay, managed to get my shield pips up there. Last minute. Oh, this is one of those boring wreckage sites. We don't need to worry about that. Perfect landing. Metaphorically doesn't exist. La 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 la, it is beautiful. I got first footfall. Here is a rock. And yeah, this is what I mean by these stupid ground bacteria. Is like, oh, hailed the discoverer of the green fungus that is flat and on the ground. You know what? I'll get some of my shoes and I'll bring those bacterial samples back. But I ain't scanning that stuff. Do 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 do. Now these skimmer guys I don't think are really worth, um, like we saw them before. It's like you get some commodities, right? But we already got our, we got our narcotics. We don't need anything else. Footfall is good enough for me. Okay, let's see. Will our route... No, it is below the planet.
but like look at that it's a blue sky right like to see that in elite dangerous is pretty impressive uh you know that's where that's where i look at it and i go okay odyssey does not feel worth the price tag yet right i think it will be i think it absolutely will be uh, they're going to add stuff. Like, I think they're not saying that Odyssey is a season pass, but it's very clear that they are going to be, like, adding stuff like new ships and SRVs and, and such um, as things go. And, you know, I'd, I'd count that as part of the development cycle, right? But we are just, like, still, like, what, a couple... Uh, what is it? Like, has it been, like, even a week now? It's been, like, what, three days since um, Odyssey dropped? So they're still in Scramble, Fix the Crap, uh, Work on the Weekends... We're getting errors up the wazoo kind of mode. Probably not the, the, the most fun time. But maybe after they get through, after um, they fixed a lot to the bugs and the weird droppages, then uh, they can start getting back to brass tacks and releasing new content. The other stuff is like, you think we'll see Thargoid motherships? You see, what, what are we going to see on the on the alien front that obviously like wouldn't coincide with the launch, uh, but would be yet to come? Yeah. ESO is a cash grab that will never really matter, except for the harm done to the universe, which uh, BSG gives micro shits about. What is BSG? Is that like uh, Bethesda? Bethesda Super Game? Yeah, I, I, I mean, uh, believe me, I am a huge fan. Um, I would say, like, tied up there with my love of Elite is my love of the Fallout series. Um, you know, I, I remember playing the Fallout 1 demo, um, I think it was, like, from, like, a PC Gamer disc back when you'd buy the magazine and you'd get the demo disc. Um, and just being like, wow, this is a game I'm really going to like, and I did, and <laughs> Fallout 1 was amazing. Um, and then obviously follow two. I'm just gonna land another one here. Cause I'm like, yeah, the next jump is uh, probably that over there. Yeah, let me just see. Yeah. <laughs> uh, figures. You can see these jerks from from orbit. Um. But yeah, like Bethesda. Like, let me put it this way. I, I'm very like skeptical about how they are treating the Fallout franchise. Like, they obviously value it. Um, Fallout 4, I think, was was pretty decent. Um, lot, very, very flawed. But, like, you know, um, it could have been a lot worse. But then Fallout 76, just, like, that comes out, and I, I, I'm sorry, I didn't even play it, because I'm like, I, I, I don't know if they tr understand what we like from those games. <laughs> At least, like, for those of us that were playing from, like, Fallout 1, Fallout 2... And Fallout 3 was like, okay, this is like a nice transition into 3D. Fallout New Vegas was like, okay, now like we have like the atmosphere and the attitude of the original games a little bit more. Um, and then Fallout 4 was like, okay, you, you took a step back maybe in some areas, but the mechanics of the gameplay are a lot smoother. It's a lot more enjoyable to play. And then this other Fallout game comes out and it's like, okay, all right. You're just trying to make money off an IP at this point. <laughs> And, you know, honestly, that just happens. That's that's why we're going to get an Indiana Jones 5. That's why we'll get another freaking Star Wars trilogy. You know, uh, if something does well, eventually it's going to be destroyed uh, by, you know, a bunch of executives in suits basically saying, hey, we bought this thing, let's, you know, to make residuals off of, and now let's make new stuff to get it out there and top of mind so that people will buy merchandise we need to make Back to the Future, we need to wait for Robert Zemeckis to die, and then we're going to make Back to the Future, uh, um, the, the second trilogy. Uh, and we'll get Tom Hardy to play Doc, Doc, uh, I was going to call him Doc Martin, but <laughs> Doc Brown. <laughs> yeah, we'll get Tom Hardy to play Doc Martin. Doc Brown will wear Doc Martins, and it'll be a sponsorship. That's a revenue stream. Yes. And then we'll sell action figures with, with little Doc Martins, and then we'll make more revenue. Nah. <laughs> That's how these jerks think. Okay. I'm just going to pop down here. I'm not even going to bother scanning this planet. If we find life, we find life. If we don't, then hey, that's life. Okay. I just want my foot fall. And I also want to view a majestic sunset. 
but also, what is that? See what I mean when I say the planets are too shiny? Like, that is too shiny. Right there, that big shiny bit. I mean, is that actually something? Do we want to fly down to the shiny bit and actually see what it is? No, because it's gonna, gonna move along the planet. Yeah, it's just literally, um, it is nothing. You get all excited thinking, oh, shininess. Shiny means stuff. Shiny means stuff, right? No. No, it doesn't. Oh yeah, Fallout 4. Um, I, I, I'm thinking about streaming that uh, at some point or another. Though, uh, I've modded it with hundreds of mods. Hundreds. Um, and some of the mods are awesome and really help the gameplay. Some of them make it insane. Like, I, I have this one mod that just adds, like hundreds of extra enemy groups around the wasteland that all rove as packs together and they wander so they'll fight each other or wander into a town or you know it's just it, it makes the game so much more chaotic um and i made i have one that makes like the ghouls even ghoulier like it's just um uh for the with, with mods fallout 4 is is phenomenal now i think new vegas is my favorite of the um sort of uh, three, the three uh, follow games that are in the 3D space. Uh, New Vegas definitely, I think, is, is, is like, like totally a lot more fun, and there's a lot more different ways that you could choose. Like, one thing I didn't like about Fallout 4 was just sort of like, like the factions that you had to fight for. I, I didn't like any of them. Like, I kind of like the railroad, but not really. I kind of like the Institute, but not, oh, no, 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 no. You know, I like the Brotherhood and other games, but not, in, not here. Ooh, what's that? Hold on. We might have found an interesting structure. A mini mountain. Yes, yeah, so let's go check out this mini mountain. Um, you know, so Fallout 4, I think, I think, yeah, like the Minutemen were probably, I think, my favorite faction, but then they were also kind of lame. I don't know, like, uh, the base building was surprisingly decent, but I still felt it detracted from the overall game. Oh god, Elite Dangerous with mods would be insane, uh, and a buggy mess, but it, absolutely insane. See, okay, I complain about the shininess, but look at this. How cool is this? This is pretty cool, actually. This must be a real light atmosphere planet. Alright. I'm gonna come in for a landing at the base of this spiring mountain. Say you land. You just roll on the ground until your until your landing gear locks down. Warning. Danger zone is low temperature detected. Oh wait, I probably need my Odyssey suit to get jumpy. Oh, I was gonna say I thought that was the mountain. But no, that's the mountain. Now, one part of me really would like to climb this mountain. The other part of me knows that I'm gonna die if I do that. But then if you die in your suit, don't you just go back to your ship? I just feel like it's going to take a really long time. Um, I do have to do a bio break as well, so... I'll tell you what, I'm going to find my way back into my ship. Got my first footfall. The next place we're going to go is that planetary nebula there. Then maybe we'll go to the California nebula. Then we'll head back to the bubble. I'll skip a lot of the um, other places that we're going to visit. Um, let me even just go see what they were. So, like, yeah, like, one of them I wanted to visit was a place where, like, planets normally collide, but they're not colliding right now, so that's kind of lame. Uh, I wanted to visit the Eskimo, or, oh, Hades Edge. Okay, we might be able to still go there. Um, and that is, like, two planets that are very close to the sun. Uh, V380 Orionius. Uh, why did I want to go here? It was NGC 1999. Oh, I think that's actually... Is that where we're... Yeah, there's some like fiery sky tourist beacon there. 
Anyway, hold on. Let me go into my ship here. So tell you what, I'm going to do a quick bio break. I will be right back, and then uh, we will continue on this journey. Uh, probably scale it down a little bit, and then head back to the bubble. I'll be back.
Okay. And we're back. Sorry, was the, was the music playing over itself? When it goes from scene to scene, it's supposed to, like, mute one and do the other. Am I back? Hello? Did it work? I think I'm here. Oh. Anyway. No, oh, I didn't get stuck. Just took my time, got my got my hydration as well in there. I wonder if I can just land on this thing. Can I land on this mountain? This is quite a peak. This could be landable. I just wait for the diamond back to do its, un its insane unsuitable terrain. Maybe if you roll it just right. Sometimes it just works. No? Just looking for that little slow down. Come on. Don't make me flatten this train with my missiles. You're unsuitable terrain. It's kind of weird how the terrain does uh, morph as you get really close to it. Yeah, I don't know if this is going to work. Hold on, I feel like... Okay. Yeah, that's probably not going to happen. Unless maybe... Maybe this is more reasonable. See, it's like, it doesn't even register this as terrain. Come on. Come on. Let me land. What were you guys doing while I was here? <laughs> yeah, I was drinking my own bio waste. <laughs> How you doing, Zetos? How's it been hanging? It's been hanging well. I've been enjoying uh, a little bit of exploration in the Odyssey. And I'm trying to just land on a ridiculously stupid mountain. Imagine if you could just land like this. <laughs> I mean, stranger things have been known to happen. Yeah, that's not going to happen, though. Alright, well, no landing on that giant mountain. That's fine. We shall carry on! Alright, so where are we heading? We are heading to B plus BD plus 30, 623, a local planetary nebula. And really what we're doing in this stream... Oh, by the way, how, how you doing, uh, Nellis Nico? And yes, it is a mostly, mostly peaceful chat, but, you know, we can get a little dangus. Just not too dangus, you know? But don't drink your own pee, that's way too dangerous. I mean, it's perfectly safe, but... Oh, depends on what you eat, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I think, like, that's the thing, is, like, Bethesda is, like, owned by Zenimax, which is, like, it's, like, the subsidiary of a subsidiary of a subsidiary. So here we are, another beautiful planetary nebula. Quite a nice sky to look at. Now this one, yeah, I don't believe it has any planets to get first footfall, but little blue. We can go check out this little tourist beacon. I don't think they've really done anything different with um, the tourist beacons here. Now I've been here before. I can't remember if I've done this in a, any videos. I don't think I've done a video where I've gone to little blue, but I have been here before as an explorer. Uh, you're able to squeeze a 37 light year jump range out of the Viper Mark III. Well, that is an interesting, unconventional exploration ship. You must not have that many uh, modules, unless they're all engineered uh, to be uh, lightweight. Alright, let's read the lore at Little Blue. Yeah, and actually, thanks to someone's uh, comment, I think, I can't remember, it might have been um, 
might have been Ray Mobula, but um, I realized that you can actually go into the codex and find a lot of these tourist beacons um, that you've scanned under a sort of a very hidden, hidden like archive. I think that's super cool because, like, you know, you go around and scan these things, and it's cool to have them in a list somewhere because sometimes you even do forget um, the places that you've been. Yeah, I was waiting for a beluga to pop in. Hello, beluga. He's not in the top 1%. You can tell. Oh, okay. Phew. I wonder what materials I would get from shooting missiles at him. Should I have made this mistake in uh, Sagittarius A where I attacked an orca? So Commander Tidale considers this their favorite little one system nebula. And I gotta admit, these are very cool systems to visit. Classified scan databanks. Hey, you do get like scans for them. Although that's kind of weird. What's up with the black box around uh, the California Nebula? It's like it's in a square all on its own. And where did the uh, the star go in this system? Notice how I can only jump to like four systems. It's a little bit, uh, this area of space is a little bit difficult to navigate with all the permit locks. What is that? Bad if I do say so myself. Just a little Diamondback Explorer checking out the stars, looking at the interesting space skies, uncovering the space truths, all in a day's work. I think there's a screenshot in here somewhere. Hold on. Yeah, why not? Probably could do better, but that's fine. Uh, you got a lot, and some are engineered. Hey, hey, stupid ideas into reality. That's what this game is all, should be about, really. That's really the best part of this game. Okay, so let me see here. Uh, can we get to this system from here? Kind of back away from where we are. It is plottable though. I figure if we are going to go back in that direction, so we're going to we want to end up in the Pleiades. It's a bit of a pain to get up there. That is the um, Eskimo Nebula. And you know what? We're seeing lots of planetary nebulas, so I don't know if we need to see all of them. Uh, but the one that we do want to look at, which is going to be a little bit of a difficult one, but difficult it starts with D. Dengus starts with D. Uh, yeah, this is Hades. Is, um, is that going to plot a root? No. And that's also kind of over there by Bernard's loop. So maybe we will scratch those two do it another time. Uh, do, 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 do. What are you saying? You want to see if you can get more uh, more out of it. You got a starting sidewinder like 30 or 40. Wow. Never underestimate the sidewinder. So this is, yeah, this is very much, that was very close to where we just were. <laughs> Wait, did we just come from there? Wait, why did I want to look at uh, V380 Aronis? Oh, that's uh, just a tourist beacon. Okay. Another system I wanted to look at is this one. It's also down there, and it's also just a, the Spirograph Nebula. You can actually see it has a title. So that's back by Witch Head. It kind of came all the way out here, and all the stuff that is later on the list is actually down there. Interesting. Uh, 
Let's see that one. Snoofy. Okay, apparently, um, all the stuff I picked is all, like, over in that direction. But here I am over here. Well, I'll tell you what. I think what we will do is then check out uh, the Bark Mountains. Which system is it in here? Is it this one? Make a Turner base. Plotting a route. Four jumps. One to bar. All right, well, it looks like we are checking out the California Nebula because, I mean, we're basically right there. And if you are on the way to the California Nebula, please stop here and check out Little Blue. There's not much to uh, scan in here. This is, uh, you know, uh, its own little uh, planetary nebula with no nothing in it, but uh, but a beautiful sky. Hey, what's up, Bill? Yeah, I mean, um, I'm gonna check out the California Nebula, then I'll start heading back to the Pleiades. Um, I'll probably skip out on the other systems that I wanted to visit. Maybe do those in another stream. Definitely, like, I'll, I'll, I'll continue to try to stream regularly and alternate them between, you know, checking out some missions, checking out some exploration, and then maybe just, you know, the odd ones of, of blowing ourselves up or trying to do something specific, like uh, die in an interesting way. or <laughs> Maybe we can even do some, some CQC again. I think that's what one thing I really want to start doing is getting into CQC uh, now that, you know, more people will be playing and they've got a queue for it as well, right? can actually queue uh, for the CQC that you want to do, which I've not really uh, played around with. Look at this. There's so many people that are online. This was such a... This is a list that was never more than, like, two or three people, but I'm, you know, very happy to see that, like, Odyssey's bringing a lot of people back to Elise um, that hadn't played in a while. And that's super cool to see. Oi to the punks out there, by the way. consider myself. I don't have that legal cargo in an anarchy system. This anarchy system, anything goes. You can murder people, you can steal, you can pillage, whatever you want. Just don't do narcotics. It's not really anarchy then, is it? That's a, the, the true the true punks are out here um, in these anarchy systems doing, the, doing what they want to do. Which is mainly just, you know, like drinking booze under a bridge. See that? Look at that. A 50 light year jump and that California Nebula just gets real big, real fast. It has been a while since I've been to California as well. I have not been out to the California Nebula since the uh, California Conspiracy Investigation. Oh, that's an interesting triple planet. I think first footfall on this middle guy would be fun. They all have atmospheres. Yeah, let's do it. That's not too far away. Let's just go into camera mode for a sec. The California Nebula is quite a pretty nebula. Though it kind of looks like... Um, I wonder if you could position it so that it looks like my ship has a hairdo. kind of looks like my ship has a... has a hair... Nice, nice little... Um, it's like it got a ginger... A ginger mop. A raggedy ginger mop. So we're headed out here to uh, check out a trinary planet system and to get first footfall on the middle child. Might as well map it as well and see if there's anything uh, interesting down there we can check out. And Phil, you find yourself going into open in Odyssey, hoping to see other bipeds pedaling about. Absolutely. I think, like... A lot of people are really scared of open, but it's not as bad as it seems. I mean, I've, I've been streaming in open since I started restreaming, and um, I've not even been stream ganked. And that would be like the penultimate, like you don't stream in open kind of thing. But no, it's even fine. Um, you know, I think a lot of the gankers have gotten <laughs> bored at this point. <laughs> um, yeah, you got one planet there. Just orbiting, or maybe that it's like these two planets are orbiting each other, and then there's like a moon for a shared moon between both of them. Oh, 
Oh, you've been uh, cataloging. Do you have like an Excel sheet going, uh, cataloging every planet type and pressure? So I wish I was that organized. Uh, you know, it's like oftentimes I'll find something cool and then be like, uh, yeah, I tagged it and whatever. And then I'm just like, oh, um, where was that place again? And why was it special? What's this bookmark for? Six probes, eh? Yeah. Let's do the other side. And then Bidu. And that's one, two, three, four, five. Probably, I don't know. Uh, let's see, there. Probably need to do one there. I'm going to lose my efficiency bonus. Oh no! nothing nothing interesting on this well that's a little bit disappointing but that's fine at least we can check out what its atmosphere looks like and honestly for these atmosphere uh, planets the best place to land is on their on their day night terminator just basically you can you, sunset is what wherever you land really it's uh, it's not a time it's a place in space and here we have some sort of interesting thing. It looks like the Nazca lines. You think that's a Thargoid's visual representation? So we've got kind of a bluish atmosphere on this one. Nothing wrong with blue. It's like, I see something up ahead that, like, I don't know if you see it there, it's like, like, is that something or no? Is it just like a cluster of mountains? And there's a lot of that, really, where it's, you know, you see something off in the distance and then it turns out to not be anything. Which, you know, to me it's crazy that in this game you have had these explorers for years and years that have um, just gone onto planets like this and then they just fly over the planet looking for interesting stuff and then landing on it. And, and you know, that's an insane time-consuming thing to do, especially given that these planets are one-to-one -one scale, right? Like, that's, that's, like, we haven't even explored every single crevasse on Earth in, what, 5,000 years of civilization that we know of, ancient aliens, you know. I think that the, the, the pyramid was built by birds, and birds are our secret overlords. Birds are aliens. You heard it here first, people. Now this is a pleasant, um... Yeah, I like this play. Oops. Unsuitable terrain. I'll give you unsuitable terrain. Land me, boy! Okay. Just want a little first footfall. That's all. Not asking for much. I mean, not bad. Warning. Dangerously low temperature detected. Dangerously low temperature detected. Oh, I felt you were Now I am straddling my landing gear. Okay. All right. I mean, to look up and see, like, that, that blue crest. Like, this is obviously not a huge atmosphere on this planet, but... I love the color schemes. So pretty. So pretty. And moving on. <laughs> it's literally like, imagine if like, Neil Armstrong, they went to the moon, they're just like, all right, all right, we claimed our footfall. Now it's time to get the hell out and get back to Earth. Enjoy ourselves a Braven Burger. I was hoping for a little bit of a cooler shot of another planet. Uh, there were a few binaries that I found last night that, you know, when you um, looked up in the sky, you saw the other planet, you know, as we would see the moon on Earth. But uh, it would be like a heavy metal world with a really interesting, it looked like a cheese moon or something like that, right? I always loved that kind of 
again, this 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 game is really good at generating those sort of moments where you're just uh, in awe. Whoa, 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 what the heck happened there? The ground changed. This is kind of a cool thing, though. It's like fly towards the sun. Got this crazy, uh... Alright, anyway, without further ado. Let's head on on our journey to California and back. I didn't think I'd be going to the California Nebula. I thought we were going to go to the horseshoe one, but, um, yeah, um, we can do that in a separate stream. The horseshoe one, again, that's the one that's really hard to navigate towards because of the permit locks. But that's fine. I think we'll have time to explore a little bit of California, um, and then head back to the Pleiades. There is one, uh, station that I'm kind of dying to check out, um... And then it will be time for spatula to eat food food. Because I will be very hungry. Whoa. See, landing and, and taking off, way cooler of an experience in Odyssey. Just looking out the window and seeing this kind of stuff, right? Yeah, pretty cool. The ground is sour. Well, I'm not gonna eat the ground, Phil. I mean, unless it tasted good, and if it, if it, if Aliens Worlds, you know, tasted as pretty as they sometimes looked, then maybe that is a thing. Maybe that's what you know. Cash strapped explorers have been out in the bubble. They've they've long since left the bubble. They've been they went out with Distant Worlds one. They still haven't come back. There are still people out there that haven't um, been back to the bubble since like the beginning of the game. Um, you know, they must have run out of food cartridges at this point, so what do they eat? Maybe it must be, um, they eat, uh, dirt. Alien dirt. It's the only explanation. How does it taste? Yeah. Alright. So now we're gonna see the California Nebula just bump up real big. It's crazy, yeah. The, the uh... <laughs> oh yeah, the, the quote from Pet Cemetery: "The ground is sour." That's right. That's where that's from. I I uh I feel like I rewatch I watched the remake of it. Um, I don't really remember it, but I'm like, who was in it? It was um, was it the guy who? Oh, get out of here! I think it was the guy who was like the. Uh, I want to say he was in like one of the Terminator movies. Jason something. But yeah, now, welcome to California Nebula. Uh, this is like your entranceway, right? Again, it's kind of a scary looking nebula. The screenshot there. And then you got Bernard's loop. Looks like Bernard's quotation device there. And then, yeah, this this system, nothing nothing to note in here. Uh, but 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 in, in, in your last stream you said you were gonna lick a planet. <laughs> That's true. I think I did. <laughs> I think that is 100 percent accurate. I might have forgotten, but thank you for reminding me because yeah, I think that I should be licking planets <laughs> for science to see what they're like. And the shelf of Braven Burgers, it's like infinity, man. Oh yeah, it's like uh, McDonald's cheeseburgers where you like put them in an airtight uh, cylinder for for years, and they'll not be. They were never edible to begin with, but uh, they won't become less edible. <laughs> Twenty nineteen movie had some Jason Clark in. Yeah, Jason Clark. I think that was the guy's name. Um, yeah, I'm like, you can't get better than the old eighties version of that movie. So I'm like, why are you remaking like this movie? This doesn't make sense to remake like this one. Like, find, like, I don't mind if they do remakes. I heard they're going to do a remake of Highlander um, with Henry Cavill. Uh, now I'm like, is he playing Highlander or is he playing, like, the Kurgan? Because I think he would actually be a dope Kurgan. 
Um, <laughs> imagine, imagine Superman playing the Kurgan in, in a Highlander movie. Um, but and it's with the director of John Wick, right? And I'm like, okay, I, I like uh, I like that director for John Wick, and I think that's like a good fit for Highlander. And you know what? I'd rather they, they reboot that at this point as opposed to try and make another one with the same plot line, right? We need a lick mechanic for immersion. Where's the Amex when you need them? He's out probably licking um, salt, as horses do, as horse people do. I wouldn't be surprised. So funny enough, the music that just started playing is actually... Um, no, it's it's Book of the Thargoids music. <clears throat> this was a, a Tokoso track where I, I go to Tokoso. So this is like after I did the California Conspiracy, I'm like working on a, uh, the next trilogy, which was the Book of the Thargoids. And I'm like... I'm going to make, like, a Book of the Thargoids thing. It's going to be kind of a spoof of Indiana Jones or whatever. So can you make some, like, adventure kind of pulp adventure, Indiana Jones serial kind of music? And um, this track was one of them. Uh, it's fantastic. And you can see here, uh, oh, yeah, um, i got lots of green on the radar because I have friends out here in California Nebula. Even though I've done so much crime, they all forgave me. And we're going to ride into McTurner Base. Now, McTurner Base, of course, is where they are. The Alliance is experimenting with growing some weird stuff. The McTurner Bark Mounds. Yeah, uh, sorry, McTurner Bark Mounds is where we want to go. I thought that McTurner Base was next to the McTurner Bark Mounds. And then there's also a Thargoid Barnacle, which we will go see as well. Uh, the remake of Conan the Barbarian was offensive. Wait, there was a remake of Conan the Barbarian? Really? I heard that The Rock is trying to get some sort of Arnold Schwarzenegger franchise to remake and star in himself. And uh, I, my first instinct was, is that Conan the Barbarian? I don't know if I could see The Rock being Conan the Barbarian, but, I mean, it's... sure. Why J to disengage? This is ground-based. What's going on? What happens if I press J now? Will I warp to the ground? I think I can just do this myself. <laughs> or wait, is this like just a tourist beacon? Okay, I'm gonna hit J. Let's see what happens. Oh uh, yeah, it's just a tourist. Well, actually, it's a tourist beacon above the ground or on the ground. But wait, did they put a tourist beacon over here to detour tourists from McTurner Base where they actually are doing all the terrible research? Because I don't see no bark mounds. This is a ruse. What the heck is this doing over here? Got this little tourist beacon sitting on the side of a hill. But I did not see anything there. Huh. Damn you. Alliance tricksters? Yeah, now what we really probably want is what I was originally going for, which is McTurner Base. Conan remake in 2011. Oh, uh, yeah. Jason Momoa. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I like Momoa as well. I, I, and I could see him being a fit for Conan, but I, I don't know. I'm just like... Again, it's like, you can't remake Iconic, right? Just like they tried to make a Total Recall with... Um, what was his name? Colin Farrell. And it's like... Total Recall is like an iconic movie. And... I get that, you know, I appreciated that they tried to change it, but it was like, you changed it so much it wasn't Total Recall anymore. At that point, you might as well just, like, come up with, a, you know, something that's not Total Recall. But they just call it Total Recall because they know people will recognize it, therefore it'll, it'll make more money, right? I don't know. I'm really cynical about that sort of stuff. I'm not opposed to remakes, though. I'm just like, you know, I think there's a lot of great older films that probably could use a remake. And if you're going to, you know, remake a movie... Find a movie that had a really good plot, but the execution wasn't so great. Don't find a movie that had a great plot, perfect cast, literally did everything perfect, doesn't need a remake, right? 
Like, there's tons of good movies out there, or, or well, I, I would say good good ideas out there that have been made into movies that, you know, maybe the movie itself wasn't great, could use an update sort of thing. Okay, I'm just coming in a little bit too hot here. But that's fine. I can do this. Yeah, that's right. I wonder if they moved the um, the tourist beacon uh, accidentally or something, right? So here is McTurner Base. If I recall, the Bark Mounds are very, very, very close. We will have to get down, experience this lovely ground pop in. Or we'll be able to visually see them. Uh, don't hit the ground, don't hit the ground. Okay. Like the atmosphere here is insane. Okay. I remember they were a little bit off to one side, but which side? I cannot remember. Maybe they're gone. Maybe they all hatched. Well, this is odd, actually, because I feel like, uh... Like, they were a little bit away. Okay, let me just try to do a wider circle. Go, 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 go! <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say, um, need to keep the night vision on. Okay, this is interesting. But I'm not seeing any bark mounds. Does anyone know if the bark mounds are, uh, not here? Oh, Minnie, what's up? How you doing, Minnie? Yeah, there's been a lot of connection issues. I've had a few of them. I've been a little bit lucky, but... I've had a couple moments where it's dropped me out or even crashed, but... Wasn't too bad. It did not. Uh, it did ruin my immersion, but not my emodium. Yeah, so it looks like there are no more bark mounds by Mick Turner Base. So the Alliance must have packed up their bark mounds and hiked for the hills. Let's see here, because there is this. Is this landable? Oh, 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 hold on. Let's see if there's any uh, Alliance people in there. Hello! Hello! Can you see me? I think I might be stuck. Hold on. Oh! I'm going a little bit too fast. Hello, people! Alliance people! Hello! Are there any commanders in the group today? Let's, um... Let's head in there before they find out that I'm carrying illegal cargo. Uh, slow down for auto dock. Oh yes, that's a blessing. That's a blessing. So I can read the chat here. Um, this is auto dock, by the way. Wow. Okay. Good job, auto dock. Good job. <laughs> uh. I have many. It's great that you're here. I love love minis. If you guys don't know many, please check out many. And, and, and you probably all know many. Uh, why doesn't Hollywood remake Doctor Zivago or Casablanca? Yeah, I feel like yeah, I agree. Casablanca probably would offend too many people unless it was like you know, give me like you know James Franco in Casablanca. Play it again, Sam. And it's uh, <laughs> I don't know Morgan Freeman. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, I think people would not not go for that, but eh. I'd say that, you know, that that's the example of, like, that movie that's, like, it's already been done well enough that you don't really need to redo it. You could probably find something that's a little bit more, um, you know, like, oh, that was a great concept, but, like, The Birds or something, right? I mean, remake The Birds. I want to see The Birds, but modern. <laughs> I want to see how that would work. <laughs> could I just surface scan the planet? Uh, that's possible, yeah. 
That is possible. That's true. Total Recall did not follow the original story by Philip K. Dick, and, and no, yeah, exactly. None of the yeah Blade Runner is completely different as well. Um, but I think that's natural. Film and stories in in writing are different mediums, right? Um, yeah, you're working on your new account, Minnie. That's gr I'm glad that you have a new account and that you're 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 backing at it and and coming in from the bottom to the top. But you'll you'll make it. You you can do it. Just keep going. Uh, so I like this station type. Um, I do find like the stations so far have been a little bit repetitive. What you reading? What you reading? You got a Kindle there? Can I sit down? Can I can you read me a story? Hello, sir. Oh, I found a shaky bit. Am I gonna fall through the planet? I don't know. Um, but this type of station has the nicest spacebar. Most of my family is still back in the old home world. Which is just one of the reasons I don't plan on visiting. I wonder how many of my old friends are still back there. There's gotta be a couple who stayed put. Fair point. Well, that's a boring conversation. I wonder how many of my friends are back on the home world. <laughs> I do love the, that they have little conversations that you can interrupt. Oh, she looks pissed. Let's wait to hear what these people have to say. He looks like a doctor. Is he just like gyrating and laughing? But you have nothing to say, sir. Are you having a conversation, or is this? Oh, I know what this is. He's the he's the therapist. He's the prisoner. She's the warden. You know, they've let him out for a day to go out of prison, but the electro talk, talk therapy is still sending rivets of electricity through his body. Well, I mean, okay, look, I wouldn't say, like, like the like most Hitchcock doesn't need remaking, but it could be remade. Okay. Um, the birds in particular, I think, could be, like, an interesting... Our scientists are keen for you okay, no, I don't have anything to sell here. Everything? We always teach oh, oh, my God, okay. I accidentally clicked it. Return when you have some organic Please return when you have some organic... <laughs> and this is where you can... If you want to know more about our ships, just... If you want to know more about our ships, um, yes. How... Many ships can block a mail slot. Yeah, I'm not sure how I feel about this whole UI system for anything, really. I don't think the UI has improved in any aspects. It's been just changed. <gasps> Sleepy Pete? No, he looks a little different. It's not the same face. It's like Sleepy Pete's cousin. Um, but yeah, I do want to check these up, places. Right? I've got you. So let's see, maybe at McTurner Base, they have... No, just a Stage 1 Dominator. Any Tier 2 weapons? No, it's all Tier 1. And obviously to upgrade. The birds could be the burgers instead. The burgers. <laughs> it's like, what is that Simpsons thing where it's like, The burger took... This burger took a bite out of me! So I need seat schematics. I don't know where to find these yet, because um, Down to Earth Astronomy hasn't released a tutorial. So you got everything. I'll so have to wait ready. for him to find figure it all out. <laughs> but uh, I do love these little stores. Okay. Um, I do kind of want to see if we can find those Bark Mountains, though, because did they leave or what? Uh... I do love these bigger stations. These are just like, it does feel like there's a little bit more in terms of like, oh, here's an area. Yeah, it's weird frame rating issues. Like, I've got top of the line computer now, and so when people talk about frame rate issues, and it's like, it's not related to like your computer, it's something in the game. Like, I don't know if I can see. Yeah, I'm at frame rates of 30 when I look at this guy. But when I look this way, up to 50. Like this way, I think it's like these things, these giant ads. Yeah, my frame rate goes to 25 when I look at this. So there's something in terms of these like ads that when I'm not looking at them, everything's fine. Anyway, we're not gonna get any missions or anything like that. Just came to dock and you know see what's going on here. Oh wow, frame rates of, wow, 17. 
What's going on? What did I do? I've offended the frame rate gods. Okay, now that I'm in my ship, you'd think it'd improve, but no, I'm still at 23 frames. Um, hold on, let me just look here. So. So wait, why is this saying I can't go there? Why is there a search and rescue tanker here? It's kind of interesting. Um, I do want to check out this Thargoid Barnacle. Obviously the Bark Mounds, there were, there were no Bark Mounds near that beacon. And I think that beacon used to be above McTurner Base or, or thereabouts, or, or within the Bark Field. So I have a feeling... Yo, what's up, Oxy? How you doing? Nice to have you around, Oxy. Oxy Mountain. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know if, um, because obviously the fact that the beacon is not even near Mick Turner base, where the Bark Mounds were, I have the feeling that the Bark Mounds are gone, but, um, it's probably more of a case where they changed, um, I don't know, boost up, let's just go into camera mode. How cool is that? This is why you go to the California Nebula. How cool is that? I've been good, man. Been good. Been obviously doing a lot of um, elite stuff lately, as, as most people have been with uh, the uh, release of Odyssey. Part of which includes just, you know, crashing a lot and <laughs> struggling. <laughs> But it's been good, man, and I've been enjoying uh, just the energy that's pumped back into this game. And, you know, it's just got me now uh, thinking about the possibilities and seeing, you know, where is where is this game going to go? Finally, it feels like we're in that, like, forward trajectory. We're not, like, sidling sideways trying to make fleet car carriers work, <laughs> you know? Um, and, yeah, I, I haven't streamed in a very long uh, time. I mean, I started streaming recently. I've done a few now, but... Um, <laughs> it had been a while and I wanted to kind of do this as a way of like forcing myself to play more Odyssey and, um, and have more fun. And it's been, it, it has been fun uh, doing it. So I'll be more regular. I'll take my uh, take my prune juice and be far more regular. And hopefully this barnacle is on the day side of the planet. That See, that is saying something, right? If it pulled the Oxy back in, then, you know, and, it, and, and Minnie's playing... Got everything, everything going on. Naked canopy guy. <laughs> well, who is it? The, I'm licking planets. Turgeon licks windshields. And Oxy's the naked canopy guy. <laughs> um, actually, you know, hold on. Before we land, before we land, I'm gonna do this badly. Because I want to see if maybe... Because what I'm suspecting is that Bark Mounds might have been... Um... Oh, I'm too close to the planet. I'm never going to be able to reach. Um, my suspicion is that, like, rather than the Bark Mounds being, like, one location, they've, you know, transmogrified into... Um... Do you have to get 90%? Oh, no. Eesh. They probably transmogrified into, like... You can probably do this. Efficiency be damned. Uh, but they've probably been transmogrified into, like, biomes that are spread out over a larger area, right? Which kind of negates that tourist beacon. Oops. There we go. Uh, let's see here. So, surface scan complete, and only Thargoid and Human. Okay, so that actually didn't help at all. Uh, unless we see, like... Yeah, see that... I have a feeling that that tourist beacon is just, like, in the wrong place. Yeah, nothing. Okay, whatever. Okay, let's go down to this barnacle. Oh, there's quite a lot of them. Bang bus? What is bang bus? 
I think that's not on the surface. Let's just do Barnacle 6 here, because that's here. Quite a lot of barnacles on this planet, though. Um, as I recall, barnacles are pretty into nebulas. Uh, you can burn out on anything, even coitus, if not careful. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, I kind of screwed up my ship computer. <laughs> it's French now. Although some of my ships seem to be German. But definitely it keeps me on my, my toes because I never know what the heck is going on. And okay, so we had a barnacle signal source, but then when we get down here, I don't see it no more. Is it one of these things? Let's just try boosting straight down to the ground. That always works for me. Okay. Um, where is Barnacle? Barnacle? Hello? Oh wait, hold on. I'm by Barnacle 6. Lock destination. And it will reveal to me the secrets of the barnacle. Okay, it's over this way. I had the wrong, wrong barnacle. Yeah, bang bus. This is space porn, and uh, space prawn, and uh, we we should probably visit the bang bus. I kind of am curious to see what's what's going on there. Um, okay, is that a barnacle? Yes, it is. Hello. Alright, landing gear down. That's how we land. So what you do is you just roll from side to side on the ground. And if you can't land, then just try a full flip. And just kind of keep doing that. And oops! Yep, yeah, there you go! It doesn't like to land when you're looking at it. It's shy. So, let's see how a barnacle reacts to feet. <laughs> oh, wow, it is dark here. Yeah, so that's the other thing is like that I've been hearing a lot too is that Odyssey is super dark compared to Horizons. Oh, he looks angry. I've never seen a barnacle glow like that actually. So here are little barnacle rocks. Obviously this one has been chopped down prematurely, probably harvested by the Alliance for Metaholics. It's leaking! Ew! Sir, are you aware that you're leaking on the ground? It also seems to be sort of making some smoke here. Okay. I think we know what we need to do. No, the cutting tool does not work on barnacles. Okay. I need to actually go back and get my other fancy suit. For exploration. And I want to see if... Um, maybe there's some sampling to be done. For my next mixtape. Now, I do really, really love this. I can't stress it enough. Like, the fact that I can just put on whatever shoot I want, and then just get back out, that's great, you know, as opposed to, you know, oh, I left my other ship in in, um, in this system, I have to go 50,000 light years over to get it, or take a space taxi. No, you can bring all your suits with you, use whatever you want. I do love the jetpack on this one. <laughs> that's why, that, like, my priority right now is I just want to upgrade my exploration suit, get my jetpack as spec as possible, and then resume my day-to-day -day life of uh, um, scaling buildings. Okay, it does seem to glow green, which green means scanny, but... It is not, not scanning. No, I don't think it will. Yeah, so maybe I guess barnacles are not for are not considered organic life in the sense of um, something that you can scan. It'll let you scan the ground fungus. 
Oh, the glow effect is new. Yeah, this the, this is really cool though. I do like this effect. I do like these, um, you know, the green lava, bio lava. Let's just go into camera mode here. And I, I'm like, you know, like I can't wait to really start making new um, episodes of Dangus for the the fact that you know, just look at this. I don't have to do this uh, cut and paste animation. Well, I'm still going to do it, but you know, what a what a what a crazy. Uh, crazy beautiful game that this is. That's a screenshot right there. Pretty nice. Hello. The thing is, like, how do you get the crazy look? You gotta, like, kind of, like, look to the left and then slightly move. Look all the way up and then slightly come down. I don't know. Sometimes I can get like the crazy eyes, and it makes me laugh. <laughs> okay, one more piece of science. I do love that gun. Die for science! <laughs> well, that was kind of a pithy bang. All right, well, I think we've scienced barnacles, and now we'll check out maybe one other spot in the California Nebula, and then there are, like, a few different places I wanted to go to next. This is like, I'm, I'm gonna uh, do as many of these as I can, but then I gotta eat. I'm gonna start getting hungry. Um, alright, so, do we want to look at another place in this system, or do we want to look, um, because I, I kind of want to get, like, a first footfall somewhere in, in, um, in the, the, uh, vicinity of the Cali Nebula. I swear I'll try, Sam Adams, the beer? It's a pretty good beer. Oh yeah, so what we want to do is make sure that we are not looking at any, uh, systems that have, uh, civilization. So let's try maybe this one. Okay, how can this system with zero population be in a state of public holiday? Unless it's permanently in a state of public holiday. I want to go see what they're celebrating. I want to know what's going on over here. It really took that long to plot that route? <laughs> Sometimes this game makes me wonder. Piffy Bang! Uh, yes, the 50 cent French hooker descriptor. What? <laughs> Oh, hold on. What about the bang bus? Yeah, so many barnacles on this planet, but the bark mounds seem to have mysteriously disappeared. And I have a feeling that it's just weirdness. And hold on, I kind of want to see what's going on with this. There's a mega ship that's highlighted weird. Like, it's almost like it's got a permit lock or something. I need to know. I need to know. If I don't solve this mystery, I'll uh, need to come back here. It's, a, it's, it's, a, yeah, you get there and it's like, it's spatula day. And it's like, what? what? <laughs> How did you know I was coming? We knew you couldn't resist if you found an unmarked system with a public holiday. <laughs> it's like, you went to all this trouble just to make a holiday for me? That'd be actually, I'd be quite honored. Uh, okay. I need to know about this uh, tanker. As you can see, I don't see any of the fleet carriers here because I've filtered out this garbage. I will see fleet carriers when I want to see fleet carriers. <laughs> Otherwise, they clog up the systems. Like you could probably this is this the system isn't too bad. There's only four here, right? Yeah, there's the bang bus. It's just a fleet carrier. Then you also have long dog or long dong. I'm sure it's what they wanted to put there, but they didn't want their carrier to be named uh, L star 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 G. Okay, I need to know, though, what's so special about this tanker that it's got all this, you know, weirdness uh, here? Like, why Why do I see that, like... Is it, like, under attack? Is it uh, uh, exploding with Thargoid gooeyness? Let's find out. Structure detected. Okay, yeah. I... Okay. 
So far, so good. So we're going to do a data link scan. It's going to do all the funkiness. This is quite a, a big one too, right? Heat dissertion plates. Wait, wait, wait. What's going on here? You've got a bunch of like... Ooh, mechanical equipment. I freaking need this. I freaking need it so bad. Oh my god. I wish I had limpets. I wish I had limpets. I'm sorry. I don't care about you people on the stream. As soon as I see mechanical equipment, I'm like, I've got zero right now. This is so critical for engineering, and I never know where to find this stuff. Now, hopefully I just don't boop it and destroy it, because this is the most important thing I've ever found. This is true. Well, you could cook burgers without them. You could use your hand, but you then also... Uh, only be able to cook um, maybe two burgers before you'd have to go to the hospital. So the medical bills probably can be avoided. Okay, I also really need a lot of this stuff. What is going? So are they just dumping materials? Is this what is going on with this? Um, like this is just one of those mega ships that jumps from place to place, right? Oh, but I'm so glad I found you. I'm so glad I decided to visit this place because. You will save me at least, uh, at least a little grinding. And this is the other one that I need really bad. Salvage alloys. Give me the loot. Give me the loot. Give me the loot. Give me the loot. Ah! You know what? I'm gonna take this last one. Cause you know I don't want shield emitters to be the next thing that I have to come find. Even though these probably, I think I see these a lot. It's mechanical equipment. That's the one where I'm like, I never see it. Okay. Um, now, what the hell happened to this thing? Let's look at this uh, ship log uplink. And let's see if maybe there's some data on there that will show us the secrets. Okay, stop very quickly. So, let's see here. Communications log. Oh, it's been days since the attack. They came and disabled us and took what they wanted, then left us to die out here. This ship is inoperable. All systems dead. They did a real number on us. With the damaged ship sustained, it's just a matter of time before it falls apart. Most of the decks have hull breaches. We can only seal so many with the supplies we found. We're going to attempt to reach an outpost in the escape shuttle. At least we still have that. Interesting. So, yeah, this this uh, poor little ship here got, got clobbered. And base just barely reached an outpost. Um, I wonder, are the crew still on there? Uh, or has it been long since abandoned and it's now sort of running on uh, autopilot? I wish these hackable... I think these hackable data nodes, they require like... Uh, what is it? Yeah, a, a recon limpet. It's like the one thing that recon limpets do. Which I never bring. But I, it'll probably just give you like intel logs. Um... See, there's an escape hatch there. But that's kind of cool, actually. I'm Burger Ant! <laughs> I love Burger Ant. It's one of my favorites. But this is a giant, very uh, Borg Cube-like looking mega ship. I think these are all like fuel tanks. You can see there. Some sections of it are still burning. So if you probably had repair limpets, you could also probably repair it up. But that's cool. I do. This is the kind of stuff that I love in the game, where you just stumble upon a mega ship, and it's like, what are the mysteries, and you know, what are the ways that I could interact with it um, if I were so inclined. <laughs> in this case, uh, no, I got shit to do. But you know, let's see how close we can get to this little dumpster fire here. Oops, no, that's not what I meant to do. Yeah. Just another day in the neighborhood. I'm warm. This is nice. But yeah, Burger Ant, uh, huge, huge fan of his. He makes me laugh. Whenever he uh, talks about Australian ant, I die. I die in a good way. 
I die in the best possible way. So what are all these green things over here? Are these just like rescue ships? No, automated defense turrets, but they're totally cool with me. They're like, yeah, you're cool, man. Because it's part of Turner Research Group. You know, Mick Turner? I don't know how I got in his good books, but... Cool. Burger is too cool for school. It's so hard to steer like this. Oh my god. I love it. Alright, and moving on. <laughs> well, at least we investigated something. Oh man, my landing gear's down, my cargo scoops out. I'm just a mess here. Where are we going? We're going here. And we're going to just try to tag a planet in the California Nebula. Then we will head back to the Pleiades. That is where we will end our streams. There is a facility that I really, really want to check out. Uh, hard points deployed. Okay, sorry. You'd think that, like, it would do that for you, right? Like, it's the future. Why can't I press my, like, I want to jump button? And you can't, like, close my hard points, right? <laughs> That's the thing. It, until there is burger spatula, I won't, I won't, won't not have considered myself to have made it. When, when someone creates a burger spatula channel, <laughs> then... Then you know that you've made it. Now, Obsidian Ant as well. I got to meet him uh, very briefly at uh, LaveCon. Very, very nice dude. Always thought he's one of the... He is the, the great one, right? Like, he's the one that... Uh, it's like, this guy um, is on top of the news. On top... And just quality content. I'm very humble. Okay, so what we're looking for here is... Oh, yeah. Here's one. Uh, oh, first footfall already done. Oh no, not again. Oh, that jerk. Oh, that jerk. Zydrus. You're one of those people that just like, man, everything is mine. It is all mine. No one can have it because I am the best person ever. Me, 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 Okay, uh, let's try this one. I just want one. That's it. Zygus. Whatever your name was. See? You tagged everything. I still don't. I still don't know who you are. Uh, you've never met Ant face to face. Yamix and Mars. Uh, the Burger Ox. <laughs> Ox Burger. That's what it would be. Ox Burger. Um,. Yamex I met uh, face to face at LaveCon, uh, and I, I, I love Yamex. He's one of my favorite people. He's great too in, in, in real life. Uh, saw him and Scorbius have a slapping competition. <laughs> Literally, it was amazing. Um, Mars, I would uh, I would love to meet. Never met Mars, but he's also one of my absolute favorites, um, and such a such a cool dude as well. But, uh, yeah, no, LaveCon was great, and, you know, the next time there's a, one of those things going on, and, oh, hold on, hold on. Gumbalad! Gumbalad again! Okay. This is getting serious. This is, this is, this is upsetting. Is there going to be anything left? It's like three days since Odyssey launched, and the California Nebula has already been ravaged, ravaged by early explorers. Need to fly out to my holes <laughs> so I can get first football tags on my planets. Well, keep in mind, uh, if it is a civilized society, like if the planet already has a government, you can't get first footfall. Period. Like I, I, I thought it was like maybe if the planet had like settlements on it, but I, I haven't been able to get first footfall um, in like Maya or any of those systems. Like if they have a government, you can't get first footfall. The best thing you can do is get like. Oh, Isonona. Yeah, he's great. He's the one who does, like, just text and flight assist off all the time. Yeah, I, I, I love his work. He doesn't do it often enough, though. Uh, Mars and Yamix. Oh, PAX East. Yeah, maybe one of these days, if there's a PAX one, too. It's like, that's a lot easier for me to get to than Europe being in Canada. 
Uh, like certainly like a flight to Pax East. I think that's what is that Philadelphia, Boston? Is it, uh, uh, my hole is thirty thousand light years away. Okay, well, if that works for you. What if your hole gets itchy though? <laughs> you have to create an expedition to scratch it. Is that the name of like the system though? Like my hole, or is it just like your? Oh. Blue Cobra. No big deal. Happens all the time. I'll just log back in, get another error. Then log back in and everything will be fine, right? Or maybe it'll defy expectations and it'll just log back in. Oh, Boston. See, I would love to go to Boston. I've never been to Boston before. It looks like a beautiful city. Um, I played Fallout 4, so I know a little bit about it. <laughs> Uh, I, I know at least like some of the landmarks. Uh, that'd be a, that'd be a cool uh, trip. Maybe when this Corona stuff goes bye bye. Uh, you might have been better off closer to the bubble. Managed like three first footfalls, two jumps from forty Leonis Minoris. Yeah, no, I'm getting lots of uh, first footfalls. Um, surprisingly close to the bubble. I mean, there, there's tons of systems out there, and you know these. Um, Hardcore explorers just can't hit them all. Um, but definitely, like, the landmarks are what go first, right? Like, you gotta watch out for those nebulas, those planetary uh, nebulas. Like, I managed to get first footfall in one. Um, but, you know, they'll, they'll be another blue cobra. Didn't I say it was gonna do this twice? And then it will just magically work? Been playing this too long. I have been, honestly, like, I took time off work so I could play this more. <laughs> Is that a sad thing? People are like, what are you doing on your vacation? I'm like, mm, I'm going to be going on many, uh, many walks. <laughs> I didn't tell them they'd be spacewalks. All right, we're back. Uh, okay, so are we in a system? Ooh, this is lots of stuff. Space me alter, you jerk. Raptor Jesus, jerk. Uh, land rotten alien, jerk. Pizza one three two one jerk. Ah, it's unmarked. Uh, and this one, hold on, Sir Toby Westminster and Rotting Alien. Okay, they missed this moon, suckers. Unless one of them is like there right now. And by the time I get there, it'll be dawn. Thirty thousand. Oh my god. Are you serious? Things I have to do for football. All right. Well, don't give people the actual name. Is it, so, like, is, but but is my hole? Is that like a, a nickname based on, um, like, like one of your exploration trips? I'm just kind of curious where the where the um, origin of the name came from. Oh, what have I done? Uh, it's this moon. So I really want that one because it's got atmosphere. But jerk alien, dude. Super Cruise Assist. That's fine. Now I can relax. Eliminate a bit of Carpal Tunnel. I swear to God, that's the primary function of Super Cruise Assist is just to minimize the amount of Carpal Tunnel that I get from this game. I will be traveling. What was I going to say? It's Spacewalks County. I'm, I'm exploring, exploring the universe. <laughs> but no, it's like uh, we have a long weekend here in Canada anyway around here, so most people are off Monday. So I go back to work on... I booked off all the way till Tuesday so that, you know, and, and look, to be fair, I am doing some outside stuff. I did uh, two bike trips already around the city to different parks. I figure if I'm going to be spending most of my time playing a video game, I better balance it with a little bit more outside time, right? Oh, it's a black hole. Oh, a black hole as the central mass in, in a planetary nebula. Damn. Okay, that's actually pretty impressive. Like a black hole in a planetary nebula? Yeah, that, that's cool. I've not seen one of those yet. That must be a pretty impressive system. Oh, but, you know, yeah, that seems very, very, very far away. I haven't actually been 30,000 light years away. I know the Oxy here is, a, if you don't know, uh, has gone to Beagle Point and back without a canopy. <laughs> Which is one of the most insane things I think anyone has done in Elite. And, and kudos to him for that. That was, that was, that was crazy. Um, but I was looking at my, my um, codex the other day, and it's like the most I've been is like 24,000, 
which I think is just about probably Sagittarius A or thereabouts in that area. Um, never been to the other side of the galaxy. I think um, I don't think I will in a while because usually, uh, let's just say like most big exploration trips that take me out, you know, to Colonia or Sagittarius, of which I've done two. Uh, tend to leave me not wanting to get into a spaceship for several months. <laughs> they give me massive, massive burnout. But um, I, I enjoy them. It's like, I enjoy the trips there. It's just the trip back that's tedious. And, you know, uh, I would just go to Beagle Point and then blow myself back, blow myself up. But <sighs> you want that exploration data. <laughs> then you lose all your tags, right? Um, and obviously, you know, I was hoping that maybe there was a, like a taxi to Colonia. If I could get in a taxi, leave the game on for eight hours in the background uh, while I, you know, while I'm at work or something, and then uh, you know, wake up in Colonia and then just have to hop to Sagittarius or Beagle Point, I'd be much more likely to. But the range on taxis is like 100 light years. It's really super low, so that's not going to be an option. Oh, you did that with a Mamba Oxy. Oh, my God. Mamba no can canopy. Yeah. I thought it was a Chieftain for some reason. I don't know what would be worse, though. I guess the Mamba, because they're like short-range fighters, right? I mean, that's just endurance, though. That's like... In, like, I, I would go crazy on, those, on that journey. I don't know how you did that. Uh, so, hold on. Is this mapped? So I'm not going to map it if we don't need to map it, because, uh, no, it doesn't have an atmosphere, so. Oh, it's not mapped. Okay, well, I might as well map it. Get a twofer. Even though I don't, don't think these things are worth, these little rocky moons, not really worth that much, but, you know, we're not interested in the dollars and the credits. If we were interested in that, we'd be mining. What we're interested in for is the graffiti. Oh, so you did it three times. Oh my god. Anaconda, Chieftain, and Mamba. Oh, well, I'm impressed. It's actually like super insane, dude. I don't know how you do that. It's dedication. Okay, a little flyby. Probing. I don't really care about them efficiency bonuses. Hey, maybe we'll get lucky. Maybe we'll get some space cactuses here, right? Or we'll get nothing. Oh, but I got the efficiency bonus somehow. <laughs> it doesn't count all the probes that haven't landed yet. And as you can see, uh, even though this is an unexplored moon... Oh, this one actually has nothing on it. I'm impressed. There's no uh, crash sites. There's no... Uh, artificial structures. It's just unadulterated planet. It's masochism and math. Okay, I thought that was. I thought you said meth there for a second. <laughs> That's like masochism and math. Yeah, I think I think so. It's like what's the two plus two? Uh, it's pain. Now this one has an interesting canyon running through the planet. We could land near this. It's kind of a shallow canyon. It's no Pamash. Yeah, another thing I do notice about the terrain is, um, well, I think overall it has improved in Odyssey. One thing I'm a little bit concerned about is just like, it doesn't seem like that there are like extreme features, like no extreme mountains or extreme mountain ranges or canyon ranges. Um, you know, and I'm like, that's part of, I think, what makes things much more interesting is when you have uh, interesting terrain features or landmarks and that shininess like this is just I just think it's too damn shiny I don't know maybe it's something in my settings do you guys see the the shininess um, when you're playing in the same way that this does unsuitable Wait, hold on. Oh, that's the spot. All I gotta do is just wiggle around, and sometimes it's perfectly fine. 
Mathokism. Mathokism. <laughs> Let's wait for that Armstrong moment. Warning. Warning. First footfall. Yay, we've graffitied a planet. Now we will stand on top of our ship. And what is up with these? Uh oh. I'm stuck. Oh no. Are you serious? How could I be stuck? What am I stuck on? Uh oh. Um, help. Help me. <laughs> I think I got stuck on my own ship kit. I can't use my. Why can't I use my jetpack? Hmm. Yeah, that didn't help. Um. What tools do I have? Uh. I'm in exploration suit, so maybe I can sploosh the ship. Okay, just let me use my jetpack. Why am I stuck? Oh no! <laughs> Wait, I think I know what we must do. Uh, <laughs> Here we go! Ah! Miguel, that was an Armstrong moment right there. That was, uh, do you remember when Neil Armstrong, after he landed on the moon, he got stuck on the lander and then he had to get the lander to take off so that he could die and respawn in the lander? It's literally, uh, it's in the history books. Uh, now what that should do is just respawn me in my ship uh, right above the planet that we were at. So, actually, literally, no consequences. <laughs> See, at least there's no consequences, right? I don't feel bad if nothing terrible happens. I don't lose my exploration data. It's all here in my ship. I still have my... Uh, where would it be here? Or, I guess I didn't really... Yeah, I didn't really... I cashed that in anyway. When I was at McTurner's uh, base. Let's just make sure we didn't get first footfall taken away. Nope. Still there. Alright. Um, so why don't you actually just... I, I, honestly, I, I'm addicted and I need to do one more. I need to do just one more. And then uh, we'll head back to Pleiades. Yeah, fill out a ticket. That takes too long. Do it yourself. Blow yourself up. It's the only way. Uh, I would like to do something in the nebula, please. Haven't been down here yet. And also... Um, I'm not sure what public holiday, because that was the system there. Or no, that one did not have public holiday. Who had public holiday? Where'd it go now? Was I... You guys saw that too, right? That's gotta be a glitch then. Okay. It's just glitchy times. Okay. And I love it when you can see your target destination and don't need to hijack to super cruise. I love doing just high wake um, jumps right from a planet surface. Oh, really? I wasn't really on the surface anymore. <laughs> yes, the exploration data is stored in the ship. So even though I got out of the ship and did the first footfall, it's the ship that recorded all of that for posterity. So as long as the ship doesn't die, everything's okay. Though I did notice that you don't need to go and cash in your exploration data to get the first um, tank. Um, you know, in all the other, uh, uh, you know, sort of first map by and uh, first discovered, you actually need to hand in your exploration data. Otherwise it won't um, apply the tag. But this is different. You get it instantaneously. Zydrus again. Oh my God. Oh my God. And this jerk is probably all over this system. This guy has nothing better to do but land on planets and graffiti them. What a what an idiot. Okay, let's find a different system that we can graffiti. Um, <laughs> I was being ironic there, by the way. Now this one I do believe has people. Yeah, it's a dictatorship. Uh, what about 
this one. Nope, no one here. Cool. Plotting route. Just want one more footfall tag out here in California. California! Welcome to the California Nebula. Well, there's all these uh, nice red fluffy clouds around here. Then, you know, when you come to California, you must get to the chopper! <laughs> I'm still working on that. That's not, not a very good impression yet. But yeah, dying is no biggie. It's it, 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 This is the thing. The Braben has, has killed death itself through technology called rebuy. There's no more dying. No more tears. Oh, this is a nice pretty system. Please let there be... Please let there be planets I can... Oh, no. Just this loser planet. Is that even... A, is that a gas giant? Yeah, it looks like a gas giant. I wish you could land on gas giants, but that's not a thing. Okay, uh... Do, 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 do. We're gonna have to go to the outskirts. Why does it take so long to, um book those though that's kind of it's kind of like yeah it, 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 the root plotting seems to slow down yes this is Schwarzenegger Jr. you know is when he's very young and he's very pumped he's not he's not very good in uh, <laughs> the important thing is when the impression does not sound good you just go uh, 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 uh. and then it's then it's fine Sort of switches between young and, and old and, and just uh, brain damage already. Arnold Schwarzenegger, though, is uh, one one uh, the finest people. I'd love to meet that guy one day. Actually, no, because I'd probably disappoint him horrendously. <laughs> I don't try nearly hard enough for that man. Uh, okay, this is two loser stars. All right, we are running out of like juicy systems. Is this still in the nebula? Yeah! Yeah! Pretty much. Oh, yeah. Dude. Oh, my God. Gas giant fights being like submarine battles. Totally. That would be awesome. Oh, my God. I never even thought about like dog fighting in a gas giant. Like, I'm just thinking for the idea of like being able to fly through that sort of, you know, this giant super foggy thing and then a giant space whale kind of comes up on the left I can't remember I think it was like a short film I saw where like there were it was like a sci-fi short film where there were like whalers who go into gas giants and like have harpoon guns and uh, take down these just giant flying uh, beasts uh, okay let's see what we got here son of a gun space me later Zydrus, oh my god. See, Zydrus comes in. Okay, hold on, hold on. We got something here. Probably too hot to land, which is why Zydrus hasn't pissed all over it. Oh yeah, it is not landable. I swear to god, I'm gonna find this Zydrus, and I'm gonna shoot him. If you see Zydrus, I'm putting a kill order on, on, on Zydrus, because this guy's hogging all the good spots. You don't see me, I'm not going into every nebula taking up everything I'm just trying to take what uh, take you know a couple pieces and, and let leave the rest for everyone else this is the kind of guy who goes to the the, the food bank and eats everything <laughs> I'm hating on this guy I don't care naming and shaming he should be ashamed of himself he is not following the Explorers code Jim Hopper never made it to the chopper Who's Jim Hopper? Wasn't that, um, uh, Stranger Things? I think it was Stranger Things. Have to have a banning. You know what? Okay, so here, yeah, Reese, I agree with you on the mod stuff. And I'm like, they should release an offline mode, like, make, like, a solo mode where the BGS is only what's on your computer. Like, it doesn't affect anyone else. You can't multiplayer. Your commander profile is totally separate. You just download that, and it's a moddable version of Elite. And I think that's a compromise most people would be fine with, right? Oh my god, Zydrus, you fucking piece of shit. I fucking hate you. I, You are my new nemesis. What a fucking turd. Oh my god. See, I, I've turned into a fucking... Uh, I, I'm just swearing and cussing. Oh my god. 
What have you, you look what you've made turn me into Zybilas or whatever the hell your name is. But this is why you got you got to be you got to be quick in a leap, right? You know, when stuff comes out. If you don't if you don't get in early, then uh, you know, you'll never get in. Or really, you by the time it, you find out about something, it's already been done by 100 people cuz yeah, this is the kind of this is the, this is let me let me rant a little bit about something where I found out that um, for the whole Hesperus thing that Frontier essentially was like testing a new way of like of hiding things, right? Um, by consulting with like a bunch of uh, canon people, right? Canon, as you know, is a large group of uh, players that you know dedicate their sort of existence to finding and uncovering mysteries and documenting them and science stuff. Pretty cool. Um, but like Frontier was like spoon feeding them all, all the the sort of like hints to nudge them towards it. And when you found the Hesperus, basically, the first ten commanders who... So, I, I like this idea that the first commander who finds something gets a message saying, the first ten people that find this will get an extra bonus of, like, ten million, right? What do you think's gonna happen? Of course, the first person that finds it is gonna let ten of their friends know. By the time everyone else knows, the bonus is gone, right? Like, it's not really, like, a well-thought-out thing. But the fact that, like, Frontier is, like, hand-picking... Oh, Blue Cobra again. So lame. But the fact that they're, they're like, hand-picking this mystery stuff and then, like, feeding it to, like, canon. And it's, like, it's just a little bit unfair, right? Like, and, and, and they're not, honestly, paragons of, like, fairness. And I shouldn't complain too much because at the end of the day, I'm just happy that they put a damn mystery in there and that there was something to go check out. Uh, that definitely was pretty cool. Um, mainly just to see Dredgers again. <laughs> but yeah, to me, like, it's just like, you know, they're designing things in a way that, like, sometimes just only apply to a very small group of people. Like, if you're based in the UK, a member of Canon, and live, you know, within a, a two-mile radius of, of, uh, of Cambridge or whatever, you, you have an advantage, right? Wait, they were not spoon... Phil, you were not getting spoon-fed clues. Because I, I heard that they were, like... Maybe it wasn't canon. Cause, so maybe it wasn't canon, but maybe it was, like, their top ten commanders or something. And they were basically saying, like, Hey, did you try looking here? Right? And I'm like, if you have to do that at the end of the day, like... Why not put it out there in a Galnet message? Right? That everyone has a chance to find. But maybe, maybe this is false news. Maybe this is... Maybe I'm just spreading fake news. But this is what I read on um, on Reddit and various uh, Discord groups. Now, please, if it is false, I would love to hear that it's false. <laughs> but I wouldn't be surprised if they do this a lot, where, where sometimes you got to wonder, like, how the heck did... How could, there's no way that anyone could have found this particular thing. Oh, this is just two stars. Uh... Okay. I might just forsake this last tag, but I kind of want one more. If it isn't for this Zargaloo. Okay, let's try this one. It's really far over here, so that makes sense. What's up, Giz? How you doing? So you were there in the Canon Discord that evening when the Hasbro's were found. But hold on, but not the, but like not the Canon Discord or like the 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 majority of Canon, like. A small group of their leadership that are in a separate server with like Frontier, where they work on helping Frontier test mysteries as advisors or whatever. But like what Frontier did was like basically like go to the system and look in this asteroid, and that's apparently how it was found. Now, if if you have uh, if you if you have the different story, I'd love to hear it because it would warm my heart. I would prefer that they would just like, you know, again, like leak something in Galnet, you know? If, if people are having trouble finding it, create a better, um, bigger breadcrumb. Uh, okay, finally some planets. Wait, I guarantee you. you is this legit? Legit? Like, Zargon wasn't here? Okay. I'm just like, unless all those planets are going to be like too hot to land on. Because that's the other thing, is you sometimes see, oh, yeah, no one's landed on these. And then you get there, and it's like, oh, yeah, bad temperature, bro. Ooh, okay, let me just try something closer first. But it looks like no one's actually landed here, because I think technically we're not in the, uh... 
nebula anymore. But hopefully we get a nice view of it. It's probably behind me, hold on. Uh, do, do, do. Oh, it feels so far away. It is weirdly far away. Uh, so wait, hold on. Okay, so there was a list. Uh, so there was a listening post with a typo, and a CM wrote on the Canon Discord there was a typo. Asked us to spread it to other people too. Everyone that had scanned that listening post with the typo got a new message in game. Oh, interesting. So the criticism was the CM neglected to put this info on the forums. Oh, okay. So that's, that's, yeah, close to, I guess, what I heard, but not quite the same. But, yeah, no, it's, uh, um, to me, like, the whole mystery thing is always a case where also, too, the other thing is, like, well, yeah, let's create mysteries where you have to use tools that are out of game, which is kind of cool. Um, or, you know, you need to know high-level physics, right? And it's, it, I get it that they shouldn't be accessible to everyone, but, you know... Uh, I would rather they be creating mysteries in game that can be solved with in game tools. Like, okay, uh, if you put, if you shoot a research limpet at this thing that you wouldn't think to put a research limpet to, um, that'd be really cool. This is a real bright planet. So, Canon worked together with a lot of folks in the forums too, finding this thing. Oh, yeah, and believe me, my criticism is not leveraged at Canon. My criticism is more towards uh, Frontier for how they conduct their mysteries. In the sense that, like, they're just like re they f like there's things that could really appeal to a lot of people, and then they just end up falling short of that scale because they they end up either just you know selecting uh, a, a small group of people that that mystery could be solved by, um, or oh 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 wait hold on a second is this not a landable planet son of a did I, I had to pick the one freaking planet that wasn't my bad. Okay. Uh, no, I'm not going to bother with that. I'm just going to do one in this system. And it's going to be this one. I'm going to try my luck there. Though, so, when do we get to land on ice planets? Is that going to be Odyssey Phase 2? And also, why are they so bright? <laughs> so, Canon, yeah, so the CM neglected putting on the forms of some people called. Canon got special info for. Yeah, that's what I heard. So, maybe it's a little bit different in terms of the details, as they usually are. But yeah, it, it does drive me crazy just because I think the mysteries in Elite Dangerous are the uh, best part of the game. And oftentimes you're not in a position where you can actually do much about it, right? You have to sort of... Um, uh, wait for someone in the community to solve a special clue that uh, there was nothing to figure out unless you happen to be an audio engineer in your spare time and oh okay well then I know what this sound is, is doing and why I should run it through this um, uh, special software that you have to download right I don't mind like the, the, the sort of standard format they seem to have is like go to a listening post wait for a morse code thing that'll spit out a bunch of letters that turns out to be an anagram then you need like a code word in a corresponding, like, like article in Galnet or something like that. And that stuff is okay. I find that stuff is, like, okay. Um, as long as it's, like, that's a consistent format, great. Though so they obviously can't do that for, like, all mysteries, otherwise they would get boring, right? But I think it really just needs to be, like, it needs to be done with in-game tools. And it needs to be done in a way that, like, everyone gets a chance to figure it out, not, like... No, I get it. If there was maybe a typo... Oh, and that's screwing up the breadcrumb. Then fix the breadcrumbs. You know what I mean? Fix the typo. And you know that, that's interesting. You mentioned that everyone had it that had scanned that got a message. Cool. That's the right response, right? But um, yeah. So there's no special canon group with devs and CMs telling telling us where to go. Well, believe me, I I, I heard this um, that part of it from uh, another. Uh, well, I won't name the source, but another person. So I always kind of doubted that little bit of it, but it, honestly, it's not its not something unthinkable. Like, Frontier does kind of tend to do that a little bit, right? Or, like, they'll, they'll invite, you know, they, like, they invited, like, a group, and it's not a bad thing. Like, they invited a group of content creators, um, you know, back to their studio to view a lot of stuff, but then, like, NDA'd them all so they couldn't talk about it. 
which in my view is like it's like torture. <laughs> Those poor people, ha- you know, were, were probably shown space legs and then like legally bound not to talk about it for years and years and years. That would suck, actually. Um, the limited format of the mysteries due to the limitation of the game or texture. Yeah, <clears throat> I can see that. I mean, definitely, um, people are hacking the game codes and finding things that are in it. Like they could, like if they put Raxla in Elite in the beginning, it's obviously not called Raxla. It's probably called just like 305-206. It has to look exactly like everything else. If it had an asset or a texture that was different from something else, people could hack the whole architecture of the game and find these things, right? So, obviously, with the mysteries, um, you know, they should have built that stuff in early, um, or they should be looking at building it, because I think it is a, a super cool part of the game, is, like, finding generation ships. Um, the way they've always had to do it has just been, like, really inconsistent. Like, I hated the ones where it's, like, to find this, you have to, like, go to this planet, align with this star, and then travel out, and then, like, as soon as you get within 1,000 light years, you'll, you'll see it. But... Uh, but it took forever to find, and it's just, it just feels like a crude hack, right? Um, and they take the children of Roxla behind the scenes, somewhat for this. Well, yeah, and the children of Roxla whole thing was, yeah, I'm like, that was kind of like story lore, working with like Drew Wagar and that whole group. I mean, again, that's the kind of stuff where it's like, I'm not mad about the fact that they do it, it's just that they do it really inconsistently. And it, it like it's like when you do it there, then it makes it more likely that you think like so. My immediate thought was when I heard about the canon stuff was like, oh, that's got to be true because they did it with Salome, they did it with this, right? And I'm just like, you know, um, Galnet is this wonderful tool that you have in game that you could be using to foster mysteries like you used to. Lately we get like, what? Oh no, terrorists have attacked the corn. The corn is poisonous. We need to ship more corn. Uh, now we need to shoot uh, the people that poisoned the corn. We uh, have put a bounty on the corn people. And now the emperor is eating the corn. Stop him from eating the corn by delivering five units of Meta alloys. <laughs> okay. There we go, hundred percent. Everything is the biological. This planet is literally littered, littered in biologicals. Uh, okay, we're not going to worry about the distress beacon. Alright. Let's head down, get first footfall, and then we're heading back to the Pleiades, where we will end our stream after looking at... I think there are two things I want to look there. We'll just pick any old place to land. Doesn't need to have interesting features. I will be the interesting feature on this planet. Uh, using Galnet is not enough. If Galnet is just fluff, is not just fluff, where would they need to? Uh, they would. Uh, sorry, they, uh, they would need physical assets and locations and systems in place. Well, that's the thing. Is like, yeah, the Galnet is is maybe the impetus for like the start of the breadcrumb trail. But oh, what's that? Okay. Hold on a second. I need to know what that is. It's unlabeled. There's something there. Is this Raxla? Um, yeah, they would need the physical assets in the in the world. Obviously, the Galnet is just you know the tip of the tip of the iceberg. It seems the engine and architecture would not be capable of being dynamic. Um, we only see real physical changes on Thursdays because that's the only way they can change the world. Yeah, no, that's true. That's why when they, we were talking about that station uh, falling out of the sky, it's like, yeah, probably not. Because it's not Thursday. <laughs> but that got me thinking. I'm like, why don't we see more uh, crashed uh, Coriolis stations on planet surfaces? How cool would that be? 
It's not something that would be unrealistic for this galaxy. I would love to see giant crash stations that you could explore. That would be the, the, the dopest. All right, so we're gonna investigate this mystery thing that doesn't have a label. I wonder if there's, is there any information here? A planetary point of interest. Okay. I'm, I'm insanely interested. Why doesn't it have a thing? Oh, enjoy your food, Oxy. Yeah, I'm, I'm starving. Um, after we get back from California, I'm gonna maybe reduce it down to one location that we're checking out in the Pleiades, and then I need to get my own food settled. But thanks for joining, Oxy. You have yourself a great evening, sir. I'm really interested to know what the hell I'm gonna find here. It's just a box, and it's like, you open it up, and it's like, Congratulations, you have found Raxla. Yeah, Ray, no, I'm, I, I'm going to do another bio break before we go uh, back to uh, the Pleiades, and then I'm going to end off the stream. Uh, this one has been a long one, but, you know, it's been fun. I'm enjoying exploring. I, I was doing this literally all yesterday as well. I think I'm more worried about carpal tunnel than uh, hydration. So what the heck is this? Oh! It's a crashed ship. It's a diamondback, just like mine. Okay, well, there are little dronies around, so I'm gonna get out of my SRV. Yeah, this one's a much longer stream than I planned for, but, um, eh. No problem with that. Let's see, will they get mad at me? So you got tea, fish, fish, meat, consumer technology, ship data core, that's what we're looking for. Give me them scans. I was gonna say, I'm like, I'm like I feel like uh, uh, there's that moment where you're like, did I just, yeah, like, I've already crash-landed here and just come ac across my future corpse, right? Okay, so really, I... Oh! Degraded power regulator. Where's that? That's up there. Okay, well, I guess we're gonna have to get out for that. We are in... Artemis suit? Okay, now we want our dumpster shrimp. And welcome back, Reese. Yeah, I, yeah, I know I'm doing a super long stream. Like, people are like leaving. It's like, wow, I, I just went to Antarctica and back, and you're still streaming. It's like, yes, because there's lots to check out here in this new Odyssey. No, 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 no. So I think that there's something up there. <laughs> I haven't noticed anything on these um, sort of crash ships. I haven't noticed anything like, like sometimes uh, on the crash SRVs, I'll see like little red panels, and you can obviously undo them and take their goodies. But if there is one on this, I would be surprised. And oh my god, I am surprised. Oh, well, here you go. All right, let's cut this puppy open. Nothing like a good salvage operation. Honest to God. I'm just not really very good at this. Uh, 
have I done? Am I doing something wrong here? It doesn't feel like, um... It doesn't feel like it's doing anything. Like, visually, usually you'd see these things get cut, right? Hmm. I would really like to get in there, but um, I don't think it's going to let me. I think this is, again, a glitch. Because usually... Ooh, wow. Okay, apparently that's taken a lot of suit juice. Okay, is there any other things that I could get here? Maybe another panel down here? Oh, hello. Hello. Yeah, I'm going to assume that this is glitched. Hmm. I'm going to try this. Maybe I should be back in my ship. Okay, I'm going to go back to the ship. Should I try menu logging? Eh, you know what? Screw it. It's fine. Yeah, I don't... I think degraded power regulators are just like a material. I'm not sure what they're used for, but it's also kind of weird that you can see it in my SRV before. Also, what the hell is that? Toxic waste? Mmm, give me some. Do you need, like, special corrosive cargo bay? Oh, yeah, it's toxic cargo corrosion. Awesome, okay. Let's bring some toxic cargo with us. That'll put some added pressure. <laughs> I'm like, I want to get, I want to get this stream done so I can go eat some uh, food, but I also want to go to the plays. So this will add a nice little ticking clock. Okay. Yeah, that's annoying. I've seen those things are bugged before. It is just really like, eh. What are you gonna do? All right, let's see. Is that? Yeah, this is going to corrode my ship. So that's great. I like that they, they're using that corrosive effect for not just... Um, not everything. Oh, hold on, let me just see here. Which system did I want to go to next? Okay. So the next system and the last system we're going to be going to is we're going to be heading back back to the bubble. Well, not really the bubble, but... Kind of close to the bubble. Sort of a little bit halfway between the Pleiades and California sector. And we're going to be doing it very quickly because, uh... <laughs> we have taken some toxic waste on board, my friends. I don't know why. I thought it'd be fun. I will probably regret this later. It might, like, uh, hit my hatch and then I'll lose my narcotics. Now, wasn't it in the original Elite that um, every time you used uh, fuel, I believe it left radioactives in your cargo? And those would obviously take up your cargo space. And then, if you wanted to um, uh, dump the radioactives, and you did that in, say, like, the Soul System, you would get a fine for dumping toxic waste, as you do. Uh, and so you have to actually, like, dump your radioactives in, like, open space, like, nowhere near stations. <clears throat> which I thought was an interesting dynamic, which never really carried over. Like, I, I, I don't know how it would in this, anyway. I think people would be really annoyed if you're, uh... If every jump you had to, uh, dump. Jump and dump. Jump and scoop and dump. <laughs> it's already enough with, with scooping. Uh, does every R RSRV have a cuttable plate on the bottom to steal the power regulator? Um, I haven't checked on mine, but um, I'm assuming that most of them do if they're not buried in the ground, but most of them are, seem to be, that I've found, have been buried in the ground. Um, but I do love the fact that now when you find, you know, these little SRVs or sidewinders or whatever, there's something you can cut open 
and, and, and take with your feet. Wasn't that Frontier? What's up, Chris Chandler? Uh, do, 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 do. Want that Frontier? Ah. It's actually how many jumps is this going to be to get here? So this facility that we're going to, I think it's called Helios Rock Garden. If anyone's been there, or if you have been there, have you been there in Odyssey? That is part of the, the excitement right now of, you know, the Alpha launching and we're no longer confined to this, like, mini bubble. We can see anything, do anything, be anywhere, go home. Um, but obviously, like, you know, see the differences between some of the systems before and after. What have they changed? What has... Uh, dropped. What has improved? What has whatever? This toxic car cargo is corroding my docking computer. <laughs> See, the, if, if there's any, uh, if anyone ever says like, "Oh, people who have docking computers are lame," it's like you don't understand how modules work, right? It's better to have a docking computer than nothing there because <laughs> if uh, you do pick up toxic cargo, then it might corrode your docking computer, and then no one cares because. You could corrode your docking computer to like 0%, it'll probably still dock for you. Oh no, I don't want Frontier to put dumping your dumping your uh, cargo. It's just like, that was a mechanic that was in um, the original Elite, that uh, you had the little radioactive things you had to dump around. Oh, the temptation. There's now so many just planets that, oh, see, rare, every once in a while you see this where I guess like two commanders mapped it at the same time or handed it in at the same time, or maybe that's just the guy's name, uh, but you'll see like two commander names. Apparently those, yeah, maybe they, they, maybe one mapped it in the Xbox universe, I don't know. Oh, look at that! There is a foot, first footfall here. What was so interesting there? I'm like, I kind of feel now like, no, no, you you have toxic cargo. What are you doing? <laughs> oh, wasn't that Frontier? Oh, Frontier Elite 2. Uh, maybe, maybe. Or maybe it was, um, uh, what was the other one? Uh, Frontier First Encounters. Because I've only played Elite and I've only played Frontier First Encounters. I never played Elite 2. Um, and, and like very briefly played the original Elite. Like, you can download that, believe it or not, if you own Elite Dangerous, go into the, the um, store account, and you can download that for free um, from Frontier. Like, they're giving it away now, much to the chagrin of Ian Bell. Um, Frontier Elite 2, I don't know how you would get that, or, or whatever. Um, but, um, First Encounters, I found, like, a DOS box version of it, and it works perfectly fine. And I was interested in doing that to get to the, like, Thargoid missions. Because, like, the Thargoid homeworld, Miyaki is in there. Uh, let's see here. I just want, I'm just curious if, like, people got first footfall in these random systems. Um, but, yeah, like, like Miyaki is in there. Polaris is in there. You can do missions for the Thargoids. Find out, you know, the whole backstory and lore, which was, which was retconned, of course. Well, Reese, thank you. I appreciate you being here. And, yeah, I know. I, I, it's like Yamex usually streams and, and uh, Ghost Raph as well on Saturday. And I kind of feel bad because I'm like, those are two of my favorites. And I sort of put my stream time usually right in between theirs. Um, not consciously. It's just like the time that works best for me and uh, most of the people that regularly watch, right? But oftentimes I'm always, always like in my streams and I'm like, ah, Ghost Raph is streaming. Can I just do a stream of watching their stream? Ah. <laughs> Uh, and usually I watch, uh, I try, or I try to watch Scorb on the on the Sundays, in the uh, 3 p.m. EST time slot. Usually he does a stream, which is very enjoyable. And other than that, like I, I just like I wish I had more time to watch more people. But yeah, right now I feel like everyone's going to be streaming, so it doesn't matter what time you go. I mean, I, you know, I'd be playing this anyway. It's just a little bit more interesting to me when I'm doing it and able to talk with you guys and. You know, able to see weird shit as it as it happens. Ooh, 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 uh, ooh. Yeah, no, a toxic cargo, toxic cargo. <laughs> see that toxic cargo? This is this is brilliant because I would be stopping at every one of these planets. Uh, 
Uh, let's see. If you map things while in a wing, then all wing members' names show as first map. Well, that makes sense. I mean, that's very nice of them to do. Oh, that makes sense. Because, yeah, I was wondering if it was just, like, a timing thing, but would it be timing when you handed it in or when when you actually mapped it? Because to me, that would be incredibly coincidental to see, like, two people scan a random system that don't know each other and then happen to hand it in the data at, like, the same time. Like, what would the odds be on that? Oof. Skyman. Oh yeah, toxic cargo. <laughs> oh yeah, it's after my power plant now. Let's just do a little quick check on the modules. I think we should be okay. Oh, we're fine. It's like, done 1% damage. <clears throat> now that would be an interesting challenge for Oxy though, would be to go to Beagle Point and back with a, with a toxic cargo. Because you don't know what it's going to attack, right? Uh, must be the first one then, because you never played uh, First Encounters. Hmm. Yeah, First Encounters, um, it's it's still playable. I don't think I would want to go that far in it, though. Like, it's it's one of those things where I love retro games, but realistically, it's like you try to play, like, the original XCOM, and, well, it's just, you know, you just want to play XCOM 2 or something. Although, nothing beats the original XCOM and its terrifying soundtrack. That game really messed me up as a, as a child. Yes, I blame all my problems on XCOM. <laughs> I think we're about to get another blue cobra here. Hey, see you, Phil. Thanks for dropping by, and um, yeah, no, the, appreciate you, you being here. See you on the Dangord. The Dangord. Dangorino. Yeah, we're just basically heading into uh, the last system we'll check out. Um, look at Helios Rock Garden. If we stop getting these blue cobras. And then I myself shall be popping off. Yeah, I keep getting these uh, blue cobra errors. I mean, it's not the end of the world. Usually just a couple login attempts and you're back in, but it is something that wasn't there before. It's a little bit irritating, but it's not, you know, it's not making me upset. The thing is, I, I hear it's just really, like, inconsistent, though. Like, from what I'm hearing from different people, some people are getting errors, some people just can't play it. And that makes me upset that, you know, people want to do it and they can't do it, right? Yeah, the original Elite does have a charm. Yeah, I mean... I didn't have, like, the keyboard map <laughs> to know all the bindings. It's a very binding-heavy uh, game. Um, I, you know, I didn't really play around with it that much. It was neat to play. Um, I ended up getting a tattoo of some of, of like a, a Coriolis station from Elite on my leg, um, and I was like born in '84, so obviously I didn't really have the opportunity to play it because I was too busy uh, shitting my diaper. Uh, but it, it, and I didn't really know anything about the Elite series to be honest until Elite Dangerous came out, and when Elite Dangerous came out. It wasn't until, like, I, I don't know, at least a year or so after it had been out that I found out about it. Some friend of mine was just like, oh, you like these types of games, right? So there's more into, like, Privateer and um, uh, the Wing Commander games and all that sort of stuff. Oh, i got to put my destination back in. Um, and uh, I was like, oh, yeah, wow, this looks great. And so got in and the rest is history, right? Uh, and from there, obviously, you know, found out about the history of the series and went back and looked at, um, you know, some of the some of the uh, original games and went and played Elite more out of curiosity or whatever. I think at the time it would have been absolutely, you know, revolutionary, right? I think if you're getting into it now, it's it's got the sort of disadvantage of being what like a 30 year old game or like almost 40. Oh God. That, makes me think I'm like oh, I'm this I was born the same year as Elite and that makes anything I say about Elite then therefore comes on to me Ugh. but um, no it's uh, um, I, I could definitely see like how at the time it probably would have rocked the world it's because the freedom and the open gameplay right I think like one of the things that that makes sense is like um, 
at the time when Elite came out, everything was like, how many lives do you have, right? Or what's your high score, right? And like, rather than Elite having like high score, it was like about how rich can you get? How many ships, can, how big can you upgrade your ship? And how much money is in your bank account, which allows you to upgrade your ship. That was like a new mechanic, right? Like that had never existed before the original game came out. That probably revolutionized the genre, right? If not, you know, games in general with the, I think it was like the very first like open world games, right? And correct me if I'm wrong, I pro probably other examples out there, but I can see the impact that it had. Now Elite 2 probably just felt like, okay, we're doing Elite again, but just like updating a few graphic things now that the technology's advanced. Frontier First Encounters feels very much like that as well. Um, and honestly, Elite Dangerous is the same thing. It's like, let's take that concept and update it for modern gaming, which is not a bad thing, right? I, to, to me, I think this is the, the greatest space sim that is out there. For all of its lovely flaws. And the fact that it's massive multiplayer, I mean, that's a big game changer from the original, uh, original Elite series. Am I getting another blue cobra? I have a feeling I'm about to get another blue cobra. Oh, I can feel it coming. It's just like a baby being born. I gotta push, 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 push the blue cobra out. Push! You did it. Damn you, adjudication server. This is so annoying. At this point, I'm just so hungry, and I just want to get to the end of this, but I I need to end it at this specific location that I really want to see. It's fine. <laughs> it's all good, Reese. Yeah, I know, I know. It's like a lot of the a lot of the buds I have in Elite 2 are, you know, uh, in a, and let's just say another, a few levels above me. And obviously I think with Elite Dangerous being um, tied to that series and that series being launched when it was, it tends to attract a certain, let's say, sophisticated uh, person. <laughs> but you know what, age is, uh, to me, like, you know, physical age is just for the driver's license. Um, the real age is, you know, what is your, how is your imagination, right? Can you... Can you go into Elite, can you immerse yourself, and can you have a good time with a childlike uh, attitude? Then doesn't matter what, uh, what age you are. But certainly I think like 40 is that, is that hump where I'm like, oh my god, I, um, uh, once you turn 40, like you, you, you really uh, um, are expected to be an adult, right? Or act like a, a grown-up. And I refuse. <laughs> And I will refuse until I am old enough that it becomes endearing again. Because that's, I think, how it happens, right? It's like you're a kid, and everyone's like, oh, what a cute kid. And then you're a teen, and they're like, you're annoying. Then you're an adult, and they go, why isn't this person responsible? And then and then you're a little bit older, and they go, well, you know, isn't it wonderful that, um, <laughs> that he still has the imagination of a child? You just got to push through those, uh, those years. That's my theory anyway. Elite is the so you're saying like Elite the 1984 is the first uh, first true 3D game. Well, the, yes, loot. That was the 40s. After you're 40, people like in in general will expect you to behave yourself as an adult, which I think is bullshit. But that's, that's society for you. I didn't invent it. I just live in it. Wasn't my choice. If I had my choice, I would live in the stars. The stars don't care how old you are. Well, maybe that one does. But he's a jerk! Alright. I think we're closing in on the system here. So we were looking for Helios Rock Garden. I think, is this land based? Again, I put this list up really, really late at night. Um, started just like listing out systems using uh, EDSM, using um, Odyssey screenshots from the forum thread, just to find places that might be interesting to check out. Uh, I forgot to label half of them, <laughs> so I'm like, 
some of these ones I'm like, I don't even know what, what would be there when we get there, but that's part of the fun of it. Uh, you know, with exploration, it's all about discovery. Uh, oh. Oh, I know why. I know what was interesting about this system. <laughs> like, um, that's a lot. Helios Rock Garden is like one of the, the highest number of uh, bodies in a system. This is absolutely insane. I love it. Okay. This is perfect. And we can get some first footfall. Uh, so what do you say? Do you want to do this ring planet or this ring planet? This one was mapped by Malik. In Malik VR? VR Malik? Well, let's get two of them. Yeah, let's be a dick like that. What's his name? I can't even remember it. We're gonna take two systems. Oh yeah, we still have that corrosive cargo. That's fine. Everything's fine. So yeah, we're gonna do two landings in this. And then and then we'll head to the playlist. Society can kiss my lower parts. Kiss my space legs. Okay. These are two ring planets, very close to the star. I'm kind of worried that maybe they won't be landable. Or, well, they'll be landable, but maybe not uh, disembarkable. Where do you get a nice view of the rings? You don't want to be right at the equator. Maybe somewhere near the pole. This is quite a fine young planet. With large, luscious rings. I like the brown, sort of 70s... Um, or sepia tones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Toxic, toxic, toxic. So I think probably... We'll just find anywhere old place to land. These other games had, what, 2.5D. Two and a half dimensions. They weren't true 3D, eh? Okay, first of all, what are the G's here? We are probably going to creep up past 1G. I don't think this is going to be like a high G world. Which is not one to be trifled with. It is a big one. I feel the size of this as I, I'm coming down here. You can see, like, here it's a good example. Like, this is a very calico planet. Like, you can see the different sort of biomes. Like, you got little green patches, little red patches, dark gray patches, light gray patches. And, you know, who knows? There's probably some life or volcanic activity down here that correspond with some of those patches, right? But I think that's that's a really cool aspect is is adding the the sort of biome so that like a planet is not just one uniform you know surface type across the entire thing, right? Okay. Well, it's like imagine landing on Earth and landing in the Sahara Desert and, and thinking, well, I guess this is a desert planet. Okay. And we didn't do a. a planetary mapping, so not sure if there's life here. Space cactuses or whatnot, but um, maybe we'll stumble across one. Who knows? Yeah, 1.1 G's. That's not too bad. Oh, shield, 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 shield. Okay. We're okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you mean unsuitable terrain? Just a second ago you said it was fine. Okay, there we go. Cannot disembark on safe temperatures. Yep, figured. That's kind of annoying, to be honest. I really wish that that wasn't a thing. Well, I do want to see something here. Because so I did notice as we were coming in... Ooh, pretty! 
it's not so bad. Okay, I'll get a screenshot here, but hold on. Did notice something here. Oh, it's just Pisces Cobble. That's not exciting. But this is pretty cool. Now, if only I could just disembark. Unsafe temperatures. Uh, that one. There we go. Try to get these screenshots too, because it's just like um, great for stream thumbnails and stuff like that. I actually have a whole bunch now lined up for the next bunches of streams that I will not have to make five minutes before the stream goes up, and I'm like, ah, I forgot. Okay, so, um, if this one is too hot, my concern then is that maybe the next one's too hot as well. That one's even heavier, to be honest. So is that one... Earth mass is 9.5? 9.5? Oof. Okay, maybe... Is there just, like, a nice atmospheric one? Hmm. I'm also thinking, like, this looks cool, because it's between two gaff giants. Okay, I think this is the target. But yeah, for me it's like, I, 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 just one footfall. It's only hot on that side, maybe. Interesting, I never thought about that, Chris. Like, can you... I'm kind of curious to try that now, is like, if you land on the, the not hot side, would it then be okay? Does anyone, does anyone know the answer to this? Like, is that a thing where, like, if you went and just landed on the other side, it would be fine? That stuff I'm imbibing right now, I just wish you could all join me in peace. Like this planet is just so big and annoying to get off of that I don't want to land on it another time only to be disappointed but honestly if, if you guys if someone out there knows if, if that is possible to just land on the other side of a planet where so I feel like the planet has like a temperature range and it's probably just like oh um, this temperature range is not acceptable as opposed to like what the temperature currently is right I don't know Because I'm like, then you could land on, like, the backside of Scardi 1 or Mercury without needing to up upgrade your suit or whatever, right? Alright. Now I'm just going to do a little bit of a quick uh, break for myself. I'm going to put this on Super Cruise Assist. I will be... Oh, son of a bitch. What have I done? What have I done? How did it select that planet again? That's the one. Yes. Oh, probably because I selected the planet I was at. Did I just super cruise assist to... It's like, please super cruise assist to where I am. There we go. Okay. Alright, I will be right back in like uh, five minutes. See you shortly.
I'm back. And oh my god, we didn't even get a thousand, just about a thousand light seconds. No big deal. That's fine. We'll get there. And then, uh, yeah, and I think after we land on this planet, I'm going to call it a stream. And uh, first of all, thanks again, guys, for sticking it out and uh, joining me on this space prawn exploration. Um, I will endeavor to stream at least every Saturday. If I can, uh, otherwise, at other times, I certainly will. Uh, I'm going to start working on the next uh, Dengus video as well uh, fairly soon. Um, and that one is going to be interesting. I'm just sort of finishing off the script for it. And, uh, yeah, I'm not going to spoil anything. Um, but, uh, yeah, I hope you guys are also, like, able to enjoy what you can within the Odyssey. For me, it's been, uh, you know, a, a mostly positive experience where I'm, I'm just really digging a lot of the new things that have been added to this game. It's really brought me back. It's really made me want to play again. And, uh, yeah, that's all, that's all you need. From there, the galaxy takes care of itself, right? I mean, the, the, I think the greatest thing about Elite is, is really the people who play it. Um, it attracts a certain kind of person who appreciates the coolness. No, that's not the toilet door, Dark Heavy 8. That's, uh, <laughs> it's the, uh... A balcony door actually I was out there just it's very muggy outside in Toronto it just ra we had like a flash rainstorm so it's very hot and very muggy and I was just watching a raccoon um, lick its balls on a, a roof not too far from here they do that it's it's really funny I see them like uh, sometimes in the morning sunbathing why walk when you can ride <laughs> Yeah, well, you gotta get out and touch the ground with your own two toes before uh, before they give you first footfall. And uh, lately, all all that's been on my mind is just graffiti, graffiti, graffiti. But soon, you know, I, I was playing around with a lot of the uh, facilities and station missions and what whatever, like go and repair this generator. I really like the ones where you have to bring back the um, facilities uh, from offline. Those are pretty cool. And sometimes uh, when you do, uh, there will be other scavenger teams there that you have to fight off. Which adds that element of Dengus, the unexpected. Okay, we got a blue one here. We got a blue atmosphere. Uh, now I am going to scan because if this is the last planet of the stream, let's see if there's anything picturesque. -y. I want to see some nice porn. Ooh, ooh! Ooh! We got tussock. We got shrubs. We got concha. Uh, let's see here. So, and bacterial colonies, which we really don't hear about. Uh, let's go for some concha. Yeah. Show me the concha. Are there any signal sources? No. Good planet. Okay, no buildings. <laughs> it's just weird when it's... No, I wasn't toileting outside the balcony. <laughs> I just threw my bio waste over the balcony. <laughs> no, burnout is a real thing in this game, and I've burnt out from Elite about three or four times, right? Uh, first time was uh, before I started the Elite Dangus series, I went to Sagittarius A and back. And this was, you know, with a 3A fuel scoop and an ASP, uh, before neutron stars were a thing. Uh, or Super Cruise Assist or anything fun like that, and you know, uh, the FSS as well. And um, I burnt out of that, and then barnacles were discovered, and I thought, well, let me do... I needed to do a mic test, because uh, I bought a new mic, and I thought, well, why don't I make an Elite elite Dangerous video? And I called it Elite Dangus, and then the rest is history. Uh, the second time I burnt out was um, pretty much uh, after the um, Enigma Expedition, uh, and then going to Sag A and then back and then doing like the uh, Dying in the 80s series and that was a lot of heavy animation but you know it actually worked in my favor because you know with the heavy animation episodes I don't really need to play the game that much uh, so this is a very light boy 0 0.05 G's not even 0.1 of a G um, and yeah I, I didn't really want to play after that and I was kind of worried um, you know like at that point the, the the filming in the series was the only thing keeping me coming to the game. Um, 
And then there was another burnout point. I can't remember why. It was like a maybe just like a couple months. But like it, it'll happen where it's like I can't play for a couple months, and then you know you sort of ease yourself back in, and there's always something to come back and enjoy, right? Well, this is an interesting polka dot planet. Don't really see any shrubs though. Where are the shrubs at? This is going to be a dangerous planet for SRVs. I'm not seeing any shrubs or any tussocks or any conics or any such wildlife. Hold on, maybe there's some over here. There looks like looks to be things. This doesn't look like life. Oh wait, there's some stuff down there. Oh, please tell me it's space cactus. I haven't seen a space cactus. That's how you land. And actually, let's switch back into our Artemis suit. Here's our Armstrong moment. Ooh, pretty. See, like, in a blue atmosphere looking up at a gas giant, this is awesome. <laughs> I do love it. Ah! <laughs> Why is there just, like, this random pit here? What's that? <gasps> Weird thing. Oh, it's, um, they look like, uh, you know in Mario, those things that come out of the sewer, the little plants? Oh, so that's what they are. So, like, they're, they, they, it's like a nut that blooms. Sample, yo. Concha lab labiata. Okay. I was gonna say they kind of look like vaginas. But then you had to call them labiata? Like, please. <laughs> Could you be more obvious? <laughs> oh my god. Anyway. This is... Uh, hold on. Where's the... Oh, there's the... Um, the light's coming from this side. Let's just see if we can get a nice screenshot here. Is that the star over there? Is that where the light's coming from? That distant star? Like, is that what what life would be on, like, Europa or something like that? Is, like, that would be the sun? Uh, let's see here. You can see my Artemis suit does have, uh, the, the, the armored plating, because apparently you can just make it look like the Dominator. Oh, I like that he was, like, voguing. It is kind of cool that, like, when you move your head, your body doesn't necessarily immediately follow. <laughs> but yeah, guys, thank you very much for, for joining. I'm going to cut it off there um, and get to, you know, making some dinner for myself, which is uh, much needed. But um, I hope you are, you know, out there in the Odyssey yourself. I hope you are enjoying uh, the new features that are there. And if not, you know, I hope that... Um, you know, uh, you eventually do. Right. Oh, that one's genetically diverse enough. You're not inbred. Okay, hold on. I just want to sample these. If those were flowers, there's got to be insects, like big wasps or something. Yeah, I mean, I, I hope not. <laughs> Can you imagine where it's just like, oh, what a beautiful planet, and then you just hear this buzzing. Oh, God. Okay, I do not want to fall down there. Because that looks like a hole that you cannot get out of. <laughs> I wonder if that's a thing with the new terrain, though, where it's like there are just some holes that are like the jetpack is not big enough to get out of. It's certainly possible. Do not go, do not go. This is a very cratery kind of thing. 
Neil Armstrong. So I dropped my vo I dropped off my module, activated my shields, drew my primary weapon, activated night vision, and scanned for incoming threats and prepped a grenade. Yeah, I'll tell you what, for Armstrong. Oh, there's some plants down there. <laughs> Let's go scan these plants. And possibly never come out of this crater again. Give me that vagina, vagina nut. Yeah, concha libiata. See that? That's that's what exploration is all about. It's finding genital-shaped plants and adding them to the database for science. Now I am actually fascinated by this planet and the terrain. This is like. I was kind of saying, like, the terrain has suffered, but also, that's the thing, and I, I, I just saw Yamex put out a video, is like, is the planetary generation better or worse? And I think in aspects it's better. Uh, in some ways it's absolutely better. In some ways, yeah, I don't know. But um, this kind of planet, this is interesting to me. This feels like I'm getting that those No Man's Sky vibes of, like, landing on a really interesting planet and being like, okay... What would it look like from this angle? What would it look like from this angle? What about down here? What would you want to see happen in Elite um, in terms of planetary generation? I'd really like to see caves. I think caves would be super awesome. Uh, hold on. This is probably going to go poorly, but... I want to go over here. Cord. I'm probably going to screw this up. Oh shoot! Got to go back. Got to go back. Got to go back. Back it up. Back it up. Back it up. Back it up. A little moon jump. Oh no! 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 Uh oh. Okay. Um, hold on. We will have to see if we can get out of this cave, and then. Oh no. That's not a good sign. Come on. Almost there. Oh no 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 no! We fell into another one. <laughs> this one's even worse. Okay, hold on. Let it recharge enough that by the time we get up here, we can go back up. It does really pick momentum up very quickly. So, up again. Little push, little push. <sighs> okay, not dead. That's kind of scary, though. Right, we're just going to head back to our ship. Yeah, but the, the beautiful shot, and it's like th this is like th this is the kind of positive terrain that I want to see more of. Now, this would be a nightmare in an SRV, um, but that's why we have space feet now, is to be able to navigate these weird, weird things. I do love that there's just like little groupings of plants everywhere, right? Like it does make it just more, um, you know, there's more point to just wandering on a planet. Like, before when it was all very POI based, if you didn't know the exact coordinates of what you wanted to see, you know, you're not going to see anything interesting. But now, anything could be interesting. And actually, I'm going to deploy SRV, just sit in the SRV for the end of the stream, because toxic thing, destroying ship. But anyway, um, so yeah, um, no, I agree, Reese. I think it is too soon to pass judgment, really. I think, like, my th these are all my first thoughts, first impressions. Um, and I would say, like, for first impressions, mostly positive. Um, definitely they need to iron out a bunch of stuff, but I'm a pretty patient person, and I'm fine with them taking this, the time that they need. In fact, I wish that they had kind of taken the time that they needed um, when they were you know, releasing it. I don't think they needed to rush this out. I think by rushing it out, they probably, like, turned a number of people off the game. Um, 
who are frustrated with like some of the crashes or frustrated with just some of the um, you, you know gameplay stuff, right? I think those things will be ironed out as to whether those people will come back and whether you know they'll have a sort of no man's sky flip in the in the impressions. Well, only time will tell. Um, but at this point, I'm kind of like you know, I'm in. I'm in. I'm waiting to see the next thing. I can't wait to see what they put out next. I'm, uh, you know, faith restored because they said years and years ago that, you know, they were going to put space legs in there. And for the longest time, we didn't think this would be a reality. And now it's here. And it's done, in my opinion, pretty well, right? Um, like, pretty damn well. There's a lot of stuff that I wish I could see in, in this game. There's a lot more that I think is, is, is yet to come. But... Now I kind of have that faith restored that it will come. They they will deliver on everything they promised. Whether it's perfect or not, well, nothing's ever perfect, right? Um, so, you know, I'm enjoying my time. Anyway, but, uh, oh, God, Dark Heavy, and I was just about to close the stream, and then, you know, you kind of you kind of just you kind of just gave an idea there that I can't resist. I wasn't going to blow up my SRV in this, but that just, you, you, you just hit a spot. Okay. All right. Okay. All right, we're gonna see. <laughs> we're gonna see how one of these pits takes an SRV for lunch. Uh, let's see if we can get pretty high here. Oh no! Oh no! Hey, I think that was good. Huh? Maybe the key is when I'm trying to kill myself, I just can't, and so I just need to do. Oh. It's not a no-fire zone. Is this the default paint job, by the way? I don't remember um, this paint job. Okay. <laughs> okay, we are going to attempt... <laughs> This won't, this really won't take long. You can do like sidewall canyon spins. It's actually kind of cool. What a beautiful sky though. Now, will this be enough? I don't know. I'll tell you what, there's an extra step here. <laughs> yeah, no, I think, uh... Hey, what's going on here? Is that an overhang? I think we'll just do the old-fashioned self-destruct. Now, it's funny that you can't, like, disembark at this point, but you can still control the controls. Oxygen depleted in 440. Alright guys, thank you very much for joining. Stay Dangus. Fly Dangus. That's a little Nicholas Cage for you. Um, and thank you very much for joining. Um, have a good evening guys. Bye bye.